Hello. Thank you so much for 18 months, Devlin. What's up? Hello, everyone. How's your weekend? How to tell Big T peels grapes without telling it? It's actually not Big T, it's Deem. <laughs> yeah, I was, um, yeah. I wanted to record a YouTube video in the morning, but then I was, uh, 
opening Discord and I saw this discussion and um, it just ruined my day. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Devlin. There's no crunch without a peel. I would ask in, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I keep reading Discord and there's just bad takes after bad takes, usually from Reddy. <laughs> <sighs> this guild is just the worst. I didn't even realize it was possible to peel graves. <laughs> Dude, that's, that was my question too. It's like, how do you even do it, you know? That must be some... Hello, I pressed the button and the intro didn't happen? There we go. What the hell? I pressed the intro button and the intro? <laughs> Jeez. Dude. I swear to God, my legs... Are just like, like have a million mosquito bites. I swear it's the worst. My legs are just like itching all over. Cause we went, <laughs> we went. Uh, we, we were doing the archery thing. Like we were shooting arrows yesterday, and we were in the in a forest, and holy shit, there's a lot of mosquitoes apparently, and everything's itching. <sighs> and I have this itching thing here. There's like mosquito bites. Reliever and it's not working. You're on so early? I know, right? On at noon already? Wow. <laughs> hey, Dissa, what's up? That's an intense intro, I know, right? Oh, I need to stop scratching. <laughs> God damn it. Thanks for 16 months, Lama Tessa. What's up? How are you? I'm doing hunter talents while I'm at work. I see how it is. I'm sorry, Bishu. Alright, so the plan for today is that we uh, look over the last couple of classes that we haven't looked at on Alpha. And then, uh, since I have to write season 4 guides. I figured, why not write those guides Hello, while friend. streaming? Welcome. <laughs> right, so you guys can help me out. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Thank you so much for yourself, uh, Case TV. Thank you so much. <laughs> the lazy content shot. There you go. <laughs> why are you so dressed up? Are you going out? You're joking, right? Did you just call this shirt dressed up? <laughs> also my hair, this is how I woke up, so. <laughs> Fancy as fuck, yeah, I know, I'm, I'm actually, I actually am going out. I'm glad you noticed. I'm going on a wedding later. I'm glad you noticed. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think of my wedding dress? Just thought I'd let you know this is the first stream I've been watching on two monitors. It's prestigious and we're going to have a great stream. Oh my god, I feel so honored. And congrats on your two monitors. 
That's amazing. Seems to be a little overdressed for a wedding. I know. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing when I put on this shirt in the morning. But I was like, ah. It's okay. I mean, who else would they have to pay attention to at their wedding anyway? The bride. I mean... All right, what should we do first? Should we do season four guys first or should we do alpha talents first? I'm doing a struggle. What to do first? Alpha talents? Or season four dungeons? Yeah, I know the answer already. It's going to be Alpha Talents. No one wants to watch Season 4 Dungeons. <laughs> Push 4K Raya. Yeah, I think, uh, I think the Raya pushing is past at the moment. I don't think that's happening. Warlock talents are not out, no. I think I want to look at Priest first. Or... Let's do DK first, actually. Because DK is the class I know the least about. So let's just start off with that. What kind of DK are we making? A Void Elf. Male. No, Paladin is not out either. It's only Hunter, DK, Priest, Rogue, Druid, Evoker, Rogue. I already said Rogue, right? Ah, <laughs> oh, shit, I did make the same mistake again. I know Miss Run Rogue should I expect, but we're not gonna look at that because it's boring anyway. It doesn't have any class buffs, I heard. <laughs> Pedro Brett? <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Let's make a human. Hey, welcome to the gang. What? I can't actually use this? Okay. <laughs> I already had Nidura and that one was the other character that I don't want to delete. You're not allowed to use Knight. Oh. Okay. Thanks for a month, Paranoid. What's up? Thank you so much for Prime Stuff Bias. Thank you. Yeah, I said I will make a video about LASIK, but then I lost my phone and all of my footage that I had recorded. So now... I mean, I could still make a video, but it would just be me talking about it and not like an actual vlog thing. And I'm not sure how interesting that is. Like, I'm not sure if people care about that. Because I had this whole vlog and everything. And now all my footage is gone. <laughs> A bit unfortunate. 
been pr pretty busy with moving back home lately. You should be able to join. Um, oh my god, I can't scroll. Should be able to join more streams now. Nice, Paranoids. I hope the moving went well. Hope it wasn't too stressful. Yeah, I lost my phone and my glasses. It's unreal, actually. I just keep losing stuff. All right, let's take a look at DK. But yeah, DK, I'm uh, like I'm 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 an actual idiot. I never I don't know anything about DK, honestly. Like absolutely nothing. Well, know a bit about Blood Decay because uh, usually there's a Blood Decay in my M plus dungeon. <laughs> I saw your video in a drip problem. Do you think they will change anything on that front? Well, I hope so. Now would be the time. I really hope they do. They were listening to some other feedback from other classes, so let's just hope they do. <laughs> hey, Chaco, what's up? Okay, so let's look at Death Knight. Um, let's look at the normal talents first. So left is Frost, middle is Blood, right is Undead, it looks like. Change of Ice. Death Strike, erase that. Then there's AMS and Mind Freeze. Okay, so this is obviously something you take all the time. Is Chains of Ice... I mean, Chains of Ice is not something you always need, right? So it's interesting that Mind Freeze is after that. Like, not to say that Mind Freeze would not be... Like, I don't know. Well, I guess... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like sir well whatever it's not too bad I mean it's right here right it's like one point or two points I guess it's whatever good morning kitty cat what's up then there's blinding sleet which is not really important that's why it's on the side I like that there's cooldown reduction and there's icebound fortitude that attacks damage currency and absorption I cause of reason of the mag Damage dealt. Did they already have this before? That's pretty nice. Then Death Pact. Welcome to Nagur's Sub Club. Does this literally have the same name and the same icon as uh, a Warlock's Death Pact? Thanks for the Prime uh, sub, Cozy. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Hmm. Interesting. Then anti magic barrier. Cool. Depths advance. Summon increase by twenty percent. That's a lot of percent, no? Twenty? That's pretty good. Then there's leech. Crit chance. And the magic stone. Ice my fortitude cooldowns reduced. What's default? Oh, three minutes. So it's two minutes. Each runic power you spend has a 1.6% chance to increase your rune generation. Okay. Each runic power you spend has a 2% chance to instantly grant you a rune. Okay, I guess that's just like depending on what spec you play. Then asphyxiate, wraith walk, simulation. The amount of absorbed by anti magic stones increased by 10% and grants. Based on the amount absorbed, okay. Increase avoidance. Oh, nice. Increase strength. What's this? Uh, cleaving strikes obligatory hits up to one additional. Okay. Dominance to target undead creature up to the. Okay. Sacrificial pact. In. Feeble. Your ghoul's attacks have a chance to apply in feeble, reducing the enemy's movement speed by 30%. Damage should yield to you by 15% for 6 seconds. 
15% damage reduction, that's a lot. Hmm. Then your diseases have a chance to weaken your enemy, causing your attacks against them to deal some increased damage. Okay. Death and decay reduces the movement speed of enemies by 90%. Increases the range of death grip by 10 yards. Killing an enemy that yields experience of honor resets. Ooh, that's also nice, I guess. Then a drop on unholy energy become undead over 10 seconds, increasing the leech by 10%, making you immune to charm, fear, and sleep. Gain 5% haste while you remain. Uh huh. I only have three points left. Ooh. Um, auto attacks have a chance to read. There's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of, like, damage runes in the Death Knight tree, it looks like. Right? Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Then, um, power rune weapon. Rune Mastery. Abomination limb as well. Huh. Abomination limb is in the in the class tree. Blood draw. When you fell below thirty okay. Soul Reaper. Hmm. That's interesting. It sounds like uh or it looks like there's a lot of Like actual useful talents in the tree that you want to go for. What do DKs think about this tree? Do they think it's a bit? Uh... Obviously, I don't know much about DKs. So I don't know how useful some of these talents are, especially the ones that are not from your spec. Like if you're frosty K, I don't know if you want some of these like unholy talents or not. I mean, some of them for sure you want, right? Like two percent strength increase, for example. Uh, everything else, I don't know. It's definitely weird to eat a kiwi with skin, yes? <laughs> Who eats kiwi with skin? There's like hairs on it and stuff. Ugh. <laughs> so very restrictive. You can almost never go Abom Limp because Empowered Soul Reaper is so strong. Yeah. I mean, technically you can go Empowered Rune Weapon and Abom Limb, right? Like technically, yeah? Oh no, you oh you're saying you want a power room weapon and soul reaper. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, then then uh, that is much more difficult, yeah. I see what you mean. Oh there's three points in improved death strike. Ah, I see. Ah, uh, it's a three point talent, yeah, that's a bit much for sure. Oh, and you need this to go A-bomb limb. You know what? I think... I think what they were trying to do with this is have A-bomb limb be more of a tank thing. I think that's the purpose behind this, right? Like, they want tanks to have A-bomb limb and, like, Unholy and Frost can only have it if they sacrifice some damage. Which I think is okay, if that's the intention behind it. Like, if if they think that Abom Limb is kind of strong and they don't want every DK to have it. Maybe that's fine. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. I want to check, wait, 
Because Max uh, talked about, made a video about DK talents, right? So I want to see what they say. They asked. Death Knight talent tree, there we go. Yeah, okay, oh so... no, the changes. He looked at the changes. There, let's see him. In terms of like throughput, uh, it'll. Uh, I just love Atlas. Uh, you, you, you're using you're using a, a noise gate, right? Yeah. I, I think it's a little. Here. Yeah. Get... <laughs> um. Get closer to your mic when you talk. I sound good now? Oh, that uh, sound nice and central? I know, yeah. I don't have okay. braces. Okay, whoever yeah, perfect. Well, I'm just going to keep it asked. like this. It is time, guys. We are doing a DK talent tree talk, very much like the Shadow Priest one. I plan to do these one for know, each class. Uh, and it's not just about the talent trees. It's also like DKs as a whole. The idea for these is hopefully Blizzard listens to them and is identified by people that I think are like really bright in the community and really know what they're talking about and give them like uh, feedback. Because I think they're going to need more feedback on these talent trees than anything else. Because there's just wait, so many... Move forward. Directly dive into the spec trees that you guys think is either worse than it was before at a previous time in the game and like really tad louder okay. at minor tweaks or is this really quiet i'm just imagining that i want this to be louder or like the way that any of the classes play right now that really stick out to you i have okay. sort of a hot oh, take but i'll leave it for like <laughs> okay so that sounds well, like that's real hot so you said there's nothing like pi for dks i'd kind of argue that abomination's limb and where it's placed right now is a big issue that we should probably touch on first because where it's at right now like dps dks can't really take it without sacrificing so much mm -hmm. that's a great yeah because it's something that for people who are watching was added this expansion has been like dks since the beginning of time even like way back okay I, I still have a question though because like is that actually like like i don't play a dk right obviously so like, my opinion might be completely irrelevant or, like, com people com disagree on it. But wouldn't it be... Like, I think it makes sense for some talents to be mainly for one spec rather than everyone can easily take it. Like, I think that's okay, especially if it's strong things. Like, if it's a very unique, strong cooldown, then I think... Like, they can make multiple choices, right? Blizzard can say, okay, we put a bomb limb in the blood decay tree. They could say that, right? And then Frosty K and Anoli couldn't even have it at all, technically. They could just make that decision, right? Or they can say, we're going to put a bomb limb into the DK tree, and it's really easily accessible by everyone, so everyone always takes it. Or we can put it in the DK tree, and make it so one certain spec can always have it easily and the others can also have it but have to sacrifice a lot and i honestly don't mind that third option too much if it is like a strong kind of unique cooldown in a sense right like i think that somewhat makes sense because technically they could have just said hey we're putting it in the blood decay tree and no one can have avum limb <laughs> other than blood decays Hey, Frank, what's up? You made this video? Nice. I'm going to make sure to comment on your editing then. <laughs> it's more utility though? Yeah. So DPS being asked to spec into utility at the expense of DPS feels bad for them, perhaps? Yeah, I get that. But at least they have the possibility to have it, right? Like, I think people are just a bit... Like, because... For example, Mass Grip. Mass Grip is something that Blood Decays have and no other DK, right? 
And I think that makes sense because it's really strong. And I think people are used to having a bomb limb because it was something that everyone had uh, in Legion, uh, in Shadowlands. And that's why it probably feels bad because it's taken away from them. Just like, like everyone complained when Mass Grip was taken away as well, right? People like to complain about stuff because they knew how it was when you had it and then it was gone, so it feels bad. But I do think, generally speaking, it does make sense if not everyone has A-Bomb Limp because it is a really strong, kind of very unique utility that maybe not every uh, spec needs to have it unless you actually sacrifice stuff for it. And I would also say it's a pretty unique utility as well that you don't need very often, right? I don't think A-Bomb Limp is something that you would need on every single fighter or whatever. It's more of, if, It's more of a, like specific kind of utility in a sense where you say okay let's say you want a bomb limb on a boss fight then you're like okay either we bring a blood decay for the a bomb limb or we're just gonna sacrifice some damage from our dks and then they get it and i think that's okay ish right in my opinion at least i'm a like <laughs> obviously uh, i'm not a dk so i'm just saying right Back when, but something that comes to my mind is uh, Mana Roth, right? When you're doing Mana Roth in... Uh... Wait, what? The problem is the three points and improved Death Strike, even Blood Decay, will not get a bomb limb? Oh. I thought that Blood Decay would go with that for sure, and that's why it's easier for them to get it. Are you saying that not even Blood Decays will go with that? Huh. Well, okay, then it is dumb. I thought that the three-point talent would be something that the blood decays kind of want anyway. And then you just take A-bomb limb afterwards. But if, if the talent is even bad for blood decay, then that is stupid. For sure. Yeah, then I guess it is stupid. But it probably makes more sense for the blood decay to sacrifice three more points than it makes for other specs, right? So I guess it's still... Maybe they could change it so it's a two-point talent instead of a three-point talent. Because if it's a two-point talent, then it wouldn't be that big of a deal for Blood Decay to take it, because then they just spend one more point. But for every other DK, it would still be somewhat of a sacrifice. So maybe that would make more sense, to make it a two-point talent instead of three. Because, I mean, I don't know, like, I, I do kind of understand the, the reasoning behind it. But, yeah, if it's really bad for Blood Decay as well, then that sucks. Let's see what else they say. In Hellfire Citadel, imagine, like, not having Mass Grip for that fight. That was back when DPS DKs had it. That was something that, you know, they just needed. And A-Bomb's Limb bringing back or coming to the game kind of brought a little bit of that back and kind of functionally served as a Mass Grip for a lot of the expansion. And has now gotten to a point where it's like a clear DK niche. Like there's absolutely a way you would bring a Death Knight to a fight that they have no reason to be in on defensively as a tank or offensively as a DPS where that is just too required and too good. So it being at the bottom of that uh, class tree is something we'll probably look at there. But I think I I'm actually glad it's staying though. Actually, I'm interested to see how much you have to give up to get there. Do you want to take a look at one of the yeah. general trees I've got set up? Sure. Yeah. I think... <laughs> I honestly think Max kind of just agreed with me in a sense. Where he's saying it is really good on certain fights and blood DK or DKs are literally brought for a bomb limb to certain fights. And I think uh, if you have such a strong utility, then I think it makes sense that you kind of have to sacrifice something for it in a sense. I don't know. Like, for example, I would think the same thing about Warlocks. If a Warlock would have to sacrifice some DPS to get Gateway, then I honestly think that would be okay. What do you think? Because there's just certain utilities that are really strong. And I think um, putting them in a talent tree in a position where it's not like super easy to get, I don't think you should be sacrificing like half of your damage to get it, right? Like, I don't think that makes sense. 
But if you have to sacrifice like a little bit, then I think that's okay. Just to get the utility? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this. I, I, at some... Like, at one side, I think it makes sense. And then the other side, I'm like... I don't know. Uh, yeah, um, let's, let's do that. Uh, this is a single target on Holy Setup, but it'll give you the general idea of what, like, DPS DKs do in the general tree uh, when you're looking at that side of it. To get down to Abomination's limb uh, in the center row, uh, for an unholy DK, they'd have to give up either Empower Rune Weapon or Soul Reaper. They have to sacrifice one of those rows. And there's no real good option to give them up because on the unholy side, you're giving up Soul Reaper and um, Unholy Bond, which that Rune Forge buff is just huge. It's such a DPS loss. To Maybe the bigger problem is um, the fact that the DKs have so much damage in their class tree. At least, because that was my first impression. Like, I looked at the class tree, and it looked like there's a lot of talents that actually give you damage. Like, that, like a lot of them. Well, a lot of other classes, especially hybrid classes, because DK is a hybrid class, right? They have a tank and melee, right? So that's, in my opinion, that's a hybrid spec. Um, and I looked at other hybrid specs, and a lot of the other hybrid specs have very, um, have, like, their class tree is very like utility based and not so much damage based and i think that kind of makes more sense for a more hybrid class i, I guess dk is um not as hybrid as like a paladin would be or like a shaman would be because um dk only has two roles while well a paladin and a shaman has three roles but uh still like Shaman is healer and damage dealer, right? I guess you can kind of lump melee and range DPS together in a sense. Like, yes, they are two different roles, but they are not vastly different, right? I don't think a melee and a range DPS are as different as a tank and uh, a healer, or a healer and a range DPS or whatever, right? So they're like the closest of the roles, uh, because they're both damage dealers. Um, so the fact that Shaman has so much like utility in their class tree and not as much damage makes more sense to me because then you feel like, oh, I'm just picking utility depending on my situation and I don't have to give up like a million like DPS, right? So maybe that is the bigger problem in the DK tree in my opinion. Like maybe the problem is not necessarily the position of a bomb limb. Maybe... The problem is rather the fact that there are so much, so many damage, like, talents that you're almost forced to take them. And then you have very little, like, room to actually take utility talents that you kind of want. While other classes don't really have that issue, right? Like Shaman or Druid, uh, for example, they... If I want to have Feral interrupt as a Moonkin then I don't have to sacrifice like 5 million DPS, right? Or even if I want, uh, like, I don't know, even if I want Furor or something as a Moonkin, that's totally fine to get. I'm not going to do a lot less damage or anything, if at all, because most, most of our class tree is just utility. So I guess that's a big problem with DKs. They just have, like, half of their talents in the class tree are damage talents. <laughs> so you're very, like... Uh, forced to take them as a damage dealer, right? As a DK, maybe not as much. As a blood DK, maybe not as much, but still kind of. So it seems very restrictive. Um, and that that doesn't feel good for a class tree, right? Because the spec tree is supposed to be your damage. So if the class tree is also like a lot of damage, then that feels kind of weird. To give up. Uh, and then on the frost side of things, you're giving up Icy Talons, Runa Continuation, and Empower Rune Weapon. All of which aren't, like, super required, but the extra resources give all of the specs a lot of legroom to kind of play the spec more fluidly or fill in that downtime, just have more globals in general, and makes the spec feel good. Taking those away just makes the spec feel worse, and doing that to get Abomination Slim just kind of feel, feels bad, man, you know? Definitely true. I, I also think it's something where... In a lot of these classes, I think Blizzard is having to balance between how many points are you putting on the tree that are just, like, there to fill out the total amount of points you need to spend. 
uh, versus a lot of classes being like, okay, well, I don't have as much of those, ab or a few classes, I don't have as much of those abilities, but I have to make some insanely hard decisions of actually what I want. And it's, it's one thing Blizzard really needs to watch out for is going into next expansion, any class or spec feeling like they're a gimped version of their former selves because they just don't have what was available the, to them previously is a terrible feeling yeah. that they've managed to do most expansions, right? Like, like I think one of the reasons they're doing an evergreen talent tree is to get away from the crazy borrowed power systems that amplify all the way into the point three patch of an expansion. And then, uh, and then you just lose it and you're like, wow, my character feels literally worse than it was yesterday, but this is a new expansion. I'm supposed to be excited about it. So how does, how do you think in the blizzard tree or in this tree specifically blizzard would yeah i noticed the old tree like i i looked at the the updated tree but even the updated tree looks the same ish or at least it looks like it has the same issue of um like having a lot of damage talents that are kind of required I'm not sure if DKs are happy with the rework, but that's like the first impression that I had when I looked at the up, because I didn't look at the old one at all. I only looked at the updated one, and the updated one definitely seems like the same. It seems like oh, there's a lot of damage talents, and I want all of those damage talents when I'm a Frosty here and unholy DK. Go about uh, fixing that. Talking about just the general tree. Mm -hmm. Just the general tree for now. Uh. Well, I got a hot take, but I want a bomb limb gone entirely as an ability, and I just want mass grip back from like the middle of the tree, because they. <laughs> he wants mass grip back. I mean, I honestly don't even. Okay, so I think that mass grip, um, like there was a reason why mass grip was nerfed and was removed from damage case. Because it was really, really OP. Um, because most other classes didn't really have any similar abilities, so it was almost like required in certain situations where it's like you need a mass grip here. Like But then at the same time, um I think it was more of an plus issue because raid encounters can be designed by Blizzard freely, right? <laughs> so Blizzard can just say Oh, we're not gonna create a boss fight where mass grip is really OP, right? Like, they could technically just do that. No one is forcing Blizzard to create a boss fight where mass grip has, like, insane value. They can just, like, think about that and just not create that fight. Um, and in plus, in plus a different story, though, because in plus, um, mass grip will always be really good, I think. No matter what. Like... There's very few situations where mass grip wouldn't be nice to have. Um, but at the same time, I also don't think that mass grip is as OP anymore as it used to be in like Legion. Because there's many other mechanics that classes have that are like similar in strength. Maybe not as good, but like nice ish. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think Blood Decay or I don't think mass grip is like as needed or as OP anymore as it used to be in the past. So I don't think I would mind if um, DKs would get mass grip back. I'm not sure, like I'm, I'm trying to think about this. <laughs> hey Dorky, what's up? Mass grip is a nice utility 9 plus. Yeah, it doesn't feel like needed or required. Right? Like, I don't think it's it's that OP. I think it's nice, but... It's also, like, hard to tell. Because, um... Sometimes a certain utility gets... Like, the, the value of a certain utility gets emphasized by the class itself also being really strong. And I think that's what happened in Legion, right? Where Unholy DK was really strong for AoE pulls. And because of their like exponential scaling. And then it seemed even stronger than it maybe would have been if DK wasn't as good, right? So like it felt like, oh, you just run in, you mass grip like a million mobs together and then they all die, you know? Like it, it definitely was like the, the value of the mass grip was definitely like 
buffed by how good DK was with mass pulls. Because think about doing this nowadays. Like imagine you would um, imagine you go into like I don't know into like a dungeon and you just mask your fucking everything together and then he doesn't instantly die and then you just wipe. You know what I mean? Like I think the value of mass grip is 100% um, like dependent on how good people's AOE damage is. Because if you can if you can grip 50 mobs together and then you can instantly kill them, then that seems really OP. But if you grip 50 mobs together and you can't kill them and you wipe, then what's the point, right? <laughs> like obviously mass grip is always nice to have. But it only seems super OP when there's like lots and lots and lots of mobs being pulled together, right? Because if you only mass grip five mobs together, then it's like, uh, okay, whatever, you know? If you mass grip 50 mobs together, then all of a sudden that seems really OP. So that's why I think mass grip... Uh, mass grip... is not OP in like the, the Shadowlands version of the game. I think, because in Shadowlands, a lot of classes were, um, like, uh, target kept, right? So in Shadowlands, if a DK would have mass grip at the start of Shadowlands, then who cares? Because you can't pull 50 mobs together anyway, so the mass grip loses value automatically. While in Legion, most classes had unkept AoE, and then it seemed really OP. So, yeah, it's it's... Definitely very dependent on class design overall and on how much you can AoE together without actually dying. One thing they could technically do is like to prevent its OPness on uh, lots of targets. They could technically target cap mass grip too if they would want to. <laughs> right? Like they could technically say. Um, okay, so mass grip isn't as OP until it goes beyond, like, X amount of targets. So if that's their concern for mass grip being broken, then they could say, okay, you can mass grip, like, everyone has mass grip, but if it's more than X targets, then that's only blood decay or whatever. They could say, oh, a Blood Decay can grip 50 mobs, but um, a Frost Decay or an Unholy Decay, they can only grip, like, 6 or 5. And then everything beyond that is just not getting gripped. They could kind of do that to um, to make it not as broken or OP. And then I think it will be fine. Yeah, I said OP-ness, and it sounds like penis. Are we done? Can I continue? Are we still laughing at the penis? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah, anyway, like, that's... I guess that's my thoughts um, about, like, mass grip and Abom Lim. Like, yeah, I don't... I think it's okay. If, like, yeah, I don't know. They... they, they basically serve the same function in terms of like your usefulness to a raid but like a bomb slim as like a damaging ability is kind of underwhelming unless you're in like some sort of cleave scenario where you have like the perfect amount of targets for it so like it, having to pick between unique utility and then putting that at the bottom of the tree and then locking that behind a dps choice is kind of shitty when you're giving up so much all over the rest of the tree to do so yeah it also kind of maybe work thematically too because you could allow Blood Decays to get their own mass grip instead of it being, I'm assuming, on the Blood Decay tree. I actually don't remember if it was on the Blood Decay tree. Uh, yeah, the and that that would be like make it available to both without having to deal with like a damaging function. But I guess my only other concern would be, I think something that they actually did really well in this tree, as especially opposed to Shadow Priest, is they had things that were previously thought to be really problematic in that oh you're gonna make people go five points out of the way to get an extra kick as a healer or or to get I know, uh, right, a personal Farmer, I know. cooldown that they've had for like 10 years 
but in this, it they kind of solve that for all three specs. Like, there's no way you're going into any content where you're not grabbing IBF or Mind Freeze ever, uh, where you're not missing Anti Magic Shell or just missing 10% stamina. Or you do know what I mean? Like, like a lot of your stuff that you will always have in all content is there, but that also mm -hmm. just begs the question of like how many points on this tree are supposed to be things that you're just picking by default and are there to be there, and it doesn't actually give you any interesting decisions to make like outside of a bomb's limb which we can kind of get back to in a second because i think i kind of agree with you like where are the decisions you see you got you uh you all making on a like content to content difference so like raid to mythic plus i guess or yeah i think max is making the same point here that i was talking about it's like not talking about the whole a bomb limb thing like if you disregard that then i think the tree still has an issue of um you're not making very many different choices depending on the content you do because there are so many talents that you kind of need to take in the class tree which just feels bad i think in comparison to other trees at least yeah let's see what he was saying about like the update they asked uh it's been a while they have roll without getting into specifics and the communication from the developer spectacular that's all i can really say like they're listening and they're doing what needs to be done and honestly i love it well someone is happier about the changes than i was at least <laughs> even from the blood perspective yeah there's no real downsides with the changes that they've made to the general tree at all it's actually the most the most impressive thing that i've seen so far from any single post can someone actually link me this post here that max is looking at by a developer was the post that not only explained their thought process behind the DK tree, but also uh, but also posted an actual picture and we're like, here are the changes. Obviously, the initial reaction is like, wow, this is so much better. But we're actually going to get into like how that's better in a second. Um, but oh yeah, this is definitely a wow. Like, look at all this. Just like absolute insane feedback. Um, but we again, we're going to stay off a lot of this unholy stuff. All right, so what about the general class tree? Do you guys, I know there's one thing we're all going to agree on that is clearly a problem Thank near the bottom us. of the tree, and I'm sure they're aware of it as well. But how do you guys feel about the changes they've made specifically to the general class tree uh, as far as the decisions you have to make? Very, they're... very positive. Yeah. Go ahead, Martin. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's very, very positive. It's, uh, you have a lot more freedom and you can actually like, feel like you can, you can make a build more so than just go down a row. Okay. Yeah. This Thanks is actually so a problem that, that has existed between a few of the specs. I just got done talking about hunters. I'm not sure if you guys are watching, but like there, there's a few classes that are like in a, the, these class trees have totally different philosophies almost like, uh, one major one you can look at is uh the bottom of the trees and how they're treating these like you guys have like basically utility a little bit of throughput at the top a little bit of throughput a little bit of utility in the middle at the bottom it's pure throughput there are classes including some that have multiple roles in it just like yours uh that you know it's the capstones are purely based on utility they're you know this is all yeah, okay see that's what i said as well i think druid is a bad example though because Druid literally has four roles. So it's like, I think for Druid, the only way to make a class tree is to make it utility based mainly, right? Because how are you going to make a class tree with talents that every class can use if you have healer, tank, melee DPS and range DPS? Like, I think that's a little bit more specific. Like, a druid thing but there's other classes that are much more similar to dk uh, that also have mainly utility like shaman right i think shaman is a healer range dps and melee dps that's much more similar to dk in a sense um and dk has much more damage stuff while shaman has a lot of utility in their class tree which in my opinion again makes a lot more sense all just like oh pick whatever you want and all those decisions are super nice yeah. uh death knight 
is one of those where I feel like you are kind of picking a little bit of throughput throughout the tree, but it doesn't really feel bad in this new configuration. You can kind of still grab what you specifically need for a fight, but I do think there is still some uh, issues with some of the choices you're making, which we'll go into. So I'm actually not going to look at your all's like pre-made builds. I actually think it makes a lot of sense to go through it and talk about the decision making that still exists together and kind of go through it um, sure. for, all, for all of it. So let's just pretend we're a DPS DK right now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the first problem I kind of see in this tree that still exists, and I want to know if you guys agree with me or not, or not, is you grab kick every time. Makes sense because uh, you're on the road to IBF and you will always have IBF. Now, this is the first thing that I don't quite really like. There's absolutely a scenario. Permafrost, uh, I, I'm under the impression that this is not a super high power level talent, right? It's not, but it, I mean, it's still free defense. Like, it, it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay in Mythic Plus. It has, like, some decent value. Like, right, right now, you get, like, between, like, 500k to a million healing overall in the key, which is decent, I guess. That's pretty decent, yeah. That was kind of least. my main issue is it felt like there's absolutely content where you don't take Blinding Sleet, even though it's a fantastic ability. There's absolutely content, uh, specifically raids, where there are fights where you don't kick and Anticipation wouldn't be as good. There's also even fights where you kick and you still wouldn't take Anticipation. Yeah, that's also a point I made about a lot of trees, where I think there's quite a lot of... Um, quite a lot of, like, mandatory talents that are stuck behind very niche talents. And I think the main problem here is the fact that... Um, uh, and this is like a raid specific issue, because I think in raiding, um, you need a lot less utility than in any other content. Like if you, if you look at any other content, like M plus PVP, open world stuff, like even stuff like doing old content for transmogs in all of those situations, you need, like there is use for certain utility, right? Like there's use for AoE stuns, for single target stuns, for hearts to see, for interrupts, for um, like roots, slows, all of that kind of stuff, right? But the thing is in raiding, most of that utility is useless almost all of the time. Like I would say 90% of the time, you don't need slow, you don't need stun, you don't need interrupt even. You don't need uh, roots. You don't need to, like all of that stuff in the raid is almost always like useless, right? So the problem exists where sometimes it feels like in a class tree, you have to take many useless talents for raiding to get to talents that you actually need for raiding. And I honestly think there's no solution to this problem because a lot of the talents would have to be like completely optional then, right? Like if you look at a single, if you look at a class tree, I'm sure there would be at least like, like I would say like one third of the talents that are useless in rating for almost all classes, if not more. And you can't make all of those talents optional, right? Like <laughs> it's just a bit weird. So I think we just have to accept the fact that in raiding, you're going to have to take talents that you don't need, right? Because otherwise the trees would be really weird, I think. I don't know. At least that's my opinion. Because, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you, if you... I don't know what class you guys play, but if you go to your own class tree, just just count the talents that you would never... that are barely ever useful in raids, you know, just... Just take a look and count them up. I'm sure there's like many, many, many of them, right? I mean, we can literally try this uh, if we go over like Druid talents, right? I think Druid is a bit more unique because we have much more utility, but still. I'm gonna go over Druid because I know Druid. <laughs> um... Yeah, if we go over this talent tree, let's count the things that we would not, or 
I don't want to say never need, but let's count the things that we would almost never need. Okay, so... I'm not going to go over damage, because that one is more specific. So I'm not going to say that rake is never needed, because that's whatever. Alright, so hibernate is definitely a talent you would almost never need, right? Hibernate is one. Remove corruption, two. Uh, Cyclone, three. Typhoon, four. Um, Maim, five. Feline swiftness, swiftness, six. Then this seven, Mighty Bash, Inca Forest, eight, Furor, nine, Skull Bash, ten, Sooth, eleven, even Stampeding Roar, I would say, well, actually I'm not going to count Stampeding Roar because that is much more useful than anything else in the race. So let's keep that in. Then Heart of the Wild, Heart of the Wild is twelve, even uh, innovate is much more useful, so I'm going to keep that. Then Ursula's Vortex is uh, 13. And then I'm not really going to count damage reduction and and healing, because that is, I think, most of the time somewhat useful, right? So I'm not going to count that. So now we have like 13 talents in total that most of the time are going to be useless in the raids. Oh, the music is a bit loud. We good now? How can you say you'll never need it when you haven't seen... But I, ne I didn't say never need it. That's not what I said. Are you basing it purely on your experience in raids so far? Yes. Is it possible that new encounters will require active choice and switching of talents? This is something that many people have said already before. People said stuff like, um, oh, we have ads. I can wait a little bit. Kuros, from now on, can you tell me when ads are running? Because I can just like not continue to talk about stuff when ads are running. Or at least not say anything important. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just let me know when the ads are over. <laughs> Vodrin. <laughs> over. Okay, cool. All right. So, hey, Lumiki, what's up? Yeah, so a lot of people, um, like, whenever I talk about... Whenever I talked about Invoker and about talent trees and rating, people always come up with this argument. It's like, oh, but you don't know what rates they're going to design in Dragonflight, right? And it's true. Obviously, I don't. But we have a history of like 18 years of rate encounters where the majority of them ha do something similar. So it's like it, it's just incredibly unlikely that they would completely change the way they create boss fights? Why? You know what I mean? Why would they change boss fights to make certain utility more useful in the raids? Because the main reason why certain utility is not useful in the raids is because raid bosses are immune to the sea. That is the number one reason why certain utility is not really useful in a raid, right? Because in Mythic Plus, there's a lot of trash mobs, and trash mobs are known to be susceptible, most of them. And in PvP, you play against enemy players that are also susceptible. But in the raid, there are raid encounters, bosses, and they are not susceptible. And this is why most of the utility is not useful in a raid. That's the simple reason, right? Because you cannot stun a boss, you cannot use a knockback on a boss, you cannot root a boss, you cannot slow a boss. You cannot grip a boss, you know, like all that kind of stuff. Of course, there are certain boss fights that have ads, and the ads can be seceded. But the bosses still cannot be seceded, right? So what you're suggesting is that every single boss 
or most of the bosses in Dragonflight are going to have important ads that need to be succeed in some way that requires most um, CC. Because it is true that there are certain bosses that have CCable ads, but even when they have CCable ads, you usually don't need every class to have to use all of their utility, right? Like whenever there's a boss encounter that has ads that are CCable, then the amount of CC you use on them that is beneficial is, is still very limited. Like when you think about um, Lihovim, for example, on Lihovim there were ads um, that degenerate something something ads and they were CCable, but did that mean that every single class in the raid was CCing them? No, right? Most of the CC that you used on them was just like mass grip and like mass stun. That's it. But that didn't, didn't mean that a rogue walked over there and like used kidney shot and silence and like blind and gouge, you know, like you don't, there's so much utility that is, even when you need to see in a raid, it's very specific to see that you need and not like, all of this to see, right? And then there's also abilities like Shroud, like a Rogue Shroud, which I can't see a single encounter where a Shroud might ever be like super useful because everyone needs to be out of combat. And in, whenever you're fighting a boss, you're never out of combat. So certain utility is just never useful, right? Or even stuff like Sap, Sap or Distract, or drew its stealth, right? Like all of these things, like wh why would you ever need that? Why would I ever need stealth as a druid in, in a raid? You just don't, right? Unless you're skipping trash or whatever. Thanks for two months, Morbid Angel, what's up? So yeah, that's why I'm saying that a lot of the talents, not to say that they're never needed, because for example, something like Hibernate, could technically be useful on a boss fight. I'm trying to think of a boss where you ever needed hibernate in a raid. And I don't think there was one. But technically it could be, right? Technically you could have a boss that spawns like lions and you once in a while like hibernate them. Yeah, true. Cast an after a second boss. Those ads could be hibernated. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so I'm not saying that it's like never useful, but I'm like 99% sure that it's going to be a talent that is incredibly niche, that you rarely ever need in a raid, if at all. And there's more talents like this, like Cyclone. Cyclone is something you needed on Anduin, for example. Well, not needed, but it was nice to have on Anduin. But I almost never saw an encounter where you needed Cyclone other than Anduin, right? Like, Anduin was a specific case. Anduin was specifically a boss that required a lot of CC, so I think Anduin was more of an, an outlier when it comes to the amount of CC needed. Because most other fights didn't really need CC as much as Anduin, right? But anyway, like, my point still stands that most of the utility in, like, a class tree is more, like, M plus based and PvP based. And in a raid, most of it is going to be useless. Right? <laughs> Ruddy. <laughs> it doesn't force you to take those talents, so I think it's fine. Well, but it does, though. Like, there's definitely situations where you have to take a talent that is going to be useless for the raid. Uh, not Cyclone. Cyclone and Hibernate are off to the side and Typhoon as well. So that is nice, right? But there's definitely some talents that we kind of have to take, like Sooth. Like, I think Sooth, to be fair, has a very strange positioning. Because I would say that Sooth is, um, is probably one of the spells in the whole tree that are the least useful out of all utility spells here. In my opinion. Like, I think even Hibernate is more useful than Sooth. I think. Same goes with Typhoon and Cyclone. 
Because Sooth is so specific. Like, Sooth is literally only for raging in M+. That's it. It has very limited usage in PvP. And very, very limited usage in raiding. So the fact that Sooth is, like, here right in front of Stampeding Roar is, um... Strange to say the least. <laughs> like I would, there were there are so many other abilities that this could be replaced with that are more useful. Yeah, I don't know. Like even stuff like remove corruption, I think would be better here. And remove corruption is also not very needed in most situations, but it's still more useful than Resuth. Or if you put Typhoon here, or I don't know, like anything really. <laughs> or Vortex Mass Root, or I don't know. Like, this just seems very misplaced here. There's plenty of classes I would be more than happy with Sooth. Yes, I know that. But you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm literally talking about the place, but I'm not saying that the spell is bad. Like, y you understand what I mean, right? Like, I'm not saying that Sooth is a bad ability and I want it to be gone. I'm saying that the placement of Sooth makes no sense because it's such a niche utility, right? And it's literally in the middle, like, it's in the smack middle of the tree. Right in front of Stampeding Aurora, which is by far the best utility or the most used utility out of all druid utilities, I think. Stampeding Aurora is something that almost every druid wants always, right? So the fact that it's right after Sooth, like it's almost like it's a requirement to take Sooth to get Stampeding Roar. That's just is like, like I don't, I don't think that makes sense. Unless they want you to waste a point to get to Stampeding Roar. Like that's the only explanation I can think of. Where they say, hey, if you want Stampeding Roar, you have to sacrifice one point. Basically. Like if that's their way of thinking. Then it would make sense, I guess. <laughs> Can't you guess? But anyway, my point is that there's um, a lot of utility spells that are kind of off to the side that you don't need to take, which is really great. Like, I think the fact that you don't need to take Hibernate, you don't need to take Cyclone, you don't need to take Typhoon uh, is really good. But then there's also some utility spells that you have to take to get to others. And I'm basically just saying that I don't think there's any other way that will always have to be the case if you're specking for a rating. Right? Because, for example, this Mighty Bash Inca Broar talent, I would say this is also pretty useless in a raid most of the time. Like, most of the time, you don't need a single target stun or an AoE Inca Broar. That's very niche. But you need to take this to get to Well Honed Instinct and Furor. And then here, you need to take Orsor's Vortex or Mass Entanglement to get to Innervate and Nature's Vigil, which, again, I, I don't think it's, it's horrible. It definitely is a bit weird, but I just, like, there's just so many talents that are useless in the raid that they can't just make all of those talents optional, in my opinion, right? Because we just counted the useless traits, right? And it's 13. Like, 13 of the druid talents are probably not useful in the raid most of the time. And you can't just make all, like, 13 talents optional. Well, then at that point... Uh, Everything is optional, right? So, so I understand why some of the talents have to be, like, forced on you. Because otherwise, for raiding, you would just only get the good talents, you know? And that would also be slightly unfair in a sense. And that's why I think some of the DK things also make sense. Yeah, exactly. Like, there need to be some trade-offs. That's what I'm trying to say. Because if every talent you take is something that you need, and you don't have a single talent that um, is not as useful to you, then it doesn't really seem like a talent tree. Then it just seems like... A, like, then you're just, like, going down one path that is, like, perfect, and there's never any changes that you make to the tree. It's like, oh, I'm just specking this in all situations, you know? At least when it comes to writing. Uh, 
Wait, what? Uh, X Mac? Like, I'm sorry. Um, I'm not sure I understand what you mean. You're saying the new talent trees are bad. They should keep the talent trees we got right now. And you can go to the class teacher, like in classic, and learn some new spells for certain stuff. Like, I'm not sure what you mean. What do you mean going to the class trainer and learn some new spells? Because that's how, that just means that it's base ability. Like if I go to the class trainer and I learn a spell in classic, then that just means it's a basic ability, yeah? Right? So for example, uh, if I want death and decay, I go to the class tra trainer and learn death and decay, and then I have it forever, right? So I don't understand why that would be good. That just... That has nothing to do with the class trainer. And unless I'm not understanding what you mean. Are you saying that you would trade abilities at the class trainer? Like, are you saying that I go to the class trainer and then I'm like, hey, I don't want death and decay anymore. I would rather have death coil. Is that what you mean? Yeah, kind of generic. It definitely is. I'm just like, yeah, that's why I'm confused. Like, yes, like you can't have certain amount of CC, rate CD slash buffs, and can't like have all or the most, so your class obligatory in every raid. I'm still not really sure. Uh, I'm still not sure I understand what you mean. But that that is how cla that is how talent trees work, right? You can't have every talent. Like you see, I have zero points available, and I don't have every talent. So that means I am trading. It's a trade off, you know. That is literally what you're saying, right? Maybe you misunderstood how class trees work. Maybe you thought that you can have every talent but you cannot. Like, you can only choose a certain amount of talents. So that is exactly the same thing as if I would go to the class trainer and trade my empowered rune weapon for uh, unholy ground, right? I just did that. But I didn't have to go to class tree, basically. <laughs> a class trainer. Mm But anyway, um, so yeah, personally, uh, like looking at the DK tree, it definitely seems, I, I'm not saying I hate it, but I definitely think that um, the DK tree seems a bit more restrictive than other hybrid class trees I've looked at so far. Like, it looks more restrictive than the Shaman tree, for example. Um, and the Druid tree as well. At least for damage DKs, for DPS DKs, for Frost and Unholy. And I know they have reworked it, and it looks up to be a bit more free up top. But then at the bottom, it still seems uh, a lot more restrictive in what you can take and what you cannot take. Because there are so many DPS talents here, which... I'm not the biggest fan of having a lot of DPS talents in your class tree if you're a hybrid class, right? I think it makes sense to have DPS talents in a class tree if you're a full DPS class. Because I looked at Rogue, for example, and Rogue had a lot of DPS talents in the Rogue tree. But that makes sense because, uh, I mean, <laughs> they're a full DPS class, right? But yeah, when it comes to hybrid classes, I do think it should be a bit less DPS and more utility. And like defensives and stuff. So so this seems a bit too damage heavy. In my mind at least. 
I'm I'm actually not gonna look at the frost. Does Frosty K have anything interesting? You know what? We're gonna change the way we look at spec trees from now on. Because I usually, uh, when I looked at spec trees, I would look over it completely and like test out stuff a little. But I think it's it just takes me so much time to go over a spec tree because I, especially when I don't play the spec, right? I don't play Frosty K. So for me to go over this tree, first of all, is kind of useless because uh, I can't give a proper opinion since I don't play it. And additionally, uh, it just takes me forever. So I think it, it makes more sense if you guys tell me um, if there's any like new talents or like something that is interesting that we didn't have before. Like if, for example, if there's like a spec buff or if there's like a new ability or something cool or something bad, okay? So what do you think about the Frosty K tree? Is there anything that I should be looking in at that you think is like special? Frost is interesting in the regard that AoE and single trade are basically four to five talent points difference, nothing more. Oh, okay. Huh, that is interesting, I guess. On healers to go back to being healers and not damage dealers. I think that is a, I think this is a pretty big misconception that uh, people have, where they think that healers ever were in a position where they only healed. Like that's not true. There was never a situation in World of Warcraft where healers only healed. You always spend your free time doing damage if you were like a good healer. That doesn't mean that you cannot only heal. Like here's the thing. If you want to only heal and not press any damage buttons, then you're free to do that. Right? You can play your healer however the hell you want. I think the only thing that changed is the perception of everyone regarding healers. Like everyone now kind of realized that healers doing damage is really useful. So if a healer doesn't do any damage, you probably get more people looking at you like in a negative way than in the past. But that doesn't mean that in the past you didn't have damage spells. Healers always had damage spells. Right? Like, I think that was always the case. All the way until a classic, even. And healers usually used their free time to do damage. Because what else would you be doing? Right? Like, there's just nothing you can do as a healer when there's nothing to heal other than pressing your damage buttons. And in the past, I think the general, um, like, player base didn't necessarily, like know exactly how how to play the game perfectly no matter which role so it wasn't very common to tell healers to dps right like a few expansions ago um if a healer didn't dps well then who cares no one really looked at it right and nowadays it's a bit different nowadays it's a people just got better at the game generally like the general player base is better at playing wow now than they were a couple of years ago so if healers don't DPS now, it's con like it's considered a more negative thing because people understand that it's useful to press damage buttons as a damage as a healer, right? While in the past that wasn't the case. That doesn't mean that it wasn't good to do that in the past too, right? <laughs> like nowadays, uh, in the past, it was also very useful for damage dealers to uh, for healers to press damage buttons.
if you don't want to DPS as a healer, then you have to find players and a guild that allows you to do that, though. Because you're not being optimal then, right? It basically just means that you're not fully using the tools that you have available to you. Which is fine. Everyone can play the game however they want, right? If you want to... Like, if, if you play a damage healer and you never want to press AoE buttons and you always just want to press single target buttons, then that's up to you. Or if you want to play a damage healer and you never press defensives and you never use a health stone and you never use, use a healing pot, well, that's up to you. But then you're not playing optimally and I'm sure people are gonna question you and probably also might not be okay with that. But that's it, right? That hasn't really change because i mean i was playing healer uh, i made a healer in method from like end of cataclysm to i don't remember but a couple of expansions and i remember i was doing dps all the time like that was that was always part of my of what i do you know like, even all the way back to Cataclysm, I always press damage buttons. It's not that I just didn't use those spells in the past. Yeah, I played Rasta Druid most of the time. I think in the past, healers had to conserve mana a lot more. They couldn't afford wasting it on damage skills. I mean, in the past... Most healers had a damage spell that wasn't even that didn't even cost mana. Like a rest of druid solar wrath did not cost any mana. So in fact it was better it was better to cast wrath than it was to waste your mana on something like nourish. Like it literally was just better for mana to to press a spell that doesn't cost mana, right? Yeah, I mean, Disc Priest is special because Disc Priest literally revolves around doing damage, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't really take Disc Priest as an example. And no, they didn't update everything about the UI yet. Like the sh the rate frame um the player frames are not updated perfectly. I mean, if you go really far back, right? If you go all the way back to something like classic, then certain healers maybe didn't press damage spells because they all cost cost mana, and you just like s sat there and you were oom um and stuff. I personally don't think that is very enjoyable because then you're literally AFK. But I mean, if someone, if some people think that's enjoyable to literally just sit there and not cast a single spell and do nothing, then that's, so be it, right? I personally don't think that's very enjoyable at all. <laughs> but if you enjoyed that, then sure, I guess. The biggest difference today is the healers bring higher percent of the group's damage than before, so those people who feel even worse about not use it, doing it. Maybe? I mean, how far back are we thinking, though? Because I remember doing a lot of damage as a healer. You main, Okay, so usually the way damage works for as a healer is that at the start of the expansion, you do a lot of damage compared to damage dealers. 
and at the end of the expansion, the difference is a lot bigger. Like the damage dealers do a lot more damage than you as a healer because of the way the game works. Like at the start of an expansion, everyone has like low stats and low everything, right? And the longer the expansion goes on, the more borrowed power you got and the more stats you got. And the nature of a healer is that there is a stat that doesn't scale with damage at all. Most of the time, like usually your mastery only gives you throughput, healing throughput and not damage. So the more stats you have, the more secondary stats you have, the worse you're scaling with damage because a damage dealer gains damage through all stats while a healer only gets damage through certain stats. So you automatically uh, become worse compared to damage dealers over the course of an expansion. And additionally, damage dealers gain borrowed power that gives them more damage while a healer gains borrowed power that usually gives them more throughput, healing throughput and not necessarily more damage. This is not true all the time, but um, for a lot of things it is true. So yeah, usually the start of the expansion, healers do a lot of damage in comparison to damage dealers, and then later on it's not that important anymore, I guess. So that so I remember even in even in expansions that are like a long time ago, I still remember doing a lot of damage as a healer at the start of an expansion. I don't think we have old locks, like super old locks. I guess we have stuff like Throne of Thunder locks. Oh no, there is no, there is no Throne of Thunder locks. Where is there? Let me check. Oh no, there are some locks for Throne of Thunder. Let's see. Him. Oh, I don't think the lock works properly. Oh, unfortunate. I did find something. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Uh, how do I compare this now? Oh, this is missing. Okay, this doesn't work. Fuck it, whatever. <laughs> this is too much work now. I'm more pissed off how Affliction Warlock can do 50% of a healer's heals. Uh. I never understand. Okay, so like I understand uh, that people like look at an HPS number and they have thoughts about it, but the thing that people don't consider is the fact that a lot of non-healer classes that have a lot of HPS, they exclusively heal themselves. Not always, but most of the time. And that doesn't mean, like, that doesn't devalue a healer's heals. Because what, what does a healer do? What's the healer's job? It's to keep people alive, right? And it's going to be infinitely more valuable for a healer to do a certain amount of HPS than it is for a damage dealer or a tank to do a certain amount of HPS because they only heal themselves, really. So it's not that a, it's not that a damage dealer's heals could replace a healer's heals. Because, like, imagine you put, you create a raid uh, with, like, 10 blood decays and 20, uh, I don't know, like, warriors, right? Then the 10 blood decays are all going to stay alive and the warriors are all going to die. 
even though the blood decays are going to do a lot of HPS, right? There's going to be so much HPS in the healing meter, but they're not healing the warriors. They're healing themselves, right? So how does it matter if a blood decay does a lot of HPS? Or why does it matter if a warlock does HPS or, some, or a shadow priest or whatever? Like, it doesn't matter, right? Because they heal themselves and you, you can look at it as like damage reduction instead of healing if that makes you feel better. Because certain cla like certain classes have damage reduction, right? Like, for example, a druid has uh, bark skin that reduces damage taken by twenty percent. Now imagine instead of reducing damage taken by twenty percent, you would take a hundred percent of the damage, but then heal away twenty percent of the damage you took. Then it would show up on the healing meter, right? Because damage reduction does not show up in healing meter, but healing does. And it's just a flavor choice if certain classes have DR or self-healing. Like, Blood Decay has self-healing, while a lot of other tanks have damage reduction. So for the Blood Decay, their healing meter is always really high, because they have a lot more self-healing than DR. While a lot of other tanks have more DR and less self-healing, and therefore it looks they don't do as much HPS as other tanks. And same goes with certain damage dealers. Certain damage dealers have a lot more damage reduction than self-healing, while other damage dealers have more self-healing than DR. In the end, it's the same thing, technically. It's just that one shows up in a healing meter and the other does not. Right? So you shouldn't consider it... Like, as a healer, you should never feel like, oh, this is stupid. This, this damage dealer heals so much. Because they don't heal the group. You heal the group as a healer, right? So you should you should not care about that at all. All right. Um. So I asked what kind of talents I should be looking at for Frosty K, and no one really said anything. Other than, like, um, certain things that suck with choices. And I also heard that there's only, like, four to five points difference in AoE versus single target. So that's, like, the only thing, really. <laughs> they have four legendaries in a tree. Yeah. I think that makes sense. I, I think we also have a lot of legendaries in our tree as Munkins, if I remember correctly. We definitely have a lot of them. A lot of bad ones. <laughs> chill streak is new. Okay, where's chill streak? Oh, it's here. Yeah, one point five of rust damage to the target and reduce their movement speed by seventy percent in four seconds. The string bounced up to nine times if we close the target within six yards. Okay. Hmm. Wait, it has 40 yards range. That's a lot of range. Huh. That seems pretty good. That seems really good. For, um, for a lot of things. That seems really good for PvP. It seems really good for um, r for raiding whenever um, whenever there's like things that happen that are spread out. Because yeah, I know it only has six yards range to jump between, but you have forty yards range to cast it, right? So if you um, like if you fight a boss. And then, like, in the other corner of the room, there spawns ads or whatever. Then you can just throw chill streak over there, and they'll all be slowed and get damage, right? Like, I think that seems pretty nice. Especially because it jumps nine times. It's a lot of times. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's definitely very niche, I would say, for raiding. Because in raiding, uh, I don't think it happens very often that you stand on, like, one spot. And there's a lot of, like, smaller ads that spawn somewhere else within six yards. <laughs> That's a bit rare, I would say, but I guess it does happen, or it could be useful. Uh, 
And it can also, I mean, obviously it's also nice for just like, like the range, if you don't consider the actual 40 yards range, it also nice, it's just nice to be, to have, right? If you are fighting like a bunch of mobs, then you just use it, right? Yeah, it could also be nice for like, to target cleave or something as well, yeah. Yeah, uh, seems, seems interesting. Oh, so this actually increases the value of it on lower targets, right? There's only two targets and that's really good. Oh, bounce range increases uh, by two yards. Oh, each time it bounces has a 20% chance to increase the maximum number bonus bounce by one. Huh. Technically, that could mean it could jump instantly, uh, infinitely. <laughs> huh, that's interesting. Alright, then what about the other talents? What about Unholy? Is there anything special with Unholy? With the Unholy tree? Like anything we haven't seen before, or something like a spec buff or whatever? Any special utility, special damage profiles, special something something? It's getting reworked. Oh, okay. So I gather it's not super great. <laughs> Didn't change much yet. Okay. Well, then maybe we look at it once they rework it again. What if there's only one target? Well, if there's only one target, I assume it doesn't bounce anywhere. So you use it on the boss and then it disappears. Like I'm pretty sure this chill streak needs other targets to bounce. So if you don't have other targets, it just doesn't work. So you wouldn't use the talent then. I totally do peel grapes, so grander, yep. That is um that is something I do all the time. And in fact, it takes up uh, two or three hours of my day just to eat like 10 grapes every day. It's a full-time job. <laughs> Their tree looks kind of interesting. Um, like the placement of it, it seems like there's very, like a lot of kind of, like it splits up a lot, no? Hmm. Anything interesting about the blood uh, tree that I should look at? It's kind of shit, oh. Hey, Vicatura, what's up? Hey, Emily. So you're telling me the unholy DK tree is bad and the blood DK tree? Don't take second blood boil and the dancing rune weapon force you into spamming heart strike again. Oh. Okay, so there's no new talents, like nothing new. Just like all old things with like. With like legendaries and like whatever. Or is there something you lose? Bottom right capstone. Okay. Unquenchable thirst. Well, vampiric blood is active. Store X percent of your death strike healing. When vampiric blood expires, blood or nearby enemies dealing one percent of their stored healing as shadow damage. Oh, oh, that's cool. Hmm. Yeah, that seems pretty cool. Well, this is like very implicit, though. I guess this it's not something you ever use in PvP. Well, I mean, bloody game PvP. <laughs> I guess you also don't really want this for raiding. Well, I guess there could be some encounters where you maybe want to take it. When bone shield is consumed, it shatters dealing on uh, shadow damage to, uh, to nearby enemies. This damage is tripled while you are within your death and decay. Oh yeah, so another AOE kind of splashing. Hmm. Yeah, seems okay-ish. <laughs> All right, all right. All right, so I'm not too impressed by the DK talents, honestly. Obviously, I don't play DK, 
So I don't have any more in-depth th thoughts of the like actual spec trees, but like the class tree, um, like it's not horrible, <laughs> but it definitely feels like you're a bit, um, like you're not very free to choose whatever you want. It feels like you're much more... Like it's much more set in stone what you take compared to some other talent trees, it, it looks like. Which is not horrible, but I think, generally speaking, it is nicer if you're more free to use whatever you want, right? Instead of, oh, I have to take this, I have to take that, I have to take this, you know? Especially for a hybrid class. For a damage dealer, it may be not so much, right? If it's a pure damage class. Like, we looked at Rogue, for example, and they were pretty like, oh, you have to take this and you have to take this. But I guess for um, for a pure damage dealing class, it kind of makes sense. While for, for a hybrid class, it maybe doesn't make as much sense. So yeah, those are my thoughts, I guess, of the DK tree. Now let's take a look at Priest. Oh, what the hell? Oh, wait. I didn't do the thing, right? You think Mookie might be good again in Dragonflight? We don't know anything about which class is going to be good and which isn't. We don't, we won't know that until a long time. In fact, we won't know that even after the expansion comes out, so don't hold your breath. Just play whatever you want. <laughs> oh my god, the peel gray burst in the chat. <laughs> Look at... In, in case you're wondering who peels grapes, it's Beam. Okay, the gray peeler. Sorry, I mixed up the words, okay? Shut up. <laughs> I seriously got this guild, yeah, if you if you say something wrong once or you, <laughs> you make a typo while speaking, then people literally make fun of you for like the end of eternity. <laughs> it's like the funniest thing that happens in this guild. Someone saying something wrong. <laughs> Typo equals your argument is invalid. <laughs> yeah. Who the hell peels grapes? Well, Deem, apparently. They taste better than <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about that one. I don't know about that. <laughs> yes, agent. Yep. What we know is that Enhance will dominate the meta for the whole expansion, though. Yeah, I mean, Enhance does seem really good. Elemental also seems really good. The Shaman in general just seems really, really good. With the talents they have and stuff. That still doesn't mean much, right? Because their numbers could just be horrible. <laughs> so. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Priest being the only healer so far without a kick? Um... I mean, how many healers do we have so far? It's only Druid, Evoker, and Priest, right? Oh, and Shaman. Well, but Shaman doesn't count because Shaman always had a kick, right? Mm. I mean, I honestly think it's whatever. Kicks as a healer... is more of a PvP thing. Um, and then a plus thing. And then in plus... Um, it depends on how like how good the interrupt is and how many times you can use it because most of the time you don't need your healer to interrupt and if you can do it then it's fine but it's not it's nice but like even druid gets interrupt but they have to be in cat form to use it and stuff which um i mean i don't know i think it's probably gonna be nice 
But yeah. I generally think that... I personally don't like the fact that healers get an interrupt at all, honestly. Because... <laughs> Because uh, it's all, it's honestly just a burden for the healer to have an interrupt. Like, I don't, I don't even think it's an advantage. You're just gonna be forced to use your interrupt. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, there's something you need to interrupt? Oh, well, that's a healer job, you know? <laughs> so it's like, oh, well. <laughs> So yeah, I honestly am not a big fan that healers get an interrupt at all. For shamans, I don't know, it has been a thing all the time, so it is whatever, right? Shamans always kind of had it. But every other healer having interrupts is more of a burden than anything else. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so pre you're saying that priests don't have silence? Oh, you're saying only Holy Priest doesn't have silence. Or interrupt. Or... Hmm. Only Shadow has silence? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, silence is kind of a bad interrupt anyway, so is it like a super big deal? I don't know. It's a bad interrupt in a sense that it's like a really long cooldown. If you don't have like the, the active talent, 45 seconds silence. I mean, sure, it would be nice to have sometimes, right? Yeah, I don't know. In TBC, every class could have a four second silence and no one found it to be a burden there either. Yeah, well, you're you're comparing <laughs> TBC to retail. That's not something you compare. Why don't priests get invited to dinner like paladins do? Because priests can't use plate. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nation Strike, and appreciate that. Um. I mean, I remember when healers still had interrupts. Uh, I was healing in... I think it was Cataclysm where healers still had inter interrupts, right? I remember I still had Skullbash um, in Cataclysm. And Paladin still had interrupt as well. And I remember I was interrupting certain boss... Like, on certain boss fights, I was interrupting stuff. And I was kind of... Like, it was kind of nice to have it, I think. Like, I kind of enjoyed being able to do that. But only because the damage dealers were not... Uh, like, only because the damage dealers messed it up and I could save... Save it, you know? I'd be like, oh, this dumb damage dealer didn't interrupt. Let me just do that for you, you know? So that felt nice. <laughs> but other than that... It's, it's hard to compare this stuff because... Uh, interrupts were a lot less important in the past, in PvE. Like, there was almost never a boss that actually required interrupts. And even if there was a boss that required interrupts, then you didn't need as many people to do it. The o like, I interrupts only started becoming really important in PvE once uh, M plus became a thing. Because M plus is the only PvE content where you actually need interrupts all the time. And we never had a version... Like, we never had Mythic Plus with healers having interrupts. Like, that was never actually a version of the game, other than Shaman. So we don't know how it would feel, right? We can't compare it to any other expansion because, yeah, we just never had that. Probably Mayboom, probably. Just play it if you want. about druids what do you mean druids what about them or if they're good listen <laughs> listen guys i don't know which class or spec or healer or damage dealer is going to be good in dragonfly no one knows okay please <laughs> please that is not something we know it 100 percent depends on balancing 
and balancing is not going to be done until after the expansion has already come out. It's completely impossible to tell if a class is going to be good or bad. The only thing you can look at is if the playstyle is going to be fun. And that is something you need to look at yourself because that is subjective, right? Because whenever I look at a talent tree, I might think, oh, this is fun and enjoyable. And someone else might be like, no, this sucks, right? So if you want to know if a certain spec is going to be fun, then I encourage you to go and look at the talent tree yourself on the talent calculator on Wowhead. Or to look at a, a content creator or something that is reviewing the talent tree and see what you think about it. But you should never ask the question, like, is it going to be good? Because what does good mean? A class being good means that they are, I would say, above average compared to the other classes. And that is something we don't know because that is balancing, right? And balancing doesn't happen until very, 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 very late. In fact, most of the balancing even happens after the expansion has already been released and everyone has leveled to max level and everyone has already been like doing stuff, right? So no one can tell you if a class is going to be good or bad. That is literally impossible to tell. So it's much more important to ask the question if something is going to be fun. Because that's the only thing that you can base your class choice off, right? New knowledge you can predict? I don't know, you cannot. There's a lot of... <laughs> There's a lot of people that pretend that they can predict what is good, and that is just not true. I mean, I can... Uh, I can... Uh, <laughs> I can pretend to know, and just, like, take a guess for, for clout. But is there gonna be any relevance to it? No. Not at all. But I can pretend to know what's going to be good. And make a YouTube video out of it. And maybe get a bunch of uh, thousand views. Even though I'm just talking out of my ass. <laughs> make a tier list. Yeah. <laughs> I could do that. Would you say the place to love a heel shaman is going to be fun? I don't know. I never played heel shaman before in my life. But I would encourage you to watch the talent. Um, I would encourage you to go to Max's they asked for YouTube channel and check out the talent tree discussions for certain classes if you want to watch. Like, for example, Max has a video, shaman talent trees with Chill drill, growl, and maybe. The idea. And they're obviously shaman mains, so they're gonna give you an opinion on it and see, and then you can decide if you like it or not. So you guys can just watch that if you're interested in shaman specifically. That's like if you use and this. And you look at that. And if you want to know about another class that the talent tree is already out of, then just look at that as well. Whenever. But yeah, if it's good or bad, it's not something we can tell. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right, uh, verify back one second, and then we look at the um, priest tree, the class tree, and then we're gonna go quickly over the spec trees. But I don't really play priest, so I mean I don't really play any class that under it. <laughs> so, so we're not gonna have too many opinions over the spec trees unless there's something like specific, something new that. Um, they introducing Dragonflight. But yeah, other than that, we're just gonna quickly go over it. All right, bear, bear back, one sec.
All right. <laughs> Kara. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. So I guess the priest tree is a bit more interesting because they're the only class that has two healing specs. So if Shadow were death as like a basic um, priest thing. What do they have baseline? Void bolt and void form, shadow form, yeah that makes sense. Even though Munkin has to skill Munkin form. <laughs> makes sense though because other druid specs can also have uh, shadow form. Uh, I mean, uh, Moonkin form, not Shadow form. Alright, then we have feathers here, our body and soul. Makes sense. Shadow meant to the word death. Improved, dispel magic. Mm hmm. Okay. I also rents the next. What does that mean? Did they have that before? Does that work on anything? That's interesting. Five point five K damage. How much is that? Does that scale with anything? Hmm. Then after healing a target below the uh, you deal yeah, twist of fate. Okay, that makes sense. Shit of fiends. Huh. It's interesting that um, there's like a, a complete line that is just like off to the sides. Hmm. Thanks for 10 months, uh, running M. Thank you so much. Welcome back. Then PI is in the middle. Makes sense, I guess. Still wish it wouldn't exist, but it is what it is, I guess. I think we complain enough about PI and they just disagree. I do wonder sometimes why they don't take such feedback, though. Because I think there's uh I think there's certain class buffs that people are like more okay with. And then there's other buffs that people are not so okay with. Um and I don't necessarily think that it has such a positive effect that they need both. Cause I, I do totally understand that certain people want to have more hybrid stuff. But, like, I think you can introduce hybrid stuff without it annoying so many people. You know what I mean? Hey, Andy, what's up? Yeah, I don't know. Like, it definitely seems a bit off that they're so insistent on stuff like PI. Because I do think there could be a version of PI that is not so annoying. It's just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> they take the feedback, but they think that people giving the feedback are a minority. Yeah, I mean, I guess that is the case. It's 
to remove PI, they have to remove Bloodlust and Hero from Mage Hunter, so shamans can get their glory back. What? I don't think that's related at all. <laughs> I don't see what PI has to do with Bloodlust. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Bloodlust literally buffs the whole raid. And PI is a single target haste buff. Hey, <laughs> Tarzan. PI should buff the raid. I mean, sure. I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind Raid PI. I mean, at that point it would just be Bloodlust though, right? Just turn PI into another Lust. Another class with Lust would be awesome. Yeah. That would defeat the purpose of... Um, like, the reason why they want PI to be in the game is because they want, or they think, that players like to have um, like personal uh, utility that buffs others' damage. Like I think they want it to be like a support class kind of thing that some people are into. And I do somewhat understand that, but I do still think that you can make PI a single target buff without it being the way it is right now like for example they could change it to be uh, like more of a static buff so you can properly calculate it because if you think about like if you think about other single target buffs uh, in Final Fantasy fourteen or something, uh, people don't mind those buffs as much because it can perfectly be calculated how much value they're, they have given to another person and then it can be attributed to you. And I honestly think that all the people complaining about PI mainly think that is the problem. So I think if you could calculate it properly, by it being more of a static buff, then people wouldn't complain so much. And you still retain the support kind of thing with it. And I know that it would be more boring. Like, I understand that if PI would give you percent damage instead of percent haste, then I understand it would be more boring, right? Because haste makes your class cast everything quicker, right? Which is obviously more fun than if your class just does X percent more damage. But I think that would be a good compromise, right? Basically, PI is only an annoyance for raid DPS players in low to mid tier mythic raiding guilds. You think so? I think it is definitely an annoyance for high tier raiding guilds as well. Like I... Like it's just the thing that I don't understand because what's the, the gain of it? Like I see the point of view that you are bringing up. You're saying, oh, the only people that are annoyed by it are X amount of people. Should we really remove it because of that? Then, but my question is, who benefits from PI being the way it is at the moment? And why? Because sometimes there can be something that is neutral to most people and some people dislike it then does it really matter if the people that dislike it is only like 30% of the player base? Because then at that point, changing it or removing it affects those 30% positively, and the other 70% were neutral about it anyway. And then it doesn't affect them negatively either. You know what I mean? I don't understand who loses with PI existing. 
Well, I mean, I can easily explain the problem with PI. The problem with PI is that it's a single target buff that is incredibly powerful. So it creates many issues with um, certain classes being much better with PI than not having it. Which creates a situation where you feel bad if you don't get it. Right? Like, that's the number one reason, I guess. And then additionally, it's much more powerful for a certain class than it is for others. And then it creates a situation where that class might seem more powerful than they actually are because of PI, that is not even their own spell. And it does ruin locks, obviously, as well, which some people have the argument, it's like, oh, but who cares about locks? And the answer is a lot of people do. You might not care about locks, but if you don't care, then why does it matter that it exists, you know? Like, <laughs> why does it matter that some people care about locks to you? I know they're considering implementing locks where you can remove parses with PI. Yeah, but that's not the solution either, though, right? So, so removing parses with PI makes no sense. Because PI um, is a tool that is available to you that if you use it, like, you, sh you should be using it, right? Like, obviously, you should be using PI. So removing locks that include PI is like really stupid not caring about something and then having something dictate what you do care about is ultimately also bad experience Just like not getting PI to boost your locks is which one is more important. I'm not sure what you mean. Because people can care about locks and it doesn't necessarily have to dictate dictate the way um, everyone enjoys the game. Like I think there can be changes that are being made to the game that um, makes like there can be compromises that makes multiple like everyone happy in a sense because i'm gonna ask this very simple question why do you like the fact that you can give someone else pi like what's the positive outcome of pi existing in its current version like what do you like about it what's good about it why do you want it to exist It's fun. What 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 does it, what's fun about it? Like that's not an argument. Like you need to have a reason. Like why is it fun? It's a high skill tool to make an outcome of a fight better. Okay, so I don't think it necessarily has a high skill ceiling. I don't think that is correct. But even if it was, even if that's true, like even if you think that the strategic thought process behind it adds to the fight. Like, if that's what you like about it. So let's say you're like, you like the fact that you're sitting there with your raid group and you consider who to give it to. And then this person gains a lot of DPS here and this person gets, like, if it's like a strategic kind of thing that you like about it, then that's fine and I get that. But then it doesn't have to be haste, right? Then it can also be a damage gain. A percentage damage gain, right? For example. You help your team and it's a team game. Yeah, okay. So if you like that about it, like if you if you like helping your team, if you like the support if aspect of it, then again it could be a damage taken a uh, damage um done increase. It doesn't have to be haste, right? 
picking the right person to use it on. Yeah, again. Yeah, I, I understand that. I understand that. And then again, it doesn't still doesn't have to be a haste buff, right? Why does it matter if it's haste or damage done? Well, it's simple, because if it's haste, the value that you've given to the other person is impossible to calculate. But if it's a damage done increase, you can calculate it. And that's the best of both worlds in my mind. Why do you need to calculate the damage given? Because you want to attribute it to a person that buffed it, instead of the person that received it. That would solve all of the issues that people have with it, right? Why? As a healer, they wouldn't care, no? I mean, of course they care. Of course, of course they care. How much damage do you've given a person? I don't care as a healer, well... Yeah, but if you don't care, then you also don't... Then it's also irrelevant to you if it's... Attributed to you or the other person, and then it's also not a negative if it's attributed to you though, right? Haste changes the feeling of the gameplay, faster cast, more spells. Yeah, yeah, but isn't that a compromise that is okay? Because I understand that a haste buff is more fun than a damage buff. Like, I 100% understand that. But you can keep everything else about it. Like, I would just think that that's a good compromise. Like, an in-between thing that makes both people happy, in a sense. Or, not both people, but, like, everyone, kind of, that uh, cares about P.I. Haste can be given to any role. Well, no, it wouldn't exclude healers. You can just make it damage and ha and healing, right? It doesn't have to be only a damage increase. It could only it could be a damage and healing increase, right? What about giving Piat to another healer or a tank? Yeah, it could be a damage and healing increase. PVers take PvP into consider consideration at all when freaking out about PI? No. I'm gonna give you the simple answer. <laughs> the answer is no. But here's the thing. I don't think you you need to. Because you can make like you can you can literally have a the PI just work differently in PvP, or make it a PvP talent to give you also haste or something. <laughs> okay, you're you're very upset. You should take a deep breath, Xiuni. Take a breath, okay? No one's trying to take your shit away. It literally can be a PvP talent or work differently in PvP. PvE and PvP are not the same. You can have things in PvE that work differently in PvP. So calm down. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a PvP talent. You can literally just make it interact differently, okay? Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> I can't. Oh. Also, you can still have like even if it's a damage increase, right? Like even if P even if PI would be a damage increase instead of a haste increase, wouldn't it still be valuable in PvP and interesting to use? I mean, yeah, you don't have haste anymore, but you have a damage increase, right? Wouldn't that be interesting as well? Like, would that be would that completely break everything about it? Infinitely more boring. Well, then, uh, just make it work differently in PvP. Like, I don't understand why we're so upset about this. I don't get it. You can make it a choice talent, you can choose damage or haste. Yeah, yeah. That would work, I guess, but that, I think that would be really hard to balance. Because making a haste gain the same value as the damage gain is, um, I would say, not really possible. Because certain classes scale a lot better with haste, and the damage everyone scales the same way as the damage with a damage gain, right? Also, I don't understand why people complain about PI so much when it literally didn't work this way before. Like, <laughs> PI literally wasn't able to be cast on other people for the longest time. And I have never seen people complain anywhere about that. I've never seen anywhere where people's like, oh, I want to buff PI on other people again. Like, I've. And now all of a sudden it would be the, the biggest thing if it would be gone again. It's like, oh, if you take away PI now, then Priest would just be bad and no one would play it anymore. <laughs> like, what happened before PI was buffed? Like, before PI. During all of these years where you didn't have PI to give it to other people. What happened then? Like, was that... Did no one play Priest at that moment, or...? Was it an unplayable class? People are just mad that high-end raiders are getting a change that they asked for. <laughs> that is like... It's funny because it's true. Which, by the way, we're not even getting it. We've been asking them to remove PI for the longest time and they're not actually listening to us, so. But it's funny. It's not actually funny, it's sad that people are so spiteful towards each other. Like, it's not even about... It's not even about... Um, the changes themselves sometimes. It's just about who's been asking for them. And that's what really gets me. <laughs> it's like, oh, because this person asked for it, that is like a high-end raider, they shouldn't get this change, you know? It's like, oh, if if someone else asked for it, it would be totally okay. But uh, the high-end raider base is like the absolute, like they're the devil or whatever. And they're ruining the game, and whenever they ask for a change, it just never should never happen. It's like... <laughs> you know what would fix the API issue? If Warcraft Lux wouldn't include PI damage at all? Well, yeah, that's my point, but that doesn't work if it's a haste buff. And that's what it is. That's why I'm suggesting they should change the damage instead of haste. No, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot calculate the benefit of haste. It's just there's too many variables. It doesn't work. According to Max PI, is only a problem for low end guilds. 
Well, Max is definitely wrong on that point. <laughs> that is definitely wrong. I think I think Max means that maybe he just misspoke or maybe he misheard. Um, he probably meant that PI is not a problem for like, well, for his guilds. So, yeah. Like it's it's definitely a problem for for every other top guild. It's just not a problem for a race of first guilds, right? Because they don't give a shit how much damage they do. Like they don't care if they do 10 kdps or 20 kdps as long as they can kill the boss. So the haste, like the pi thing, doesn't really matter because they just calculate whatever is better and they just puff it to that person. That's it. And it doesn't matter t to them if. Like, if there's three Warlocks and two of them get PI and one doesn't, then that one person that doesn't get PI is not gonna be upset about it as much. <laughs> so it's Ego? I mean, yeah, if you didn't notice... Almost everything about this game is about fucking ego, yeah? Everyone wants to perform well. Like, what is what is that supposed to say? You telling me that you play the game completely selflessly? Of course everyone wants to enjoy the game and everyone uh, cares about their own performance. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> that's not, a, that's not the, such a bad thing. It's just how it is, right? This game, yes, this game is supposed to be like a like a team game or whatever, but there's many things that you don't do in a team. There's many things you just do for yourself or by yourself, and it's an enta entertainment game. Like it's it's about entertainment. It's not about anything else for a normal player. For the race to world first guild, it's different because they care about winning. They care about getting number one, and that's all they care about. It's like it's almost like a job to them. So to them it might not matter as much if a class does a little bit more damage because they'll just play a different class. Or they just buff to someone else. Because their goal, like when they play World of Warcraft, their goal is to win the race to world first. When I play World of Warcraft, I play it for enjoyment for myself. And then of course you, you care about your own performance and your own enjoyment. So if you want to call that ego or whatever, then sure. But I don't see how, <laughs> how that's a bad thing. Worker locks could just disable locks with externals? I mean... <laughs> I mean, yes, they can, but I don't think that is a very good solution. Because first of all, you can... <laughs> like... Completely disabling locks with externals would... Like... That is just, just such a counterintuitive thing, right? Because you have a tool that would help you kill the boss quicker, but if you use it, it, like, excludes the lock. Like, that would be a bit stupid, I think. I still find it hard that we're trying to change the game based on a third-party website. Okay. Why are we balancing the game then? Like, why are we balancing single target damage? If that's your argument. Because in game, there's nothing that actually shows you how much damage you do in comparison, comparison to others, right? There's no inbuilt damage meter. So, why do we even balance the damage dealers at all? If it's only about a third party add on, third party website? Duh. Like, come on, listen to yourself. Of course damage and balancing fucking matters. 
Yeah, it might be the only way to actually look at the numbers properly might be a third party website, but that doesn't matter. That's literally how people play the game, yeah. Combat lock shows the damage. Well, yes. You're telling, you're telling me that you look through the combat lock and uh, look how much damage everyone's doing and then you figure out that you did less damage than someone else and that's why they're balancing the game. The problem with worker locks now is that you can't filter externals out. Yeah, okay, that would be a better solution, I think. Because someone was saying that they should be completely excluding um, externals. And I think that is definitely wrong. But being able to filter them out makes more sense, yes. Like, if you could choose... Um, like, if on worker locks you could, for example, say, Hey, I want to look at only locks that have no PIs. Or I want to look at locks that have, like, one PI or whatever. Then I guess you could somehow compare it a bit more. But it's not like it's. I don't think it's ex um, exclusively about locks either. Like I do think there's other issues that we're just disregarding right now. Uh, I personally just always focus on the on the lock thing because people, for whatever reason, always uh, think it's really stupid to care about locks. And I just don't understand that. It's like, uh, why would it be a stupid thing to care about locks? Like, I don't get it. Like, it's it's like a, it's a, a, a website that calculates numbers and tells you values. I don't see how it's stupid uh, to care about that being an accurate thing that you can compare your own performance to others. Like, I think that just doesn't make sense to care about that some for some people at least. Not saying that everyone should care about it, but the people who do care about it, so what? You know, like, I don't get it. But anyway, I think there's other things as well um, that are problematic with PI that does affect people, like everyone actually, not just like people who care about locks. It's also the fact that um, certain classes scale really well with haste compared to like other stats. And then they sometimes literally get nerfed or changed because they scale so well with with pi and i think that is a that is a pretty big problem because let's say you're raiding and you don't have a priest and you don't get pi and then your class gets nerfed because you scale really well with pi even though you never actually get it like isn't that uh, I think that's also a problem, right? It would be the same thing. Let's say you scale really well with Wind Fury Totem, but you don't have an Enhancement Shaman in your group, so you never get Wind Fury, and then your class gets nerfed because you scale well with Wind Fury. Like, isn't that kind of dumb? It's not stupid to care about locks, but it is stupid to change the game before adding filters to locks to see if that fixes a perceived issue first, no? But, I'm... Um, like, I just don't see how filters are actually solving the, is the issue at hand, though. Like, the actual issue is, is not necessarily being able to filter out the damage. Even though that would help, and I think it would be better than what it is now. But... Like, changing the game according to locks is something that happens all the time, yeah? Like, I don't see how that's even something we're talking about. Like, the game constantly is being changed because of locks, yeah? It's not, it's not something that would be completely new and completely out of the ordinary that uh, the game is being changed because of locks, yeah? Just so we are clear on that. It wouldn't be like the first time ever that they're doing that. They literally do it all the time.
What? What if you play a tank with bad parses but always down bosses and carry people that die because you're super tanky and have bad DPS? Okay. Uh, I don't see how that has anything to do with what we were just talking about. I'm not arguing that the lock numbers are relevant. Yeah? Like, I'm not saying if you have a higher log number, you're a better player. I never, li I literally never said that. <laughs> and I don't think that is true either. So I don't know why we're talking about that. And especially not with tanks or healers. <laughs> I'm not saying that the log numbers make you a better player or, or something. <laughs> Jensen. <laughs> but yeah, let, let's move on from this uh, discussion because I do think that most of the people who argue against um, the PI removal or change are people that either are PvP people, which is just a completely different story, right? Or there are players who literally just don't want it to change because it doesn't affect them personally in a bad way, and therefore they don't want a change to happen because higher-end PvE players ask for it. Like, I'm sorry, but that's just what it seems like. Because <laughs> I didn't see a single person when I asked the question, why do you want PI the way it is? Not a single person said that uh, they enjoy it for a reason that cannot be changed. Like every everyone said, oh, it's fun to buff others. Yeah. Okay, if that's what you enjoy about PI, then it can it can be reworked to something that is not annoying for everyone else. So... I haven't seen an argument where people are like, oh, PI is amazing because blah, blah, blah. No, I understand that ha I didn't ignore people that said haste is more fun than percentage damage. But how does that affect you personally as a priest? I don't fucking understand. Like, if you're a priest player and you're giving someone else PI... Then how does it matter to you if they get haste or damage increase? The person that receives the PI has a different feeling depending if it's haste or damage increase. But you yourself don't... Like, why do you care? I don't understand. It's a disingenuous question. I mean, I don't agree, though. I, I don't think that it's such a complex issue. Honestly, like, I, I think there's a problem that exists that might not exist for every single player in the game, but it clearly does exist. And the people, people are against fixing the issue for no, like, real reason that I can think of or that, I, that I've heard so far that is very, like, good. I don't know. Like, a lot of people that like PI the way it is right now, I don't think it would completely break the game if it would be something else. Like, if it would still be a buff, but it would be something that can be calculated. 
I don't see how that completely make or breaks the game for them, you know what I mean? So I don't actually think it's that complex of an issue at all, because the, the basic idea behind PI, what people like, and this is literally what Ian said, or generally the devs, the World of Warcraft devs have been talking about the fact that uh, they like stuff like PI in the game because people like playing a support class, right? I personally also am not a big fan of that because I think um, support classes in WoW could have, like, I think they could exist, but I think then it should be like an, their own role, honestly. Like, I think all of these issues would be resolved if they wouldn't try to put support these spells into our existing system where we don't have support classes anymore. Because we have, we have tanks, healers, and damage dealers. That's how the game works right now, right? And in the past, like a long, long time ago, we had hybrid classes that didn't do as much damage as a pure damage dealer, but they had like buffs and support for others. And some people enjoyed that playstyle. But then Blizzard removed that because they didn't think it makes sense for a hybrid class to do less damage than, than a pure DPS class. So we removed that, right? I think at the moment hybrid classes are not real hybrid anymore. They are just, depending on what role that hybrid class is, they are just that, right? Like I don't think there's a big difference between a, um, between a elemental shaman and an affliction warlock in a sense what they can do because both of them provide utility both of them have their uh like non-dps talents and non-dps abilities that they can use it's it's not like an elemental shaman uh can start like completely off healing the whole raid and would be super useful and a healer or whatever no right an elemental shaman is a damage dealer that's it right there's no difference or distinction anymore between a hybrid damage dealer and a normal, like a pure damage dealer. We just don't have that anymore. And I think that's fine. That's just how the game evolved because people didn't like the fact that they would do less damage than a pure damage dealer, right? Um, and now I think they're trying to kind of force these kind of support the abilities onto classes that are not actually supposed to be support classes because we don't have support classes, right? So, in my opinion, all of this would be solved. Like, if they really want to keep this whole supporty thing going, then I think they should just turn certain specs into actual support classes and make it like a whole role. And then people can choose to play a support class if they want to. And otherwise, they just play something else, right? Because I just think right now it's just like really weird in between where it just feels like oh we have some classes that have support spells for others that no one has been like asking for like shadow priests for example they have never been like an insane like supporty class by any means right i mean yeah they were a hybrid spec but it's not that shadow priest usually has a lot of things to support others and then all of a sudden their pi can be given to someone else and that it was like totally forced upon them in my opinion it's like, oh, you're now a support class. You're now buff others with PI. It's like, uh, it's like, what the hell? So I honestly think that um, if they really think that World of Warcraft as a whole likes support classes, which I am still doubting very much, by the way, I think WoW players very much evolved to caring about their own performance a lot more than supporting. But... If they think that support the classes would work in WoW and people would actually play them, then introduce support classes, right? And like rework some specs to be support class. And then you just um, make it a role. I don't know. And then you have, I don't know, then maybe in a plus you have like one tank, one healer, one support, and two damage dealers or something like that. I don't fucking know, you know? Or in a raid you have like two tanks, four healers, three supports and then the rest is like damage dealers i don't know like create your own like role or something if that's what you think works or is wanted i don't know 
Thank you so much for uh, gifting us up to Brian Stricken. Appreciate that. There's still support class, Demon Hunter and Monk for the plus 5% magic and physical damage. I don't think that uh, makes them a support class. In my opinion, like, a support class is a class that does le less damage themselves, but provides a lot of damage to others to kind of even it out. I think that's what a support class is, like a true support class, right? And I don't think Demon Hunter and Monk are that. Demon Hunter and Monk provide the same amount of damage as other classes do. They just additionally give someone else's a buff. Those things are the exact same buffs as PI. Okay, now you just... Uh... <laughs> like, I don't even know what to say about that one. If you think that... <laughs> A 5% magic damage buff to the whole raid is the same as a PI. Then I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but yeah. At this point it is what it is, right? And PI is in the game and I don't think they'll remove it. It's I think... Um, I think they could have had a great opportunity to adjust PI to be, um, like, I honestly think that uh, PI existing sucks, but I do think they could have at least, um, like, if they don't want PI to change at all, like, if they want PI to be a haste buff and a signatory buff or whatever, fine, right? But I think they could have at least made it harder to access as well. If they really want to keep it, so people at least have to sacrifice something to get it, and then maybe not everyone would actually go with it, you know what I mean? Like, maybe you would have to sacrifice a little bit of your own damage or something to get it, which would still suck, because then it would just be a number thing, and then if it's better to have PI and someone else, you would always have to sacrifice your own damage to get it, which I guess would be horrible for the Shadow Priest itself. <laughs> um... But, yeah, I mean, it's, obviously it's like in the middle of the tree here, and everyone's just gonna get PI, right? Like, this doesn't seem like an option at all. It's like, you take PI. Like, a priest can't even sit here and say, Ah, actually, I would like to have these other talents instead. Like, this PI position definitely means, like, everyone, like, you are gonna take PI, right? Like, it's literally in the dead middle of the tree. And you barely have to waste any points to even get it, right? It's right in front of Master Spell, even. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, like, it's definitely just, like, forced on everyone now. <laughs> Brian. I think Blizzard is 100% going for adding support things that cannot be calculated. They want everyone to have intangible good things so that we can't accurately analyze classes. PI being haste is probably very intentional. I honestly was thinking about that too. Especially in Shadowlands, I thought that that was their intention. Because in Shadowlands, there were a lot of... This is something I talked about as well. And I'm not sure if this is... I mean, it could be true. Because um, when Shadowlands came out with all of the covenants and stuff, I was thinking that their intention behind the covenants possibly could have been that it's so convoluted to figure out what's best that it's almost not impossible, but really hard to calculate what's best. And therefore, it might give people more freedom to choose what they want. Because I think... That is somewhat of a valid concern. Like, at least understand the concern. I don't agree with it, but I understand it. Like, if Blizzard says, okay, um, we don't want people to perfectly calculate everything, and we want them to kind of do whatever they feel like is best, you know? And people nowadays are obviously really, really good at calculating what's best, 
So it is possible that they're trying to create these like convoluted systems to not make it so clear cut or to make it much harder to figure out so people can just kind of do whatever they want. And I think that is something that I was thinking about um, because talent, like co covenants were so complex. Like you have covenants, then you have different soul lines, you have different conduits, you have different soul bind traits, you have different legendaries, different talents, right? And the combination of all of that was incredibly complicated. Um, but I think we can all conclude that that didn't really work. Or what do you think? Like, I think making the game more complicated in that sense didn't make the game more enjoyable for people that don't like figuring it out. At least that's, but that was my opinion. And I guess it also depends on like the different players, like because people like different things, right? But I definitely had a feeling that it um, reduced the amount of things people even wanted to try because it was too complex for anyone to even like understand anything. So, like, whenever I had players come into my stream and ask questions, they didn't, they didn't want me to explain why I do what. They just, like, they were, like, overwhelmed by the amount of choices and stuff that they were just like, fuck it, show me a picture of your talent, show me a picture of your uh, soul bind tree, show me exactly what I should be doing, and I'll just do that, you know? Like, that was most players, right? Most players just set... Okay, what covenant should I play? Which soul bind? What trades? Just tell me, you know? And that makes a lot of sense because... I don't know, like sitting there... Like you couldn't really try all combinations of all soul binds and all conduits. Like it was too complicated. So it really discouraged... I think it actually actively discouraged players to try new things. So I think it actually did the opposite of what a Blizzard intended. If that is what they intended. I obviously don't know that. Thanks for 11 months, Beast Race. Appreciate that. So yeah, I'm not sure if that is... Like, I'm not sure if fighting it makes so much sense. You know what I mean? Like, fighting the calculations and fighting the min-maxing? Like, what, what do you think about this? Because, obviously, there's a lot of people who hate min-maxing, right? Like, there's people who really hate that, and I understand why. Like, I definitely understand why people don't like that. But, I think it's impossible to kind of make that stop. Because that's just how games work nowadays. No matter which game, right? No, no matter which MMO, no matter which other game it is, people nowadays just really min-max everything and try hard and want to be the best. And there, there are so many tools available to us nowadays that help us min-max, right? There's like websites and theory crafters and Discord chats and like add-ons and tools that like uh, improve the way we can min-max. And I'm not sure if... if it's a good idea or if it's helpful if a company like a game company is actively fighting that like i'm not sure if that makes sense they don't necessarily have to support it actively but i also not i'm not sure if they actively have to fight it like if that's a good idea you know because if people want to min max then then that's what they want right like do you have to force us not to do that is that gonna be good? You know, like, I'm not sure it is. Because why does everyone min-max? Well, because they like doing it, right? Because they want to be better, because they want to improve their own performance. That's what people like nowadays. So do, should you really stop them from doing it actively? I don't know. A lot of the feedback comes from the min-max people. They can't ignore it. Um, I mean, yes, I definitely agree that a lot of the feedback probably comes from the, from the people who are min-maxing. Because the people who... Um, like, 
it obviously makes sense if there's if there's players in a game that play the game very casually and they don't want to min max anything then it makes sense that those players also wouldn't necessarily give a lot of feedback because they don't care as much probably right like i i'm sure there's a lot of people that wouldn't care if pi exists or it doesn't you know they wouldn't care if if another spell exists or it doesn't they wouldn't care um maybe even how good their damage is compared to others like there's a lot of people who literally just don't care they play the game and they have fun and that's it right I'm sure they care about some things. It's not that they don't care about anything, but <laughs> they probably care less about things and therefore they give less feedback, right? Because if you don't, the more you care about something, the more feedback you probably are gonna give. So it makes sense that a lot of the feedback is from people that care a lot about the game and people that care a lot about the game are a lot of the times also people that like try hard and min max or whatever. That's why I per like I actually think that all of these issues would be somewhat okay. So if you like look a bit back on like the bigger picture, um, like uh, we can ask ourselves like why is everyone's like why does everyone think their own damage is so important? And I think the reason why is because a lot of the bosses um, are very reliant on dps i think a lot of bosses get become a lot easier if you have the right damage numbers and if you have the cooldowns on certain times and whatever because if you compare if you compare a lot of the raid bosses that we have in wow to other um games other mmos then the damage numbers are a lot more relevant in wow than they are in other games um and I think that's why a lot of people in WoW care so much more about their damage numbers. And that's why I personally kind of wish that they would um, change the way they design bosses a little bit to make it less about damage and more about uh, like personal kind of like mechanical things. Because if you take Lost Ark as an example, or if you take um, Final Fantasy XIV as an example, I think both of those games um have a kind like their boss fights kind of have like the way they're designed is that i don't think that the damage numbers necessarily matter as much until you're close to killing the boss like not that the damage is completely irrelevant right damage matters in those games too but it doesn't care like it doesn't matter until a certain point like in Final Fantasy XIV, for example, when you're progressing a fight and you wipe it like 50% of the boss or something, then it literally didn't matter if you wiped it 50% or if the boss was at 60 or 70 or 30 or 80. Like it literally doesn't matter for your progression. Um, it only matters how the raid stayed alive and how you perform like mechanically, right? And yeah, it's good practice to already play your rotation perfectly instead of just running around. But there are boss fights in Final Fantasy XIV where I could have progressed the boss without pressing a single damage button. And I would still would have progressed the same way as if I would have pressed damage buttons. Because the damage to the boss is not relevant until the boss dies. Right? Or until he hit Enrage. And in World of Warcraft, it's not the same at all. In WoW, I think damage matters a lot all the time. Like, damage matters, you need to meet certain damage checks on ads. You, meet, you need to meet certain damage checks on, like, in between boss fights. Like, like mid damage checks, right? And so on and so on and so on. Like, damage is really, really relevant. And the, the problem, quote-unquote, with damage being so relevant 
is that it becomes a group effort instead of a single person effort, right? Because even if you yourself do the absolute most damage you can, you still might not meet the damage check on this specific part of the fight because the other players in your group are not doing enough damage, right? So it becomes this group effort all of a sudden where you as a group have to decide, okay, where do we use which cooldowns? What is our setup? Uh, what kind of players are, are we taking? Who gets which buff? Who gets PI? Who gets this? Who gets that? When are we using Bloodlust? Blah, 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 right? And I think those kind of decisions are part of World of Warcraft, of course. But I do think that people um, nowadays are not as happy with those strategic decisions anymore as they were in the past when the game was more of a group game. Because I think in the past when World of Warcraft came out, the whole uh, group aspect and the guild aspect and the social aspect about the game was like the core thing about WoW. It's like you had to kill raid bosses together as a team and you all had to like figure out everything together and blah blah blah, right? While over the course of the, the years of the, of the games existing, I think a lot more players shifted towards caring more about their own performance than caring about like a group's performance, right? And because that is true, I think that people start not being so happy anymore about these kind of group decisions about DPS in a raid. And therefore, um, it creates this whole problem that we have in WoW, where people are so focused about their own DPS and about their own performance because DPS is so important in boss encounters. And I think that some of these issues would be solved if um, the rate encounters would be more designed towards personal performance. Um, not damage performance, but rather your own personal performance, like when it comes to like mechanics. I think Painsmith is a good example of a boss that does that. Like Painsmith was a boss where the damage wasn't really that important after like the first two weeks, right? Like you, it was pretty easy to meet the damage check on Painsmith. So most people, you even had to stop damage most of the time, right? So most people really had to focus on their own performance. You had to stay alive, right? You cannot get hit by spikes. You cannot get hit by the balls. You need to position yourself properly with the chains. You need to not knock people with the chains. In the intermission, you need to walk around and not get hit by anything, right? And I think that kind of fight, Painsmith, was really, really liked by a lot of players because of that very fact that I was just talking about, that the whole raid encounter was designed around your own personal like mechanical performance rather than your whole rate's damage performance. And that's why I think that boss was really liked. And that's why I also think that if they would do that more often with raid bosses, then I think raiding in general would be more fun for most players. And I also think that the, the damage itself wouldn't be so relevant anymore for players. Because your own damage performance wouldn't be as important anymore. Thank you so much for two years, active rates. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. What do you think about my whole rant that I just talked about? Any opinions? <laughs> It's already like that for Mythic Progression Guilds for the most part. DPS checks become irrelevant by the time it was just not like that. It's, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that's true. Like, I don't think that a lot of the boss, like, there's so many boss fights where damage is still incredibly relevant, even if um, they got nerfed. Because I think, like, if you take a boss like Rygalon. Yes, the overall damage check might not be as important anymore, like the end rate of the boss. But you still have damage checks all the time throughout the whole fight. You need to kill the quasars in the correct moment, right? That's already like a damage focused thing by itself. You need to kill the like the matters in the correct moment as well. And like all of that 
is a group effort focused on damage, right? That sounds good, but then if they do that, change then the PI talk we had isn't relevant. I'm basically saying I'm basically saying that if the bosses themselves would be less focused on damage, then people wouldn't care less about um stuff like PI. I still think people would care about it. And I still think that um PI being reworked would uh still work better for like people's Minds like if a PI would be like a damage gain instead of a haste gain or like a crit gain instead of a haste gain or something uh, Then I still think that that would be Like people would still care but um, I think it would be less of a problem Because your goal as a group or you your goal for your own performance is more about Like not dying rather than doing a lot of damage and you know what I mean with that, right? Because obviously right now, a lot of the boss fights are still not, are not about dying. But if you think about a boss like Anduin, for example, uh, I think Anduin is like the extreme of a group fight. And people hate it, right? Like, I think Painsmith is the complete opposite of Anduin when it comes to... Um, rate responsibility and individual responsibility. Because on Anduin, it's all about raid responsibility, right? On Anduin, there's so little you can even die to as an individual person. Like, there's only so many things you can do wrong on Anduin. You can die with blasphemy, I guess. Uh, you can even get hit by a wall in a demission phase. You can get hit by a star, and that's it. But those are, like, very, very simple mechanics. All the other things about that fight are just about your group's performance, right? Your group needs to have enough damage on the souls to kill them in time. Your group needs to see that, uh, and so on. You need to have enough damage in the intermission phase. You need to have enough damage in the, so in the downstairs phase, and so on. Like, it's all about coordination and about figuring out your damage to have exactly enough damage in each, in, like, individual phase. Which really, really emphasizes... Um, like this whole issue that I talked about that people um, maybe like are really focused about their own damage and stuff because that's the only thing that matters that you have to coordinate within a group and Painsmith is the complete opposite where there's barely any damage checks at all on Painsmith right? The only real damage check that he had on Painsmith after the first like two weeks was being able to kill the embers in time, the ets after an intermission and that was it and everything else was just about individual, um, like, performance. Like, being in the correct spot at the correct time, dodging balls, dodging spikes, moving the bombs out, triggering the bombs, and so on, right? And that's why I think Painsmith was a lot more liked than something like Anduin. Yeah, I think I think Anduin is a good fight if you're happy about like if you like group responsibility or like raid coordination and stuff. But I am just under the impression that most players nowadays would rather have personal responsibility than raid responsibility. Yeah? Cause it's just um I don't know, I just feel like that's how we play the game nowadays, where... Not not to say that all raid responsibility is, is bad. Like, I'm sure people um, care about working together with others. But if you're individual at performance... Because there's always the... It's not just black and white, right? You can have a boss fight where it's 10% about your own performance and 90% about the raid performance. Or you can have a boss fight where it's 50-50. Or you can have a boss that works 90% about your own performance and 10% about the raid performance, right? There's obviously, like, all of this in between. And I think Anduin is a fight where it's 10% about your own performance and 90% about your raid. And I think that's just a bit too much. Because I don't mind, um, like, working together with your raid and, you know, figuring stuff out together. But uh, not if it's 90% of the boss fight, you know? Like, I'd rather have it be, like... 20% of the boss side, or 30. <laughs> Thanks 
53% Skyfire at 53%. Oh my god. Oh my god, there's too many numbers. Thank you so much for 53 months, Skyfire. Good morning, what's up? How are you doing? Thank you so much for 61 months. Appreciate that, as someone plus. What's up? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Personal responsibility feels great until you have a few raiders who don't care about it. Doing a mechanic properly, then being punished when a teammate ignores it for a throughput feels bad. Well, when I talk about personal responsibility, um. Like, understand personal responsibility can uh, mean different things. But when I talk about it, I'm more meant things that you have to do well to perform better yourself that doesn't necessarily affect others. Like, for example, um, if you make a mistake, then you die. Or you do less damage. But you don't cause others to necessarily do dam less damage or die. Because that, in my opinion, is already, is, is like a rates requirement. Like, if one person makes a mistake and it affects everyone, then, in my opinion, like, that's what I mean with a fight like Anduin. Where it's like the raid performance that matters. And as soon as the raid performance matters, individual players affect everyone, right? When I, t when I talk about personal responsibility fights, that I mean a fight where if you play really well, you stay alive and you do a lot of damage. If you don't play well, then you die or you do less damage. But it doesn't mean that everyone else also does less damage because you died, you know what I mean? Thank you so much for eight months, Kiara, what's up? I also think that personal responsibility is per very well with smaller raid groups. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. Like, it makes sense that um, Final Fantasy XIV and Lost Ark have more personal responsibility because the raid size are a lot smaller, right? So if you only have eight players in a group, um, then it makes more sense to make the difficulty of the fight be personal rather than necessarily a group thing because it's much, much easier to figure out something as a group if you're less people. And then the fights would probably be too easy, right? So it makes sense that that is true. In World of Warcraft, it's probably the opposite. That figuring out something as a group is much harder. And uh, figuring out personal responsibility stuff, maybe it's not as hard because you can compensate for it. Oh, we have some ads? Okay, if we have ads, then I go FK for a second, okay? Real quick. I'm gonna get another coffee. And then we're finally gonna talk about free talents when I'm back, okay? But we're not talking about PI anymore. We're back.
Okay, we're like looking at a free sellums. <laughs> you looked at some of them already. Um. So this is like a Shadow Priest side, this is a healing side, I guess. Check one that is a bit to the side, which makes sense as well, I guess. Okay, let me quickly... No, I do think the rate size being smaller would overall... Well, here's the thing. A lot of people um, would prefer lower rate size. But then um, I think it's also true that um, the fights would be completely different then, right? With the personal responsibility that I talked about rather than a rate um, kind of thing. And I think it was very obvious that this is true when we had 25 men and 10 men. When we had t 25 men raids and 10 men raids, a lot of the fights were much easier in 10 men, right? Because it's impossible to dis I think it's impossible to design a fight that is uh, the same difficulty on 25 than on 10. Like, I don't think that is possible. The fight design itself needs to be changed depending on what, did you, what the rate size is you design the rate around. If you design a boss fight around there being 20 players at 25, then the difficulty has to be focused on different things compared to a boss that is designed around 10 players. And I think that's why um, in WoW, if you make 10 men a raid size, then you have to literally design the boss fight around that as well. So I don't think, when it comes to mythic raiding, I don't think 20 men and 10 men can ex exist at the same time, unless the boss fights literally have different mechanics. You know? I think the bosses would have to work differently then. Because otherwise it will always be easier in one version versus the other. And I guess that is a problem. So yes, they could they could turn Mythic into a 10-man thing. But then they would also have to completely shift... Um, like how they design bosses and change their priorities and what um, and how they create fights and stuff. <laughs> yeah, technically can, they can just turn all of the raids into 10-man raids and just remove 20-man raiding. But that is uh, like that is such a fundamental change to the game that. Um, that would have to be, like, that is a very risky move, I think. Not to say that it wouldn't work. I think it's very possible that it would work. And that people would like it. But that would really change the game. Like, a lot. So, maybe... Maybe that's something that they're just, um, like, scared of even trying. Don't you think they missed an opportunity with Mega Dungeons to bring back 8 to 10 men content? Yes, I, I definitely think that they could create 10 men content um, outside of raiding. Like, I think that is 100% a possibility. Yeah? I think they can, they can totally have 20 men content in raiding and maybe leave that the way it is. And then additionally create 10 men content. I think that is 100% something they could do. Do you think Mythic Raiding would be better off less than 20 man? Well, that's literally what I'm, what I'm just talking about, right? I don't know. I don't think anyone knows if that would, because I'm sure there would some people that maybe um, would like it better with less players. And some people would like it like, some people would like it more and some people would like it less as it, compared to how it is now. 
And it's just a really hard decision to make because, as I said, they would fun fundamentally change the way rating works in WoW. That would be like a complete change to the game. And like, would it be overall positive, overall negative? Like, that is not really... I'm not sure you can tell without actually doing it. Max talked about there will be a bigger issue with class representation. Yes, 100%. Yes, that is also true. So we have a lot of specs in the game. We have 36 specs in the game. And the lower the rate size, the less of those specs you could actually bring. So that would be problem problematic when it comes to um, balancing. But I do also think that the whole argument that I made earlier, where I was saying that if the rates would be more about personal responsibility instead of your whole rate DPS being perfectly like coordinated, then I also think that rate balancing or class balancing would be less of a problem. And that would automatically happen if you make rating 10 man and also create boss fights where your rates DPS maybe is not as important as we have it now. You know what I mean? So, yes, I agree that spec balancing and class balancing would be much, much harder. But at the same time, I also think that it would probably matter less that balancing is actually perfect if, there's, if the rate size is smaller. I feel like it's too late now. 20-man rating is too... In Integral for the game now, if they announce summon rating half of the guilds with the spend. Yes, that's the problem, right? I think I think it would be too like I think it, it's an incredibly difficult decision to make because you don't know if the outcome will be positive or negative and it's really hard to revert. In fact, it's almost impossible to revert a change like that. Like if you say, okay, mythic rating is now 10 man and then it ends up being really negative for the game then it's almost impossible to revert that change from there on out. Because all of the mythic guilds would disband or split up. Everything would completely change, right? And then if all of a sudden you say, oh, you know what? The 10 man thing didn't really work out. Let's go back to 20 man. It's like, uh, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's really hard to revert certain changes if you make them. Um, so it's just a really hard decision to make that maybe they don't want to risk. Why would I get the spend, split your raid teams in two? Yeah, but that's not how it works. You can't just split a raid team in two. Because, you, first of all, you need four tanks. So you need two additional tanks. Right? Like, it's not that simple. You can't just say, oh, we're two raiding guilds now. Also, who raids with whom? You know, because some people only want to play with others. So it's 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 not that simple. You can't just say, "Oh, we're two raid teams now." Yeah, they wouldn't split. They would just okay. They might not disband, but they might like they they're definitely gonna downsize, right? They're not gonna split in two. So not to say that they would disband, but they would definitely just like kick half their players or something, right? And then it's hard to co to go back from there. No, I don't think any other good MMO has such a big raid size compared like you know, than WoW has. So yeah, I don't know. Generally, I do think it could be good for the game, for sure, the 10 man rating thing. I think like if they actually consider to downsize the rate size if that's something they, they actually would want to maybe do, then the best course of action would be to try 10-man raiding uh, with certain content. Like, instead of turning 20-man mythic raiding into 10-man raiding, they could say, okay, uh, we're gonna leave 
rating 20 men, but we're gonna implement other content that is 10 men. And then we see how that performs, you know? Like you can uh, say mega dungeons are 10 men. You can say um, old rates, like time walking rates are 10 men, right? You can bring back, you can bring back old rates like um, let people do Black Temple, Hellfire Citadel, Siege of Orgrimmar. Like, let people do those old, old raids, scale it up to the current level, but make it 10-man raiding, and then see if people, like, like that at all, or if people hate it and never do it, you know? Of course, the incentive would also have to be there, um, because a lot of people don't do things just for fun, so you would also have to, um, put something in there that would be worth for people to do, like some, some... I don't know, like maybe even some rating or something. There could be 10 men rating, just like there is um, plus rating, technically, right? And they could uh, see if people actually would do 10 men content somehow. Thanks for 7 months, Qatar, appreciate that. And then if it really pops off, you know, like maybe 10 men really would pop off and a lot of people do 10 men and people stop doing mythic rating and they all focus on 10 men. Well then, they can probably, uh, they can probably have a conclusion that they're better off with that content, right? And then they could turn mythic rating into ten men. But they would have to like test it somehow before. The problem with that would be class balancing, though. Well, no, it wouldn't. I'm I, I'm not suggesting that they would make... Like, you, underst you understood my suggestion, right? I wasn't saying that Sepulchre of the first one should be 20-man mythic and 10-man mythic. I'm suggesting that the 10-man content is completely different content to the 20-man content. And then balancing doesn't matter as much because they can just change the way they design the 10-man content for it to not be damage-based, but rather personal responsibility based, and then people don't care that much about balancing, right? Automatically. Yeah, fated... Wait, fated... Yeah, fated... No. Wait, I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Season 4, if fated dungeons are mythic. So the way fated works in season 4 is that the raids are fated, not the dungeons. The fated raids can be mythic, yes. They go up to mythic difficulty, yeah. I could definitely see a world where we get 10 men time walking rates. Yeah, and... Some people say that 10 men time walking rates are not real content, but I disagree. Yeah? At the moment, time walking doesn't feel like real content because they don't tune it to be hard, right? Whenever, whenever they, whenever they um, have a time walking rate, then they turn it into an LFR version of it, right? Like whenever we did Black Temple as time walking, it wasn't like hard content. It was just LFR. Like you queued up for it. You came in with like a bunch of strangers and you walked through the content, and it wasn't actually difficult, right? But they could create ten man time walking content and make it difficult. So it's not something you just run through. Right, they could they could turn certain raids into 10 men if they're gonna have to um, re... Uh, like, tune everything anyway. Because if you think about Mage Tower challenges, when they brought them back, they had to retune almost everything, right? They have to retune all the numbers, they have to retune the HP, they have to retune certain mechanics and certain abilities. Because right now classes work completely differently than what they, um, like how they worked in Legion. So, if they bring back time walking rates uh, for current content, then additionally they would also have to just retune all of them anyway. And then they might as well also change certain abilities to make it work for 10 people instead of 20 or 30 or whatever it was before. And then they should actually make it somewhat hard. So it's not uh, just a walk through. Mm -hmm. 
I haven't done Mace Shard in forever. I don't know if it's... I mean, I assume it's the same difficulty as it was before because it's scaling. Um, the one for Druid... Well, which one, actually? The one for Moonkin? The one for Moonkin is decently hard because of the damage check. Other than that, um, not so much. Uh, you just need to have enough damage, really. Which you can cheese by using certain items that require... that. Um, Allow you to use like multiple sockets and stuff like that. Content doesn't have to be hardcore difficult, it has to be interesting and allow for failure and not to be a slog. Um, we're specifically talking about mythic rating right now, so we're talking about difficult content. I'm not saying that every content has to be difficult, but we were specifically talking about raiding and it being turned into 10 man. So yes, we are talking about difficult content. And I do think that um, I do think that difficult content um, is generally, m like, I don't want to say it's generally more enjoyable, but kind of, depending on which content it is. Like, if, if it's a quest or if it's like a lore thing, then obviously uh, it doesn't necessarily make sense for it to be difficult. But the more difficult something is, the more enjoyable it is to actually get it done in the end. And I think that is true for most players. Um, doesn't matter if you're like a hardcore player or a more casual player, um, because if everything is gifted to you, like if something literally gets gifted to you, it feels less enjoyable than if something was like work and effort that you put in and if something was difficult, right? That's why time walking raids are not very enjoyable at the moment for most players, because it's just a walkthrough. And it's not actually the same like experience as it was before, where you actually wiped a few times on a boss, right? Like if you just go in and you want to the boss and you don't en even have to understand a single mechanic that the boss does, then I don't see that as very enjoyable. That's more of a story mode then. And not to say that story modes shouldn't exist, because story modes are good and all, but then at the same time I also think there should be another version that is more difficult, right? Flexible mythic sides doesn't work. Flexible mythic size doesn't work because what I mentioned earlier. A boss fight will just always be harder or easier depending on the, on how many people you have in a raid. That's just how it is. Like, it's just, um, it's just a uh, simple, like, logic. And it's not true that the more people you have, the easier the boss gets. Most of the time it's the opposite. Most of the time it's harder the more people there are. It's almost always harder with less people. That is completely false. It's the opposite. <laughs> hey, Frank, what's up? <laughs> Wasn't 25 men ha easier than 10 men? No, the opposite. 25 men was always harder than 10 men. 99% of the time. But it's, I can also explain to you why, right? Like it's... It's actually it's actually pretty easy to to explain. So the way it works, the the way uh, the reason why um, having more people is harder is be because um, more players need to be coordinated. Okay, there's a there's a bunch of reasons. First of all, you have less space because the room that where you fight the boss in is always the same, but the more players you have, the less space each individual player has to use, right? Which might or might not be relevant in a boss fight. 
but most of it, but it's never uh, like it's almost never a disadvantage to have more space, right? So that's one thing. Number two, the more players you have, the more players actually need to um, play well, which is a pretty big point, right? Like imagine you, to to kill a boss fight, you need to play perfectly. It's much easier to get less amount of people to play perfectly than more amount of people to play perfectly, right? If you need 30 people to play perfectly, that is obviously much harder than if you only need 10 people to play perfectly, right? That makes sense as well. And then one of the most important things as well is that the more players you have, the less often you get a mechanic on you, especially if there's mechanics that um, almost every single boss fight has a mechanic that doesn't target everyone in the, in the group, but only a certain amount of players, right? So let's say there's a mechanic that targets like three people, okay? Then these three people get the mechanic and then they maybe fail to the mechanic, right? They die, but then next time they won't die anymore because now they know how it works. And if you have more people, then it's less likely for you to get the mechanic on you because there's more available other players for the mechanic to be on them. And therefore it's easier for you, or it's harder for you to learn certain mechanics because you get targeted less often. So it requires more tries for everyone in the raid to get the mechanic to then learn from it and then do it properly. Well, if there's less players, the chance of you getting a mechanic happens more often because there's less people in the raid and therefore you're going to be able to learn the mechanic quicker because you get targeted more often in comparison if there's like 25 people or 20 people or whatever, right? So... Almost all of the arguments between difficulty uh, is in favor of like less players. There are certain situations where having less players would be worse, but um, those are much fewer than the other way around. Less players is more responsibility on each player, but why? Why is that true? That's not necessarily true, right? In a pack perspective? Well, even then it's not necessarily true. Each player must carry their own weight. Yeah, but why does that... Like, I'm not... Like, I, I still don't understand how that is true. Like, if you're pugging a 10-man raid versus a 25-man raid, then why do you think that for 10 people, each person has more responsibility versus 25? Like, I don't see the logic behind that. It's easier to get carried in a big group. But, but why? In what sense? Like, what if you have a boss fight where everyone uh, needs to... Like, that's just, that's just the, like, tuning of, of the actual encounter, right? Because it's possible that there's a raid boss where every single player has to play perfectly. Otherwise, you can't kill the boss, right? Not to say that that is common, but uh, it's definitely possible, right? So that's just a raid encounter design thing. Damage checks and HPS checks were lower in 25 than in 10. I, th I also don't think that's true. Okay, li okay. I mean, I can literally tell you, because we had this once, right? In the past, of course, it's hard to compare um, past rate design to, and to current rate design. Like, I'm not saying that this is like a perfectly accurate comparison, 
But we did used to have 25 man raiding and 10 man raiding at the same time. We used to have that. And I personally was raiding 25 man and 10 man. And I can guarantee you that 25 man was harder. Like, I can literally say that from my own uh, experience. There were very few bosses where 10 man was considered like like slightly like more difficult but like 95 percent of the time 25 men was harder and that's and i was literally raiding in uh, the world first guild back then so i i think i i can make this comparison at least back then obviously it doesn't mean that it couldn't be different now right but i think it logically just makes sense We will nine tail, but this is a good. It's a good talk, right? I don't know what's wrong with this uh, with this discussion. I like this discussion. I, I like ten men versus twenty five men like things. Well, well, Ulduar. Did Ulduar so long ago? I do remember I did 10 men there as well. Well, I was rating 25 men. But I do remember also trying 10 men. <laughs> because it wasn't focused slash designed around 10 men, it was just math mathematically scaled down. Yeah, Akis, but that's the problem, right? That's, that's specifically what I'm saying, right? Um, my point is... Like, I'm not saying that 10 men uh, is by default always easier. I'm saying that if 10 men... Like, it's basically about boss design, right? Like, if you want to make 10 men content difficult, then you need to focus on different mechanics compared to making a 25 man rate difficult, for example. So that's why I'm saying that um, mythic rating cannot be flexible rate sizes. Because the difficulty would then not... Like, you cannot make a, a boss the same difficulty as 10 man versus 20, 20 man. Unless the boss actually has different mechanics, depending on the raid size, right? And that's why um, flexible raid size doesn't really work for Mythic. But it's totally possible to make a 10 man raid difficult, of course. They just need to design the raid boss around 10 people. Like, they need to specifically implement mechanics that are hard for 10 people to solve. And they need to specifically create a boss around 20 people to solve. And then, obviously, you can have similar difficulty. But I don't think you can take the same boss fight with the same mechanics and then make it the same difficulty for both 10 and 25. Because they tried that before and it literally didn't work. But yeah, that's my opinion. If you disagree, then I guess you just disagree. Yeah? Then there's no point in uh, continuing the argument because I already made my point. So anyway, um, we looked at some of these talents. So far, the tree seems pretty nice, honestly. Uh, nothing like stands out f to be weird. Um, a lot of the utility that is like very niche seems to be to the sides, which I really like. Like, you see how there's a lot of these talents that are just, like, branching off the main path. And it doesn't really lead into anything else. And I always like when they do that um, with, like, somewhat niche utility. For example, um, Shackle Undead, right? Shackle Undead is something that is incredibly niche. And there's certainly fights or situations where you don't want this. So you're not kind of, like forced into taking this for a different talent you just kind of take it if you need it otherwise you just keep on going right and they do that with a lot of stuff which i i think is good and nice even leap of faith faith as well right leap of faith i don't think that's something that you need all the time or is useful all the time so having it on the side here is nice then you have this you may also control your own character while mind control wait what uh
Wait, okay, so how, did they change mind control or is this how it worked before? Control a mind up to one level above yours for 30 seconds while still controlling your own mind. Does not work versus demonic, mechanical, or undead beings or players. So you cannot mind control players? They definitely changed that, right? Because you clearly could mind control players before. Oh, undead beings or oh, undead players is what it means. Ah, I see. Um, so basically, just not undead players. Ah, okay, 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 okay. I got it. I thought you wouldn't be able to um, mind control un uh, players at all. Alright, then this. You may also control your own character while mind control is active, but mind control has a two minute cooldown and is and it may not be used against players. Oh there it is now. Okay. So this is basically huh, that's interesting. So this is basically a control undead just for like hu humanoids. So if you take this talent you can basically control something as a pet and continue your normal thing. Huh. I think that can be very useful for stuff like M+. That can be very good, I think. Hmm. And then what is this? Oh, okay. Okay, interesting. Then, what do we have here? Twins of the Sun? Oh, Pine Fusion also grants you 1% of the... Uh-huh. Then, translucent the image. For the first 5 seconds of Fade, you take 5% reduced damage. The 10% damage reduction. Then, Shadow Word Death deals 10% less damage to caster. And then we have Mind Games here. Then, Charitable Soul. Casting Power Shield on an ally also shields you. Mm -hmm. uh, Desperate Prayer heals you for an additional... Of your maximum health and then power word shield instantly heals the target for uh huh and reflects centers of damage absorbed okay then blessing renewal renewal heals for an additional five percent and its mana cost reduced well above 75 health the cast time of your flash heal uh huh and holy word life order of holy powers that heals the target for 1.8k if the target is not below 20 percent health the caster takes damage equal to the amount healed did we already have this before? A word of holy power that heals the target for... Uh -huh. If the target is not below 20%, caster takes damage equal to the amount healed. Healing is increased by 150% to targets below... Th okay. So this is more like an execute heal. I guess you can use it even as not execute, but then it's a lot weaker and you damage yourself, so... Interesting. Okay. There's Mana Regen, Holy Nova, Improved Holy Nova, Holy Power Shields active on you, Holy Nova deals. Okay, um, damage, that's good. Holy Power Shield is active on you, Smite deals 10% additional damage. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't know, that tree seems uh, good enough. I, I, I didn't see anything like really negative. I didn't see anything that would be like um, problematic in a sense. At least nothing that comes to my mind immediately. Yeah? There's definitely um, like it looks like there's not too much power in this tree. Um, it definitely seems like there's a lot of healing talents you need. It almost uh, well, it's maybe like the right and the left side, right? Like it looks like as a healer. You definitely want to go all the way down here, right? Well, as a Shadow Priest, you definitely want to go all the way down here. And then the middle is kind of mostly utility, I think. Except maybe Power Infusion and Twins of the Sun Priestess. So... Yeah, I don't know. It seems really nice. 
I like that, I think. Yeah, because uh, I think if you're like a Shadow Priest, um, you can't, you go all the way down here, and I don't think it requires that many points overall, right? Let's see. Uh... What if we take out some of this? Then we go here. Then we go with Shadow Fiend. Go with this. This is not even... Well, I guess this is kind of nice to have. Then I guess it would go... Well, I don't think you need mind control, but... Well, I guess the problem is that you need to go down here. And then, um... None of this is, like, super important, I think, for Shadow Priest. At least I don't, I don't think so. Right? Like, none of this stuff is super useful. So I guess you would just go with this. I mean, maybe this. And then you go here, here, here. And now, I guess you only have two points left. <laughs> well, actually, I'm only level 60. I would have more points if I was level 70, right? So I would have, um... I would have five more points, I think. So if if I have five more points, then I can I can go t down to mind games technically, yeah? or I can go to um, I can go this, which doesn't seem very useful though, for a shadow priest. Yeah, I, I mean I guess you would go to some for maybe some healing spells you could take like up here. Right? Yeah, it definitely seems like you're not you're not gonna be able to get a lot of the bottom talents because they're very like like they require a lot of points to get there, right? But most of them are not that useful for Shadow Priest anyway, so you would probably more try to get some utility otherwise. You know, like maybe you get grip or you get Shackle Undead. Uh, you get the angelic feathers, you get like a healing spell, you get purified disease, you know, like that kind of stuff, I guess. Yeah, I don't know, it seems good enough. It doesn't seem like you're super, super, um, like, free on what to choose, I guess. Like, you definitely have to commit a lot of points into your damage here. It seems like. Like, to be able to go all the way this, down this path, definitely seems like a lot of damage committed. Especially because, I guess the problem with the... This is a Shadow Priest specific problem. This this problem does not exist for Holy or Disc. But I think if you play Shadow Priest, you almost always need to take Twins of the Sun Priestess. Because you're not gonna... Like, it would be a huge damage loss to give Power Infusion away. Right? So I guess the problem is that you need to go down here. And you need to go down here. And that kind of creates a situation where you're kind of... Yeah, it's like you just don't have many points left. Right? Yeah, you have like seven points left to do other utility. Yeah? So yeah, it definitely seems... It definitely seems like um, Shadow Priest maybe doesn't have too many options here. For Holy Priest and Disc, I guess it's a bit different because Holy Priest and Disc don't need to take this talent necessarily. Like, I think Twins of the Sun Priest is not something that you need as a Disc Priest or Holy Priest. Of course, it's nice to have, but I don't think it, like, makes it or. Like, it doesn't make or break it if you don't have it yourself. So that's why um, I think this is a much bigger problem for Shadow Priest. 
maybe it would make more sense for for shadow priest uh to have like a connection here from twins of the sun priestess to like to their side or to have like i don't know like it's hard to tell because there's so many points in here that they kind of want <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. This is a bit. This is a bit. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of this tree for Shadow Priest, at least. For maybe for Holy and Disc, it's not that bad, but for Shadow Priest, it seems a bit one-dimensional, dimensional, like in a sense. Like there's just not much freedom to it. It seems like. Hmm. I don't know what they could do. I mean, maybe they could move... Maybe they could just divide some talents. Um, uh, instead of dividing talents, like, unite some talents for Shadow Priest, possibly. That would maybe solve some of the issues. Because, like, the all of these Shadow Fiend talents, like... It's a lot of points, you know? Like, maybe they could, like, combine some of them or something. Or require less points in it as well. Like, uh... This could be one point. This could be one point. Rabbit Shadows could be one point. Twist of Fate could be one point. You know? Like, they could definitely remove... Reduce the amount of points you need. So you have more freedom to use points somewhere else, possibly. When you can make a build without an insanity spender? <laughs> well, Moonkin can actually do that as well. Moonkin can uh, just play without Star Surge and Starfall, I think. Right? I think so. Yeah. Moonkin could literally just play without Star Surge and Starfall if they wanted to. Which is also kind of dumb, but... Okay, what about the Shadow Priest talents themselves? Is there something I should be looking at specifically? Like something new, something interesting, something really bad? Uh, anything to talk about? The idols at the bottom. Okay, let's see. Idol of Ishari. Shadow Fiend causes you to gain a benefit based on your target's current emotional state. <laughs> Excuse me? What does that mean? Well, she'll uh... They made a blue post? Can you link it? No, it's not. So this, the left side of the talent tree is the class tree. So that means no matter if you place, um, no matter if you play disc or holy or shadow, you always have the same tree. But the spec tree here on the, the right is only for the specific spec. So sh shadow has this talent tree here, but disc will have a completely different one, you know? Okay, let's see this. I also wish Shari will receive a new tooltip as we get close to Dragonflight. In the meantime, though, here's a breakdown of what it currently does. If your target is above 80% health, pride. You and your Shadow Fiend deal increased damage while Shadow Fiend is active. Enraged Anger. Purchase the Enrage effect. Oh, they get an Enrage spell, okay? Increase your haste while Shadow Fiend is active. Stunt Despair. You generate insanity while Shadow Fiend is active. Feared Fear. You and your Shadow Fiend deal increased damage and do not break fear effects while Shadow Fiend is active. Oh, that's super broken for PvP, I guess. <laughs> no conditions met. Violence? Duration of Shadow Fiend is increased. As with everything in the talent tree, these effects are subject to change. Okay, that's interesting. Mm. 
I mean, I guess that's interesting, but also, like, that's definitely more of a PvP thing, probably. Because uh, in PvP, you can hold your Shadow Fiend to use it to proc a certain idol, right? But in PvE, I guess in the plus you can force a certain proc. Right? In PvP, in PvP, in, and plus you could say, oh, I'm gonna fear this mob, and then I'm gonna use Shadow Fiend, or I'm gonna stun this mob, and then use Shadow Fiend, or something. Um, I do think there's probably always gonna be, like, a clear, better version, though. I'm not sure. And I guess that might just be the problem with this ability. Because all of these things are damage things, right? Like, all of them give you damage, just in different versions. And I guess the problem with that will be that you're just gonna do the theory crafting and then one of the versions is always gonna be the best, probably. Unless they balance it really well. And then you're just always gonna proc it while stunned. Or you always proc it while feared. Or you always proc it while there's nothing. And then it becomes a bit less interesting, I guess. But, uh, well... I guess there's some additional conditions for when a target is feared for PvP, and one additional condition for enrage to be removed in PvE and M+. But other than that, it's pure damage. Okay. Okay, I have a question. Idol of Yuxaran, after conjuring 50 shadowy apparitions, you summon a thing from beyond that serves you for 20 seconds. The thing from beyond blasts enemies for damage, shadow damage, okay? Mindflay and Mindseer have a chance to spawn a Void Tendril or Void Lasher that channels at your target for 50 seconds. Okay. So, is there a... Is there a uh, fix to Shadow Priest AoE? With this uh, talent tree? No? <laughs> okay, so I guess Shadow Priest is the same problem um, that Moonkin has. Ugh. I hope you have enough people advocating for your changes then as well. Man, I really hope they fix that for you because it does really, really suck. If you don't have AoE, or don't have a proper way of AoEing. Let me read that feedback. That sounds like an interesting thing to read. Show word feedback steering nightmare. Over the course of devel development on Dragonflight, we want to spend some time talking about this topic, plaguing Shadow Priest design in a new expansion. This post, I want to discuss Shadow Priest AoE design, specifically steering nightmare. Seeing Nightmare is a simple talent in its design, and truly unlocks Shadow Priest into having an AoE rotation that does not rely on dots or shadow appearance, uh, apparitions while doing massive damage. This is a continuous point, as many people in the community enjoyed previous iterations of Shadow Priest that did not have Searing Nightmare, simply because the spell does not fit with our toolkit in any way. Unfortunately for Shadow Priest, this spell is more or less our only real way of doing effective damage in most Mythic Plus, or AoE situations. Shadowy, uh, Shadow's AoE lifts or dies based on the strength of this talent, and for most players the playstyle is not enjoyable. We would like to see some iteration of this spell or a complete rework of Shadow's, uh, Shadow's AoE going into Dragonflight. Oh my god, that reminds me so much of a similar issue for another spec, but I can't think of it right now. It's like, oh, I have a hard time coming up with the spec right now. I do know that there's one spec that does have a similar problem though. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, Sir Nightmare <laughs> dominates the Shadow Freeze AoE playstyle without compl complementing our base kit. It does this while also requiring significant ramp up for each cast, an investment that causes conflict with other parts of the game, such as handling mechanics and interrupting enemy casts. Uh, the issue. Let's focus on the primary point. Why is the Sir Nightmare playstyle not fun as Shadow Priest? For anyone that has not played Shadow Priest in AoE scenario, there is an Im image of uh, a rotating Rotation snapshot of a pull in a, a Hulse 22 key. Yeah. Mind Bender, Void Eruption, I only know the Void Eruption, Shadow Crash, Mind Seer, Seer Nightmare, Seer Nightmare, Mind Seer, Seer Nightmare, Seer Nightmare, Mind Seer, Seer Nightmare, Seer Nightmare. Seer Nightmare is a uh, channel, right? You channel it, no? Hmm. 
Mind series. Oh, it's mind series what you channel. Okay. This place that shows is based on an alien for Shadow Priest following the below cycle. Mind series during nightmare during nightmare. This is a relatively simple cycle that has some variations to maintaining living shadow uptime, current in Shadowlands. With this extremely disengaging repetitive gameplay, notice that during the this first window, if you do not cast Void Bolt, refresh dots, or optimize for Shadow Flame Prism due to how rigid the cycle is with the Mind Seer cast while casting requirements. Yeah, I think Mind Seer. Um... <laughs> so, Moonkin has a problem with AoE as well. Um, that I've talked about numerous times, so I'm not going to talk about it again. Um, but I uploaded a video about the Moonkin issue, and there were some people in the comments below that suggested to bring back Hurricane. And if you guys remember Hurricane, it used to be a druid spell that created like a thundercloud uh, with lightning and stuff. And it was a channeled AoE like spell. And it would be incredibly horrible if they would bring that back that ability. Because it's literally the same as Mind Seer. It's a channeled spell and only does damage while you're channeling it. So that literally means you're sitting there channeling a spell and you do nothing else. Which is a complete horrendous playstyle. It's just so bad. So, no, we do not want to have Hurricane back. <laughs> we definitely do not want that spell back. <laughs> they need to rethink how casters AoE. I think I, I agree. I think a lot of casters have an issue where AoEing um, just either doesn't really work properly or they don't have proper spells to use or it doesn't interact with their rotation otherwise or it's just really bad like i think there's a lot of range classes that have issues with aoem i mean even destruction warlock in my opinion has issues with aoe because of its um like obviously destruction warlock is really op right now in retail but um, I think there's this really boring thing about Destro where you press your Infernals and then the Infernals do damage for you and generate shards for you without you doing anything about it. It's just like, oh, I have a big pet that looks really cool, but it just does things without me having any impact on it whatsoever in a sense, you know? And I think that is a bit weird. You know? I don't know. I think that feels awkward. Like, very, very unintuitive. Very boring. Barely any interaction whatsoever. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very... It's very poorly designed, in my opinion, on how it, how it works. Um, I, I think... That for for Destro Warlock, it probably would be a bit more enjoyable if more damage would come from their Reign of Fire rather than their Infernals. And if they would generate more shards with things that they actually do. You know what I mean? Because then um, it's much more impactful to press Reign of Fire in a sense. Because then you know, okay, I press this button and it does a lot of damage. And the generation of, of uh, shards is my doing. And not just like, oh, I press the Infernal and then my Infernal generates shards for me, you know? I think that would be probably more enjoyable. Kind of how Munkin worked in uh, Legion. Where your dots were generating your Astral Power. And then you would spend your Astral Power on Starfall. And Starfall actually dealt damage, you know? Because then it just feels like you're more in control of your rotation and it's more impactful. Like certain buttons that you press seem more impactful than things just happening. Immolate and incinerate feel so macro currently. Yes. Immolate and incinerate feel horrible on AoE situations. 
So I do wish, um, I do wish that Incinerate uh, would get some interaction with AOE to generate more shards or something. You know what I mean? Maybe it shouldn't do more damage, but generate more shards so you can actually generate your own shards. Because I personally always feel like if you're a spender, if you're a generator spender class, like Destro Warlock is, for example, like Moonkin is, for example, uh, like Elemental Shaman is, like there's a lot of, a lot of specs that have spells that generate power, and then you have other spells that spend the power, right? And I think on AoE, most of those classes f don't function properly, at least not in a enjoyable way. Because in single target, most of those classes function fine, right? You press your, your generators and then you use your spenders, right? But most of these classes don't really interact well on AoE, where you don't necessarily like press like generators, you just like somehow generate your power through passive things in a sense. I, I, I think it should, you should feel how you're like using abilities that give you more power because there's more targets, you know? Because then it feels a lot better and it feels more intuitive and it feels more interactive. So with, with Warlock, for example, with Destro Warlock, I think they could make Incinerate create more shards if there's more targets. And they could also give it a, a cap because you don't want it to scale infinitely, right? So they could say, oh, if you cast Incinerate, um, it like splashes onto other targets for very little damage, because it shouldn't do a lot of damage, it should just generate, right? So you could splash another targets, and depending on how many it splashed, it gives you more shards, right? There you go. And now you have like a, a, a thing that gives you shards. And it could also make, it doesn't necessarily have to be incinerate either, it could be immolate as well, right? They can make cataclysm, um, well, yeah, cataclysm will be really good then, because you can make immolate, um, also create more shards as well. Um, so whenever you cataclysm, you have all of your emulates on the targets and they created a lot of shards and then you start, um, you start rain of firing and then you refresh your emulates and you keep rain of firing, right? I think that, um, that would make a lot of sense if that would be more impactful. Cause I do think that there's, uh, there are things like that. They're just not impactful enough. Cause for example, um, Moonkin, for example, has a talent that is called Shooting Stars. And Shooting Stars just um, makes your dots generate astral power. But, for whatever reason, Shooting Stars already starts having a diminishing return on two targets. Which just makes absolutely no sense, right? Because <laughs> generally, you would think that, oh, my dots generate astral power. So if I have more dots up... I get more astral power, right? And in reality, that's not true. In reality, you gain the same astral power, if not less astral power, the more dots you have up, which is completely counterintuitive, right? Like, I don't know. I understand there has to be like a, a cap at some point. I understand you cannot just generate infinite amounts of power if you pull 20 mobs, like I get that. I understand there has to be some sort of like cap where it doesn't necessarily scale any further, but that cap definitely shouldn't be two, right? Because <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like if you're if you're spending time applying dots and spending time casting generators, then you should definitely feel that you're generating more power when there's more targets, right? And I think there's a lot of classes that have that issue. Um, not just Moonkins. Like, I think Destro has this issue. Well, Destro doesn't have this issue right now on live servers, but just because of the way their set works, right? Before they had their set, they had the same issue. Now they don't have any more. Um, then the same issue also exists for, um, I think, Shadow Priest. It also exists for um, Affliction Warlock. And I think it somewhat existed as well for Elemental Shaman. Now in Dragonflight, their Elemental Shaman's, like, talents look very good and looks like it, they resolved that issue, though. 
But yeah, it doesn't necessarily seem like they resolved it for any dot class so far. It seems like they generally have issues with dot classes. Uh, and they don't know what to do with them. Right? Because they nerfed dots very, very heavily in Shadowlands. And now most of the dot classes just seem like they're lost in how they work. Because their main thing just kind of got taken away or kind of got nerf very heavily and now the interaction between dots and your main ability seems a bit broken let's read the conclusion here the reason why we care so much about this is because we do not want our aoe rotation to be filled with spammable abilities without any sense of cooldown management uh while searing nightmare does do a large amount of damage with this playstyle the point is that it is simply not fun to play and does not complement our kit well enough to be satisfying. Having an AoE playstyle that centers around our base kit while giving us some form of burst AoE is slowly needed. But we'd like more engaging and less punishing rotation than we have today. Yeah, so definitely seems like they, they have some issues that need to be solved soon. Fiction Warlock is weird with generation. Having no way to reliably generate shards without killing him up is so weird. Yes, I agree. Yeah. I also think that Affliction Warlock should... Because uh, Affliction Warlock is the dot class, right? There is no other class that has more dots than Affliction Warlock. But it definitely feels like the dots themselves are so... Like, it, it's... It definitely feels like the interaction with your dots and the rest of your rotation seems super off, right? It's like... Mm, it's like, <laughs> yes, your rupture does more damage if you have more dots on, on certain targets, but I do think the scaling of it is really off. Because I don't mind the rupture playstyle, honestly. I, I thought rupture was a really cool idea. But... um. I think they just have to balance Rupture properly. Um, or maybe give you talents so your Rupture um, doesn't feel so bad. Especially in AoE situations. Because I like Rupture on single target. And I also like Rupture on like lower targets. But as soon as there were like a lot of targets. Then Rupture felt very like lackluster. And I think that's something they could just fix. I definitely think there would be a way for them to fix Rupture on AoE. Um, and not make it too OP on like lower targets because it's pretty good on lower targets already. So um, somehow increasing its scaling and not impact the low targets would make sense. They could technically give you a talent that makes your rupture do more damage on targets that have one dot and one dot only. You know what I mean? That would kind of fix um, the rupture kind of playstyle. Because right now, um, if there's one target, obviously you put as many dots as you can and then you rupture, right? But I do think if... Uh, if there would be some sort of version where you could spread one dot on like a lot of targets and then you have like a talent that is like a kiss curse where it says if you have only one single dot on like a target then your rupture does like x amount of like extra damage so you don't feel the need to like put a million dots on like a million targets <laughs> Jerf. i'm trying of course the the scaling on that would have to be somewhat like i mean i think that would create interesting scenarios because then you would have like a, a break point on how many targets you would still apply dots on right and what do you think about that jerf because <laughs> of course the numbers would have to be correct but i think it would be interesting right because then if you only have three targets for example then maybe it would be worth it to put a lot of dots on two targets, but only have one dot on the third, or something. 
And if you have five targets, you only put dots on one target and have one dot on four. And if you have two targets, you put as many dots as you can on two. And you rapture. Like, it would just create a situation where you do different things depending on how many mobs you pull. Which is already interesting in itself. And it wouldn't create a situation where you have, like, a long ramp up time on AoE. Because that was always a little bit annoying with Affliction, right? I don't know. I think Affliction definitely had an issue where if you play the seat, the so so the seats play style, it's just super annoying because <laughs> that that's just like dumb, right? If you just spam seed of corruption, like that's just a dumb play style, honestly, right? At least I think so. It's like uh, you have all of these dots and you have all of these abilities, and then all you do is spam seed. Like uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Yeah, you could, you could spread corruption with one seed, and then you just rupture, and you put some dots on your main target, and you rupture from there. That would make you ignore multi-dotting, which would feel really weird. Um, I don't think it would feel weird, because it would only make you ignore multi-dotting on, on many targets, right? And multi-dotting on many targets is already awkward, and kind of not enjoyable gameplay, I don't think. And you would still multi-dot on like two targets, right? Or three even, if you can. Just because, um... Obviously the more dots you have on a target, the more damage rupture does. So there would be a break point. You would basically have a break point where it says... Okay, with this talent, you need to have either one dot on the target, or you need to have like three or four. There's no point to have two dots or three dots, I guess. Like, that would make sense, right? <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I'm talking about this, Jerf. Because I do... I, I think I do like the dot rupture scaling for one target. But for anything else, it feels off. So that's why I'm suggesting this thing with the one dot... But anyway, we're talking about Priest. So yeah, Priest seems broken, let's fix that. I don't know about the talent tree, obviously. Like, obviously, it seemed like their AoE still seems to be broken, so they need to fix that. And other than that, I already talked about this, but I think their class tree is definitely too uh, rigid. Like, it's too... Like, you don't have a lot of freedom, basically. You have to go down a certain path, right? You need... You need PI, you need Twins of the Sun Priestess, you need to go all the way down here, you need to go down here. And then you have, like, no points left to do anything else. And I think that sucks for a class tree. That definitely sucks. So I think, I think they should reduce some of the number of points you need here. Like, maybe only have one point in Mind Restraint, or one point in Twist of Fate instead of two. One point in Throws of Pain, one point in Rabbit Shadows, you know, like... I think... I think they just need more points in the class tree to be able to take some of these like utility talents if they want to. Because that's the point of a class tree is to get utility. But if you have to sacrifice your damage to get utility, then that really, really sucks. And I think there's just way too many like mandatory points that you have to take as a Shadow Priest, it looks like. Okay, then, we have the Holy Tree. Is there anything interesting with the Holy Tree? Like any new talents or any new things that are cool? Better rise stick for DPS, Imperial Blaze. Refreshes Holy Fire. Your next three costs of Holy Fire cost no mana, incur no cooldown, and cast instantly. Whenever Holy Fire is reapplied, its duration is now extended instead. Okay.
that's cute, I guess. Nothing like super special, but well, nothing super special like playstyle wise, I would say. But still, like interesting. Oh, Lightwell. Yeah, I saw the animation of Lightwell. On three cooldown. Creates a holy Lightwell. Every one second, the Lightwell will attempt to heal party and raid members within 10, y 10 yards only. They're lower than 50 percent health over 3 and uh, over 6 seconds. Lightwell last for 10 yards a bit, uh, a bit low range. Also, it's a three minute cooldown and has a cast time. I mean, I think at the end, this spell is just going to be a number thing, right? Like, it either is. Like, this is purely a number thing. Because there's no. Um, there's no nuance to the spell. Like, you just put it down and it heals, right? It, there's nothing special to it. So this will be a pure kind of number thing. Is it worth it to put one point into this? To cast this once every three minutes? Or is it not? Like, There's nothing special. It doesn't interact with any of the other spells. It doesn't do anything interesting. It's just like you put it down, that's it, right? <laughs> Emily. It's good if you know you're gonna be moving after a big hit. Wait, why does it have to do with moving? You don't want to cast this when moving, right? Because it only has a 10 yard range. Old Lightwell was more interesting because the user had to click on it. That was the absolute worst design, and if they ever bring it back, I'm gonna be so upset. If I ever have to click on a Lightwell again. Fuck that. That was the worst thing possible. Get into action when you can't. I mean, I don't generally dislike the fact that they bring Lightwell back. I just, I just thought there might be like some, cause it makes sense that you don't have to click on the Lightwell anymore because that's just bad design, right? Uh, it would make no sense to re-implement that. But I do think um, they could maybe, like, I just feel like there's a lack of interaction is what I think. Like maybe you could do something else like, all it does is, like, oh, it heals people. Which, yeah, I know that's how Lightwell used to work anyway. Like, I get that, right? But it just feels a bit, like, I don't know. Like, it's just there, you know? I don't know. What do you think about this? Doesn't it feel just, like, a bit lost? Like, even if it's a good spell, it just seems like, oh, yeah, you press it, and then it heals, and... Which I guess a lot of healing spells are that way. But most healing spells are slightly more... Because this is something you don't really control. Like, especially because it's such a big cooldown, right? I don't know, it, it feels a bit off to me. I'm not a fan of this, I don't think. Then we have Divine Words here. Divine Hymn and Symbol of Hope. Hmm. So I already see like one issue with the priest tree here. It's a bit interesting that this is so divided, no? Like, like if you want to go down the left side, it's almost impossible to take any of these talents here. 
because it already splits really really far up like it splits here already the third after the third point here it already splits it splits to the right or to the left a lot of other trees split way further down and this tree seems to be splitting really really far up which is uh interesting i guess Like, even if you want a Divine Hymn and Symbol of Hope, you already have to commit a lot of points, I guess, to get there. Like, it's, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit far split, it looks like. Huh. Yeah, this is a bit weird. He's like, I have five points left. Okay, now I have Divine Hymn and I have Symbol of Hope. And I... Like, I can barely go down here, right? Hmm. Also, how the fuck do you- are you supposed to- Oh. Oh, yeah, I got it now. Okay. Okay, you can just go here. Oh, okay, I understand. Okay, I'm just stupid. So you can go down here if you want. You just can't go with this talent. Technically, yeah. Without going down here. So you can go here and then just go through the middle. Huh, I don't know, it's it's still a bit weird, no? Hmm. Like the fact that there's just no connections here in between. Well, at least it lets you go down the middle. So I guess when you go right, you can go right middle. And if you go left, you can go left middle. You can't really go left and right, which I guess is fine. If they don't want you to have this and this at the same time. This seems to be more of a, like a raiding site. Raiding, he raid healing. And this seems more of like an implus site, I guess. But it's a bit weird that Symbol of Hope is here. Because this is like, this is like damage. Damage, damage, yeah. Okay, so this definitely seems like implus versus like raids. But then, I, Symbol of Hope is probably like in a weird spot for that, right? Because Symbol of Hope you want for raiding too. So you kind of want both Divine Him and Symbol of Hope for raiding. And then you have a hard time doing anything else from here on out. I guess. I don't know, it's, it's a bit weird. What do Holy Priests think of this? Yeah, I know you will have more points, but not a lot. I think it's five more points. Four or five. Yeah, I, I guess um, if you don't take Symbol of Hope, you can do more things here. But it definitely feels bad to not take Symbol of Hope, right? For raiding. It's a bit awkward. And then I guess the other thing is that he also, like, look. Like, the other problem is that I have to, to spend one more point. To even go down. So at that point you might you have to take symbol of hope anyway, right? I guess. And then you only have like nine points left down here, which would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it's actually impossible. So they actually made it impossible to get Lightwell and Imperial Blaze. Right? Oh you have ten points. Okay, then it is possible. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, if you have ten points, then you can both get Imperial Blaze and Lightwell. If you would want to. Is it five more? Uh, well, such a bad spell. But it's just a number thing. Why do you think it's that bad? Like, it's literally just a number thing, right? There's no way of knowing if this is good or bad. It just totally depends on how they balance it. Like, either you press it and it's really good, or you press it and it's really bad. 
Like there, there's, there's nothing else to it, honestly. No. Oh, you mean that it's just bad as in? Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said too. It's definitely a boring spell. Yes, I agree. Yeah, yeah I said the same thing. It might be a really good ability, as in like a strong ability, but that doesn't make it any more interesting. <laughs> Yeah, this definitely seems a very lackluster, this spell. And you have Halo and Divine Star. Alright, uh, it's already four. So let's take a look at Hunter still. And then we're gonna do some S4 dungeons, okay? Um, because I promised to do that as well. So we looked at all classes now, other than Hunter. I think, I think we have everything else. No, oh, I did the wrong thing again. Yeah, if Ladwell would work like Echo and Mirror spells, that would be much more interesting, yeah. But... Yeah, something like that, I guess. Yeah, that would be really cool. I, th I think I agree with you that Holy Priest is just generally a really boring class. <laughs> and honest, I wonder if that is something that Blizzard like actively wants to keep. No, I I'm not saying... Like, I don't think it's necessarily, like... Like, I totally understand if you like playing it. When I say boring, I mean that a lot of the spells... ...just exist. Right? Like, I think... There's a lot of classes that have all of these, like, really cool interactions... ...and you do this, and then this happens, and then you have to think about stuff, and blah blah blah. And then Holy Priest, I feel like... There's a lot of, like, they just have spells, and they press a spell. And then there's nothing else, like, it just has no interactions. I feel like it's a very bland, straightforward class. Which, I'm not saying that that's generally a bad design, and I think they might actually do that on purpose, because some people like that. Some people don't want their class to be incredibly complex, and have everything interact with each other, right? Like, some people just like that. So maybe that's why they continue to do that in Dragonflight as well. Maybe they're just like, oh, priestess spells that he pressed and they don't do anything special, so we're just going to continue making those spells. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah, you have the Holy Word minigame, but that's the only thing you have. Like, the Holy Word minigame is basically the same thing as Soul of the Forest for Rest of Druids. And that's just, like, one part of all of their... Like, it's not, like, a big thing, right? Like, Soul of the Forest for Arrested Druid is, like, one minigame that exists with, like, all of their other spells. It's just, like, a s one talent, right? And for, for Holy Priest, it's, like, apparently, like, the biggest thing they have. The biggest interaction. Thank you so much! Appreciate that! Oh my god, we now have a 5,000 crit, 5,000 mastery mining tool! Perfect! <laughs> I think Rastadrid is more boring than Holy Priest. I mean... You think so? Uh, again, I'm. S Let me be clear. When I say boring, I mean like 
very few interactions and complexities about the spec. And you think that Resident has less complexities and less uh, interesting things about it than Holy Priest? I don't think that's true, but <laughs> thank you so much for the 41 months, Plant Agent. I appreciate that. Hello. How are you doing? Okay, anyway, we're gonna take a look at Hunter. Hunter was also one of the first uh, talents to be released, right? They released Druid and DK first, and then Hunter right after, right? So it definitely, it definitely seems like some of the early classes that they released are a bit less, uh, like, good. <laughs> The later the class talent tree has been released, the better they seemed, so far at least. So, we'll see. Hunter was definitely one of the earlier ones. But yeah, give me a second. We're first going to look at the class tree, and then we're going to look a little bit at the spec tree. And then afterwards, we're going to look at the season 4 dungeons a bit more. Because we get season 4 soon, so we have to be prepared a little bit at least, right? Thank you so much for host Slaffer. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, uh, one sec, bear back.
Okay. <laughs> Theodore. Okay, so if you have VM, you get kill command as a default, which makes sense. Then you have concussive shot, kill shot. Yeah, and movement speed. Post haste. Every time I have no spend, reduce the remaining cooldown of acceleration by one sec. Okay. It's a good it's good that this is connected, right? So you don't have to technically go here, right? And then increase your pet's total health. Sure. Counter shot. Hmm, okay. Like, you don't need to take a concussive shot, I guess. If you don't want. Then, Tranquil Shot, Misdirect, Tartra. It definitely seems like there's a lot of utility already, which is good. Like, all, all of this is utility, other than, like, Kill Command and Kill Shot. Which you're gonna get by default anyway, depending on what spec you play. And then there's just a bunch of utility. Utility, utility. Utility, utility. Utility. Again. Okay, camouflage. Movement, speed, targets rooted by banning shots or so. Okay. Proof traps. I like this so far. It seems very, um... Like, you're very free to choose whatever you want here. For most of it. Basic movement speed. Then... Okay, down here there seems to be damage talents now. We have Barrage, Serpent Sting, Master Marksman, Explosive Shot. Okay, interesting. So you have a lot of utility at the top, and then the bottom is the like damage stuff. That damage increased. Stampede. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, the, the class tree looks good, no? Zero defensives. Oh. Yeah, there's a lot of self-healing, I guess. Well, I wouldn't say zero defensives, right? Let me see. Uh... Oh, there's agility. That's slightly awkward. Because every hunter wants agility. <laughs> But then he needs to go improve men pet. Huh, that seems a bit weird. The placement of this. No? The agility note is going away. Okay, good. Yeah, that seems that seems really weird. Let's see. What do you have body folds? They still have turtle body fault. That's interesting that they have turtle body fault. I wonder why they didn't put that in talent tree. Huh. That's interesting, no? Because I don't think turtle is something that you always want. That's something that um, they could easily make a talent, right? I think. Then Excel body fault makes sense. Pain death makes sense. Disengage. Freezing trap. Flare. Hunter's mark. Yeah, Hunter doesn't have DR, it looks like. 
a bunch of self healing stuff, I guess, and like increase of like Xil, Xil buffs. But it doesn't look like there's any sort of defensive stuff, <laughs> which uh, does suck a little because honestly, hunters generally have problems with survivability, so the fact that they didn't really gain anything is a bit weird. Especially because I feel like a lot of other classes have gotten more defensives with the Dragonflight talents. Right? Like, Shaman got a lot more defensives now. Even Druid seems to have more defensives now. Well, not necessarily more, but you can technically skill into more defensives if you want to. More than you had before. Yeah, Shaman seems absolutely immortal with the talents they have. Like, Shaman has so many defensives now. And... I, I guess Priest also didn't have that many. Like, when I looked, the Priest talents didn't really have that many defensives either, it seemed. So both... Priests and Hunters seem a bit weak on the survivability side, compared to most other classes we've seen. And maybe also... Mm, Evoker... Evoker also didn't seem that incredibly tanky. I mean, they definitely have some defensiveness, defensive stuff, but didn't seem like insane. So yeah, other than that, I think their tree is fine. Like, the hunter tree seems fine. Unless there's something that hunters complain about here. Seems good. But, uh, yeah, there's definitely some other issues with, like, lack of survivability, it seems. A little, at least. Hi. Hiya. Yeah, heal evoke is the only one with a good defensive, um... The range GPS doesn't seem that tanky. Yeah, we will get higher item level legendaries in season four, yeah. Yeah, okay, like like, obviously, you could argue, oh, hunters never were that tanky. And it's true. Hunters always had a lack of survivability. But, um, like, here's the thing. I, I think, um, I, I think that the reason why we should complain about this now is the fact that, um, these talent trees are gonna be our base, like, this is gonna be the class. You know? And, um, in the past, when we had all of this borrowed power, they could fix certain issues that a class has with borrowed power. So if you have an issue in a certain aspect, so let's say, uh, let's say, oh, this class is really bad at AoE, and then they can fix that by giving them a legendary that buffs their AoE, or they can give them um, a new tier set that uh, has AoE, or you can do this and that to kind of solve their issues a little bit. Um, but... In Dragonflight, we're gonna have these talents, and these are gonna be our talents. Like, they're our baseline. Like, this is how your class works. And on top of that, we're not gonna get much new uh, utility and many new talents or borrowed power or anything. So I do think that the issues that classes had in the past should probably somewhat be solved with the new trees as, like, a baseline thing. And I think Hunters were definitely, or are definitely incredibly squishy and that has been something that kind of sucked for them in the past so i do think fixing that would make sense technically yeah yeah we get we get tier still um but that's not usually something that that like <laughs> you don't want the tier set that buffs your survivability right like that's uh you want the tier set that gives you more damage as a damage dealer and not survivability <laughs> yeah, 
してますよ<笑> bring nothing to a raid like no buff no utility and ah、uh... yeah hunters don't bring that much utility to a raid Honestly, that has never really been an issue until most classes started to have utility for the raids. Which. Like, I just. Oh, I just hate class buffs and stuff that much. Like, it just sucks. Because. Why is it a problem that Hunter doesn't bring a lot of utility for the raids? Well, because all of a sudden all the other classes bring something, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't really be that big of an issue. And it will be fine. But now, all of a sudden, more and more classes get class buffs. Like, for whatever reason, Druid got the Mark of the Wild, which makes no sense in my mind. Like, why the fuck would Druid. Like, especially since we have four roles. Like, ugh. Druid having Mark of the Wild is like. Makes no sense to me. And then Rogue got additional utility as well. And other class of utility, and then, yeah, of course, there are certain classes who have bring nothing. And then, what is the solution? To give everyone utility or everyone a buff? I don't know. At that point, you might as well just have no buffs at all. Like, if everyone has a buff, then what's the point? Like, it's just so weird. Turtle traps binding multiple knockbacks, fear perch. Yeah, and how is that useful in the raid? And we're talking about raid utility, right? In the raid, there's. That's why Rogue was also. Like, if you look at Rogue, I don't think. If you, if you think about Rogue, lack of utility is like something that you don't necessarily think about. Because Rogue has so much utility, right? It's like, what the fuck? Like, if someone says rogue lacks utility, then I would be like, what the fuck's wrong with you? But if you think about specifically raid utility, then it's true. Rogue has barely any raid, raid utility. In fact, it isn't nothing. What does rogue bring to a raid? Like, what does your shroud do in a raid? Or your sap? Or your blind? Or your kidney shot? Or your garrod? Or your gouge, like nothing, right? It's completely useless in a raid because there's barely ever a situation where you need those things. And I think Hunter has just like a similar issue where, yeah, they have a decent amount of utility. I, I don't think Hunters have no utility. Like they have stuff, right? They have, they have traps, they have misdirect, they have turtle, like they have things. But it's just like that most of their utility is just not really useful in a raid. They have bloodlust, but that's another thing. Bloodlust is not really useful in the raid. Because you don't need a hunter to have bloodlust. You just bring any of the other classes that provide it, right? <laughs> Thank you so much for 51 months, Carl, on the tier 3. What's up, what's up? Thank you. Yeah, it, you almost never have a hunter use bloodlust in a raid. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I'm personally a person that is against class buffs and against、um, that kind of stuff. But if you consider the fact that so many other classes have something, I do think that hunter、um, kind of lacks something as well now. Just Because so many other classes bring something. Nice, Carl. Enjoy your vacation. Nice, nice. Anyone who says hunters don't have any rage utility really knows fuck all about hunters. Okay, well, then tell me what hunters provide for the raid. Fincia? <laughs> yeah, right, Jerf. <laughs> l 
Like, for, for some reason, and this specifically happens with hunters. This is such a, such an interesting thing to me. For some reason, there are some really diehard hunter fans that will defend hunters no matter what you say, like, no matter what. Even if it hurts them. And that is, like, mind-blowing to me. Because I remember during the MDI, a bunch of times I would mention that hunters have very little survivability in comparison to other classes, and that they're pretty squishy, and people would lose their minds. Like, there were some people who were like, what the fuck is she talking about? Hunter has so many things for survivability. And I'm just like, like, you do understand that by acknowledging your problems, that's how you fix them, right? There's no... Like, <laughs> you don't have to get personally offended if your class can't do something well. In fact, that is the only way on how you improve your own class, right? So if, if for whatever reason you keep defending Hunter by saying that you have rate utility and that you have survivability, then you, I mean, I don't know how you would ever get fixed, right? Because, I mean, if you are under the impression that Hunter has good rate utility, and hunter is good survivability? Well then, so be it. I don't play a hunter, right? If you guys want to stay this way, then uh, that's on you. But I just don't understand why you get so offended. <laughs> but yeah, I'm also really curious uh, and what Fincia thinks that a rate utility, what rate utility a hunter has. Like, I'm incredibly curious about the answer now. It's probably gonna be, it's... Oh, you can soak things with turtle and you can misdirect mobs when they spawn to the tank. Oh, great. That, that's great, you two. No other class can do that. <laughs> you definitely have to bring a hunter for that. <laughs> There's no other immunity use in the game. Have you heard about binding shots? <laughs> oh, I mean, you got a point. Binding shot is really nice. On all of the mobs that are immune to binding shots in the raid. <laughs> Thanks for 13 months, Mordad. What's up? Hey, I'm not the toxic one, right? I got attacked here, okay? I'm allowed to defend myself. Hey, hey, hey. This person said that I don't have a clue about Hunter because I said they don't have rate utility, yeah? I, I was attacked here, okay? <laughs> I was not the one starting the toxicity here, okay? I was just defending myself. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mordad. What's up? <laughs> anyway, um... Okay, so the conclusion is that the class tree seems really nice uh, when it comes to, like, the options that you have. I think it's very, like, you're very free to choose whatever you want on the top. And then, of course, you're more, um, like, BM left, survival middle, MM right, right? So you definitely have to, like, like you pick and choose things here um, later on for your damage. But overall, you're pretty free to choose whatever you want. The only issues, of course, that we talked about earlier is that um, there's no, like, not a lot of defensive stuff, which is something that hunters struggled with for a long time. So it would have been nice if they included that in Dragonflight to kind of fix that issue. Um, but yeah, outside of that, it seems nice. Then looking at the actual BM tree, is there anything new that they get that we can look at more specifically? Like any new spells or interesting things? Or... Um, and really bad things. <clears throat> Kill cleave, middle right sides. Oh. 
While Beast Cleave is active, Kill Command now also strikes near by enemies for 57 damage dealt. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty nice. So they just gain more cleave. I assume there is some sort of... Or is this like uncapped? Could be uncapped. At least it doesn't say it's capped. From what I've seen, you're not free to choose what you want. Okay, listen, like when I pick talents, I'm not trying to pick the best course of action. I'm, I'm only reading the talents. Like, all of these points here, I didn't, I didn't try to pick the best talents. I just read through them and then I just clicked the talents as I went. Like, I'm not trying to come up with a good tree. I picked a lot of very optional things. Like, I picked a lot of stuff that you ha don't have to take. So don't don't look at what I expect. It definitely is a lot like you're free like all of this basically all of this is purely utility. So that means that you like the more utility there is in a tree, the more free you are to choose whatever you want, right? And that's the point that I'm making. Like you can literally take anything you want here. You can go left, or you can go middle, or you can go right. And then at the bottom you have damage talents, and that's where you just force into a certain direction. But that's fine at the bottom, right? But here, you can literally take whatever you want. And then you go down to your whatever tree you want to go to. So, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't pick things like trying to be the best talent tree or whatever. But you have very few points to spend there, in my opinion, if you want to take any damage. Yeah, but that's the purpose of the tree. The reason why you have utility at the top and damage at the bottom is because you're not supposed to take all of the damage. Because they are divided by spec, right? So left is like more BM, hunter middle is like more survival hunter and right is more um mm hunter you're not supposed to take all of these damage talents so it makes sense it's at the bottom right also i'm only level 70 i would have more points to spend if i was level 70 i would have like four more points or five <laughs> Vichy. <laughs> Alright, so let's take a look at the. Uh, oh, wait, Jerf said something at the bottom. Call of the Wild? Bottom right is also very nice. Okay, Call of the Wild. Where was that? Oh. Too many cooldown. You sound the call of the wild, summoning two of your active pets for 20 seconds. During this time, a random pet from your stable will appear every four seconds to assault your target for six seconds. <laughs> okay, that's cute. Oh, that's also interesting because you're gonna have a lot more pets. Huh. Okay, that's, uh, that's nice. Oh, uh... While Call of the Wild is active, Barb Shot affects all of your summoned pets. That seems pretty good. And then while Call of the Wild is active, Barb Shot has 25% chance to gain a uh, to gain a charge of charge any time focus is spent. Okay. That's also good. Hmm. Okay, interesting. An aspect of the wild is here. Beast of Wrath is here. It's in the middle, so that makes sense. Hmm. 
Barb shot deals surface increased damage, and applying barb shot has a benefit to the cooldown kill command. Uh huh. What is the curing ability, right? And your stump. Okay. So obviously, like, I don't play a lot of Hunter at all. But what do you guys think of the position of the talents? Like, do you think there's some some weird stuff going on with maybe, like, maybe single target and AOE being too split up or something like that? Because some, some talent trees have that issue, right? That um, things are just two split up so you have like one aoe spell all the way in the left bottom and the other aoe spell all the way in the right bottom and that's just like really weird right willing error is weird you mean the position of it okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Huh, yeah, it's a bit... Like, which kind of capstone would you take for AoE? Dire pack? Oh, this is getting reworked, okay. I think it's sort of 60 months take, you appreciate that. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess, Blood Friends to you. Yeah, I guess it's really hard to get Wailing Arrow and get that as well. Like, I guess that's not really possible. Yeah, it's a bit weird because for some situations you could argue that they just turn a certain talent into a single target talent. But I think Wailing Arrow is definitely... Like, this is just an AoE button you press, right? Like, there's just no interaction whatsoever for a single target in any way. I guess it's about the new press. I guess there's also no interaction for AoE, really. That's what I hate about Covenant abilities. I think there's a lot of Covenant abilities that have no interactions with, you, with the rest of your class. Like, you just press it. And I know there's some abilities that do have interactions. But I think a lot of other abilities don't. Um, and it feels a bit weird. Wait, it's not a Covenant ability? Or oh, it's the bow. Okay, yeah, borrowed power in general. Let's just, let's just uh, move it to borrowed power. But I think there are certain like borrowed power, specifically Covenants, that just do a thing and that's it. And sometimes the thing that they, it does looks cool or it's like satisfying or whatever. But other than that, there's no like real interaction with anything else. And then, I don't know, it just doesn't feel great in my opinion if that happens ever. Because just pressing a button is like 
s some buttons, of course, have to be pressed and it's fine, but yeah, I don't know. Like, sometimes it just feels a bit weird if it's so disconnected. That's why I also didn't like um, the, the well, the holy, the spirit well. What is it called? The thing that the holy priest's ability, the three minute cooldown. Light well, there we go. Yeah, that's why I also don't like light well, because that one seems the same thing. Like, it seems like, oh, it's a three minute cooldown, you press it. Nothing else happens, you know? It's just like completely disconnected from, from anything, really. And that seems a bit meh. Yeah, it looks like they should definitely move Wailing Arrow to, um, to like this side somewhere. Yeah, there are some Covenant abilities that interact really well with them. And usually those are the ones that are more liked as well, right? Usually um, the, the Covenant abilities that somehow really change your rotation and interact with you really well are the ones that people like the most. Not always, but uh, generally. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So it looks like the DM Hunter tree seems somewhat interesting. Seems good enough. Just um, Wailing Arrow is a bit weird. Okay. Okay, so not bad all in all. Like, it seems, seems fine enough, right? Hmm. Yeah, I think we're good. Let's look at MM. Okay, then MM, we have aim shot, steady shot, cane shot, side shot, killing blow. Okay, w what does MM have that is interesting or bad? Rapid fire, focused aim. Okay, so it looks like left is more AoE and right is more single target, I guess. We have bursting shot here. Chimera shot, kill shot has two charges. Oh, there's double tap, lone wolf. So Lone Wolf is here, okay. That's a bit far down. Do they want you to use a pet? In certain situations? Do they want you to use a pet in AoE? Volley, Salvo. It's just random crit damage increase. Trick shot causes aim shot and rapid fire to ricochet to two additional targets. Then ricochets to two fewer targets. Close the ricochet. Up to two targets hit by ricochet from from trick shots also have has an explosive shot fired at them. Okay. Trick shots now also works with kill shots, hitting up to five additional enemies. Hmm, okay. And true shot is also pretty far down, it looks like. I guess it doesn't really matter, because... It seems like this tree is really not that split. I guess. Wait, let me, let me look at this. Okay, so let's say we would go here. Oh wait. So it would have six more points. One, two, three, four. You could literally take all of the bottom ones, right? You could take Wailing Arrow, this one and this one, if you want to. But then you give up a lot of 
like random talents, but you can take all the capstones if you want. Thanks for five months, uh, Twide. What's up? I feel okay. Still not like perfect when they're when I look at my screen, but it's fine. Then what is this? Well, after you is active, you gain 13 crit rating every second, second after 10 times. Hmm. I like that. It's a little bit of a ramp. I, I think that's kind of cool. I always like ramps um, because you can play around it. So you know you have to use it like 10 seconds earlier to get the maximum value at the end. Which is kind of cool. Then Trisha lasts an additional 3 seconds and reduces the focus cost of all your abilities by 25%, okay. Um, you have to spend 20 points in the upper half alone? This tree makes no sense. Well, that's because there's no talents at the bottom, right? Like, there's basically nothing at the bottom. Right? I mean, there's, there's very few talents. So it makes sense that you only have 10 points to spend here, right? Because you can technically all take all three capstones, which not many classes have that. In fact, very few classes can take all the capstones. So the fact that the, the a map hunter can do that is kind of cool, I guess. Yeah, I guess I guess to compensate for that, they put all the good t stuff at the top, which is a bit weird for sure. Yeah, that that makes it a bit awkward. Where's Bullseye? Oh, here. I mean, you need this? I don't think you need this. Dep like... I mean, do you? I mean, it's an execute, right? So I'm sure it's really good for the raids. But this is not something you need in M+. Plus. I think this is... This is not an implus talent, right? <laughs> yeah, this is a uh, this is not an implus talent. This is very rate, very much a rate thing. Well, let's just see what the hunters say about this. Okay, let's talk. See what Pudra says. When I didn't plus proc on every mop. Well, the way... The way Bullsaw works, when your ability damage a target below 20%, you gain 1% increased crit chance for 6 seconds, stacking up to 0 times. Which obviously is a bug. It would stack up to X amount of times, right? We don't know. But the thing is, so you get the crit chance when they're low. First of all, it needs to ramp up, which is a problem in Implas. Because in Implas, mobs usually aren't below 20% for a long time. So you're never going to be able to stack it all the way up if the, if the amount of stack that you have is high. And additionally, when the mobs die, then you still have... Like, you're wasting the rest of your, like, buff. So this is, this is definitely not good in a plus. In, in a raid, it's different, because the boss is below 20% for a long time. So you manage to stack it up all the way, and then you have it for the rest of the encounter. While in a plus, yes, every single mob drops below 20%, but usually at the same time. So you fight a trash pack, everyone drops below 20%, you start stacking your bullseye, and then when you have... 5 stacks, 10 stacks, then the mobs are all dead. And then what? 
for bosses? Well, you usually don't take talents in M+ plus for bosses that only work on bosses and only for 20% of the boss fight too. Yeah, I don't think you take this. <laughs> I think there's, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of other talents that would be a lot more valuable than this for, for M+. Plus. Chain pulling. Well, but even if you chain pull, you don't keep stacking it because the previous mobs that are an execute are gonna die and the new mobs are not an execute anymore, right? Having new stack refreshes to six seconds. Okay. Why? I'm I'm a bit confused on why you guys think this is good at M plus. Like, isn't it completely logical that it's not good? This is a ramp up talent in execute. That's just by default a bad talent for Mythic Plus. There's just no arguing it. Unless you completely like pull around it. Technically, you could have a like you have a mob that is below 20%, and then you, you carry it along or something. Like you should see it in the corner, and then every six seconds the hunter like attacks it to refresh the buff, and then you should see it again or some bullshit. Which would be like incredibly weird because uh it's every six seconds, so it's it's a lot of, like, refreshing that you have to do. Good for bosses. Yes. It would be good for 20% of the boss fights. Okay, I'm gonna stop arguing about this. I'm saying this is bad. If you think it's good, go and take it, okay? <laughs> just just play bullseye all you want. Let's see what the, what the hunters say about... Oops. Uh, about um, the MM talents. Actually, are they talking about the MM talents specifically? I guess they are. Talk to Eric and Padre. Yo. Hello. Dude, Padre, you're, fam Yo. you're famous, man. I know. I'm stoked about this developer stuff Let's going talk about on, too. MM. Uh, but you know, some classes just have less stuff than others, too. That's life, right? All right. Mark's uh, Thanks for 14 months, Anoli. What's up? Thank more you, than thank anything you. else. Uh, if you want either one of you to kind of take me down a single target tree and talk about the decisions, I know the big one is the fact that Bursting Shot is still required, and that not only that, but to get to Legacy of the Windrunners, right? Your, which is the old five-point tree that got turned into three talents, but they moved it under points. Bursting Shot, so it's, it's not just one. pretty much uh, irrelevant, kind of. Uh, it's two points. And it's also... A, we talked about as well about how bad dead I was the kill shot having two charges so mm -hmm. uh, take me down pure single and talk about the changes as you that tree is different to yours is it is it I don't think it is it's the same tree no That I in yours was a dead end. Uh, where's that I again? Oh no, it's it's not. No, it's the same. You go through it. So, you, okay, you can go ahead. No, I was in a pot. They changed the trees today. The hunter tree. They changed the hunter tree today. Okay, wait. This video was uploaded on the 22nd of July. Three days ago. Like, unless they change the hunter tree literally today or yesterday, it should be the same tree, no? Some points are different. I'm checking. I haven't seen a difference so far. Well, we'll see, I guess. Well, the changes on my other monitor, I forget what they were. Oh, it's a ton. I mean, they, they gave rapid yeah. fire, they gave rapid fire uh, the focus regen in the actual node where before it was like two, two talent 
actual not points but like two talent uh rows down was making rapid fire relevant they added that in uh they moved multi-shot down here so it wasn't required to get to get super, single super, target so. stuff and it was more same focused tree, yeah, I think it's the same tree. abilities so like multi-shot goes right into trick shots goes right into salvo and then uh down into like explosive ricochet and stuff sorry one sec i feel like the talent trees uh we get it's not the same as the classic ones uh but no one no one said they should be the same though right like they're leaning onto the the classic tr like the, cl the idea of talent trees in classic they're not supposed to be the same right i think it makes a lot of sense like this because in in classic you had three spec trees and you were able to use your talents in all of the different spec trees, right? Um, and they changed it to have a class tree where everyone can use points there. And then you have spec trees where you can only use specs um, within that spec. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, because in classic, most specs were not necessarily as like different. Like, the, the way it works in classic, the difference between like... A red paladin and a holy paladin was maybe like three abilities or four like the the amount of differences between the specs were pretty minor there was only like very few things and few abilities that, that changed but nowadays different specs are very different like the difference between um a shadow priest and a disc priest or the difference between a guardian druid and a moonkin the difference between you know like it's vastly different nowadays or bm hunter or survival hunter versus a mem hunter like it's much more different nowadays than it is than it was in the past so it makes a lot more sense to have a specific tree for the specific tr uh, spec because they have so many different spells and so many different things like they're they're like their own thing much more than in the past right Yeah, exactly, like Calcilium said. Yeah, and usually when there was... Usually the talents that were in the spec trees that were further up would now be moved into the class tree, right? Because in Classic, there were many things you could not reach, right? Like if you uh, wanted to play a Holy Paladin, you kind of had to go all the way down in the Holy Tree, and then you had only a certain amount of points left and you could do other things with those points but you weren't able to go all the way down in like two trees right you weren't able to get the last point in the prot paladin tree and the last point in the holy paladin tree like that didn't work um so now it's different in the class tree you can go all the way down and that's why they put like things that are not very spec specific they put in the class tree so you still have the freedom of choosing abilities that are not necessarily part of your spec but they're part of your class right like for example um a moonkin can go with skull bash for example if that's what you want to do um or a guardian druid can go with wild growth if that's what you want right so you definitely have options and, and choices that you can make that are pretty interesting like there's it's clearly on a path that you would be taking yeah. if you were having aoe in mind and then i think top of my head other fast, changes so. were double tap in the middle they move double tap great change they removed the quick shot talent which is awesome mm -hmm. so yeah and they added chimera shot chimera to the tree shot. they so added they, yeah yeah they did a lot of good changes here and i i think i mean it's still more work needs to be done um and we've kind of outlined that some of that feedback already and we'll get to it but you can you can make some pretty good and different build based on the content you're doing now which i think feels good oh, yeah all right Sounds where are we good. starting we got aim shot eric are are you doing go, single you, target? yeah you go for it i know here's, my builds can be here, different here's <laughs> single and we'll talk about cleave and aoe afterwards so with the changes running it down mid very good like pretty much every choice up until you get to calling the shots near the bottom and then the capstone uh all feel great okay um one thing about this tree is you take all you take just about everything in the top yeah. third okay oh like really it's kind of it's pretty kind much of everything all mandatory. except chimera shots so you take yeah. arcane shot focus you take aim shot causes your next chimera shots or arcanes to deal extra damage even though currently it says zero percent more but obviously that's a uh, yeah that's just 
part of the baseline, you know, uh, spec now. Like, it literally, like Eric said, everything in the top of the street. Okay, sorry. What are we discussing? Um... I mean, it's true that there will always be like a best setup for single targets and a best setup for a certain situation for AoE, but I don't see how you would ever change that. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, no matter how the talent tree would look like, no matter if it's talents or choices or different trees or how, whatever, it's, there will always be a best single target choice. I like understand that, right? Because that has nothing to do with the actual system. That has to do with math. Because there's only so many things you can do with different kind of choices. So that means by default, there will always be one thing that is the best. No matter what you do. That's, that's literally just how things work. That's numbers, right? So the only thing you can really do with a talent tree to give people options is to give them options that are better for certain niche situations. So you say, okay, these talents are the best for single target, but you don't have to spend all points on them, right? So let's say you have um, 30 points to spend, and you need to spend 15 points for like the optimal single target rotation or single target talents. And then you still have 15 points left to customize your talent tree according to the situation. That That is the ideal world for like a good talent tree right because then you put 15 points in your single target as like a mandatory thing and then afterwards you can either go for some aoe depending on what you do you're like maybe maybe you have a boss fight where once in a while there's ads that spawn and you need to kill them right so you go for full single target because boss damage is important and then you go for some of the aoe talents because you want aoe for those situations now maybe you're in a different situation maybe you Maybe you have a boss fight where there's a single target, but once in a while there's a second target that spawns and you need to do two target cleave, okay? Well, then you take the 15 points in single target, and then the other 15 points you try to maximize your two target cleave with that, right? And then, again, like this could be so many different situations. It could be burst AoE that you need, or spread out AoE, or two target cleave, or three target cleave, or whatever it is you might need, and then that's what you use your extra points on, right? But that doesn't mean that you don't have mandatory points. There will always be mandatory points, depending on what you do. Uh, thank you so much for 61 months, Lyra. What's up? <laughs> thank you. So yeah, in the end, it just depends on how well they're balancing it. Because you can have a talent tree that is like really nicely done, where you feel like, oh, I have so many points to do whatever I want, you know? And you're going to have different trees for different situations. But then there might also be a talent tree that is really badly designed, where no matter what, you always, almost always take the same, like, 99% of the points are always the same, and then, like, one point is, like, random, depending on the situation, right? And that would, in my opinion, be a bad design. Because the more points you have to freely spend for different situations, the better the tree is, right? Um, because that's what the cool thing is about the talent trees. The cool thing is that you can pick and choose whatever you want to do. But if you're really, like, if they almost force you to go a certain path, then that's bad, Right? But yeah, that just depends on the sign. It depends on numbers, on tuning, on balancing, all that kind of stuff. A certain build may be the best for single target, but if this build requires you to stay still for 30 seconds, this build may be the best single target, but it will be for some bosses, but not for others. Okay, okay. Yeah, listen, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't trying to be, like, perfectly, like, literal with when I said that there is, like, one build only. You know what I meant, though, right? 
Like, of course, there might be two single target talents, and one is slightly better for one situation, one is slightly better for the other. Like, that's, uh, that's obviously not what I was trying to say, that that doesn't exist. But uh, my point still stands, that you have a certain amount of folk single target talents that you almost always take. Yes, there might be like one point of variation here and there when it comes to movement or execute or downtime or whatever, right? But overall, they are still like a, a main single target build with some points to spare that you then use for different things. Which, in my opinion, as I said, I think is like the ideal scenario. Take except for Chimera Shot. All right, where are we going from here? You getting rapid fire? Yep, take yep. A rapid fire, careful aim, streamline. Focused aim, Hunter's Knowledge. Yeah, the aim shot buffing talents are all Dude, you can there. wait, hold up. Oh yeah, no, this, this is hold, real. hold up. This is different than every other tree by far. Oh, but I yeah. feel like I have to give examples to make this make sense. Y you guys are spending almost, are you taking Chimera? Yeah, that's funny. No. Nah. Okay, if you were to take Chimera, you would actually be the first class I've ever seen that unlocks the bottom part of their tree without even going into the middle. No other <laughs> class does that. None, zero. Like, and that's like kind of a problem because you want the power to kind of fill out near the bottom so it yeah. makes more sense to invest into things. Like if you look at other other specs right now, like oh, they, they, shit, it's, uh, like even Ellie Shaman, right? Like the way Ellie Shaman's a new one, it's like pretty similar oh to Oh my Hunter, God, right? I can't believe like you, you take, just told me this. Going I'm going to tell road, this to everyone. Up, I can't believe Lyra met a boy. I'm going to carve it in a tree and yell it from the rooftops. <laughs> Awesome though, big secret. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't say anything. <laughs> I really hope that works out for you. That is really cool. Enjoy your um, your um, initial being in love phase. <laughs> I always hated that though. I'm way too awkward and shy to be in an in love phase. I feel so awkward all the time. It's like, oh my god, what do I do with my everything? <laughs> the honeymoon phase, yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> oh my god, I'm literally the most awkward person when I'm like into somebody. Oh my god, it, oh, it's it's so embarrassing. <laughs> the other person that I'm into has to be really into me as well to not like immediately think that I'm I'm like the weirdo. I'm like the, the biggest weirdo they have ever met. <laughs> So I'm really glad my boyfriend was into me as well when I was into him because, oh my goodness, any normal human being would have ditched me immediately. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> just being completely cool, you know? Not knowing what to do with my arms, it's fine. <laughs> It's like you grab this, let's just say you're single targeting actually, you go this way, and then you have to take Earthquake at all, and then it's immediately you're going down, and like, this is an AoE choice potentially, or this is like a fire choice. It's in the the then... steady shot focus, you need precise shots, like I can't even imagine playing the spec without precise shots. Yeah. You're, you're always going to buff aim shot damage by 10%, crit chance by 10%. I think the problem is that there's so much like, mandatory or just very good options at the top, and then just the way the tree designed is that the left side is very cleave focused and the right side just because where the talents are and what talents they are just feels dead yeah okay. I, and i think the the m plus slash aoe build looks a lot different than this um but you'll see for the single target build you you really don't i mean i don't think you take a single capstone yep so like now you would take okay. oh, that left bad. choice node take surging shots okay um, in the middle, you take the very middle talent. True aim. And then go double tap, steady focus, lone wolf. I mean, I'm, uh... Okay. Lock and load, true shot. And then one point underneath lock and load. Calling the shots? Oh my god. Or... That seems so bad. No, sorry. Oh, under lock yeah, and load. Serpent, Serpent stalker's, stalker's trickery. trickery. Only one? Yeah, yeah it's... Okay. It's, yeah, they, I get it's it. 100% of time, yeah. Yep. Uh, and then... Yeah, the worst part is the same thing, because I'm already really awkward when I speak to people that I just don't know, generally. Like, I just say really weird things, because my brain, for whatever reason, thinks that I have to immediately reply to everything. 
And when there's like a second of silence, I have to say something. Like my brain doesn't doesn't understand that I could just like stop and think for a second. It doesn't get that, you know? It's like I could just sit here and think before answering. No, no, no. My brain doesn't know what to say. Like I, I will literally not know what to say, but start speaking. Like, how does it even work? Like, what does my brain think I'm going to say if I don't know what to say? Where do I start the sentence without knowing how to end the sentence? <laughs> and then I'm very optimistic. My brain is apparently, like, very optimistic. And my brain thinks if I start a sentence, I will be able to figure out what the end of the sentence is while speaking. Which usually does not work this way. <laughs> but... It is what it is, you know? <laughs> then you have two fucking points. And where do these go? So basically, you have Probably nowhere volley. to go except either two points in calling the shots, which feels terrible, or you can get volley and then one point calling the shots. I don't know. The end of the tree feels not great. Well, w w the, you would take the bottom left capstone talent but that's going to get changed um on single it, target it's, oh yeah so like if you go take volley and then put a point in the talent below volley so and then if you look at the new choice note they added it's very interesting it's um, so broken so yeah explosive ricochet whenever you uh Oh, actually, you have to ricochet, don't you, Eric? Yeah, never yeah. mind. Yeah, this is the word. I was speaking, it's like, huh? Did I not understand this properly? Yeah, I don't think that this ricochet thing works for anything that is single target, right? Like, you need to have things to ricochet off of, so it doesn't work w with only one target. This is for an AoE build. But yeah, like he said, the single target build is just kind of awkward, and you're not using the bottom of this tree at all. This is This has to be changed. The, 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 it's a lot of this stuff and I think what would help is just a lot of the stuff in the top of the tree being made into one point choices or some of them just being made baseline right like there's just too much required the fact that you spend 20 points before you even go into the middle is insane the idea is that you flesh out the the power level on the way down and like if you yeah, wanted to get this legacy really of weird. the windrunner single target stuff just to like pop some but what about I mean, what about careful aim? Do you need that? Like, you don't need it. I mean, it's obviously a damage increase, but... I don't think that's, like, a necessary talent to take, right? So, isn't it just, like, a number thing? Like, it just depends on, is careful aim better than a nearing vision, or... Eagle Tail is true fo focus. Right? Like, this is literally just a number thing, right? Because neither this nor this changes your rotation in a very, like, thoughtful way. It literally just affects your damage for certain points in the fight. So this one makes you do more damage on targets above 70% health. And this one makes you do more damage whenever true shot is up, right? So I think it definitely could be, like there could be a situation where this is better than this, no? Yeah, I understand that careful aim is strong, but like these two, like I, I, get, like, I just think it's a number thing. Like I'm not saying that this is bad. I'm just saying that this is pretty situational. Like, if there's a full single target fight, for example, then careful aim only works for the first 30%, and then it's useless for the rest of the fight, right? Well, the thing is, you cannot take both because you want Lone Wolf and Lock and Load. Holy shit, the world is ending, apparently. But yeah, I don't know what else you could, like, get rid of. I 
mean, I guess there's just a lot of like some of some of the things are just number things, but very few few. Like the only number thing I can think of that doesn't really heavily affect your rotation is careful aim, and then the true shot buffs. And <laughs> well, other than that. Well, I guess precise. Oh, well, I, <laughs> I don't know. It's a bit hard. I mean, I guess bullseye as well. Bullseye is also something that. I mean, it's really good, right? But I think this is also just like, um, like, what if there's a boss that never even goes into execute? Like, what if you fight uh, Sylvanas? Right, bullseye would not be good on Sylvanas, right? So that is also that's also a number thing, bullseye. So, yeah, like that's situational. Ish. Uh, and then you could go down here, right? And I guess careful aim as well. Because they they are both percentage based, like both either execute or high end damage. Which careful aim is more useful than bullseye though. Because careful aim is almost always useful um, whenever there's more than one target because you can always proc it to the start. While bullseye, I guess, is less useful because it has a, has ramp up time. And careful aim does not, right? So whenever you have to ramp something, it's possible that you literally cannot use it properly. You don't like double tap. You kind of need double tap though. Because you want Lone Wolf, right? You can't get to Lone Wolf without Double Tap unless you go Bursting Shot Dead Eye. Which definitely seems weaker than Double Tap. Yeah, and it's also two points versus. No, this is also hey, two points. Welcome to the gang. Both Careful Aim and Bulls are two points. Uh, thanks for Prime Sub, Honey. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. So, yeah, I guess that's the only thing I can think of that you could get rid of. Depending on the situation. But even that seems like that's not a lot. Like if you literally have only like four points of freedom or like two, that's a bit messed up. So yeah. Points out of here. You'd have to grab bursting shot in a relevant point. You would have to grab kill shot having two charges as close to as irrelevant as it could be without not actually being irrelevant before you can consider getting this this thing that they added with Windrunner's yeah. guidance, so right? Like what they need to do is either move bursting shot to just be like a a leaf node somewhere you know where it doesn't lead to anything else um i don't have a problem with the utility talent yeah we'll do that being tomorrow a prerequisite for, for a talent below it but the entire row should be you know utility talents then i think rogue has something like that where an entire oh, no, row wait, tomorrow's gonna be a new respect. alpha build right oh shit but it's gonna be pretty late okay we have time to do season four dungeons tomorrow before the alpha build comes out because it's gonna be at like 5 p.m tree right? is a utility talent Yes. You have to pick at least one of them to go down. But Bursting Shot is the only utility talent in the tree. Yeah, so we were so. talking... That's actually Ellie Shaman. So Ellie has, like, our Earth, Earth Shock, Earthquake, Fire... Not take or you you add a link from Double Tap. No, or the right PvP player, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Just add a link from Double Tap to Legacy the way... Here we are. This is a capstone. Yeah, that, it, it, this is purely speculative for now. Like, right, you, you might just not take volley. You might not take that one point under it. And then you could take a point out of one of the aim shot buffing talents. And then you might take calling the shots and unerring. Okay. Like, that that might be viable. But... Yeah, but the thing is, is that capstones, it's as, not a, a, good as a concept, <laughs> uh, are supposed months, to be Gary. very What's powerful up? things that even be like the core of your thing. Oh, That's the whole point of I this. know, right? I it just the gameplay goes but okay other than that i don't was think there's target this is not so basically just means that there's a lot of um like if they could implement that in some way and not right? tie this to trick shots it'd yeah. be a lot more say that this is the most problematic spec tree of any class in the game that I, i've, I've oh, had wow. conversations about every single one Seems of them maybe the only one that is worse is shadow priest uh and even I think then the i don't think so build is like pretty good like i don't really have a, a lot of problems with it but the single target is uh very problematic. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, clue, single, there's yeah. still some meaningful choice. I, I think if they just did something to make true shot a little better, so that middle, you know, that middle row or middle column is just like 
All right, anyway, so Hunter seems, or MM Hunter specifically, seems a bit <laughs> problematic, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> I'm sorry, Hunters, I'm sorry. Stop laughing at, at Hunters, guys. Stop it. You're being very toxic. <laughs> Have some extra points to spend. Want to do some <laughs> man? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Make sure you spam hoppers, guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so we have Raptor Strike, Ferocity, Predator, Harpoon, I guess Harpoon is somewhat optional, not really, but somewhat, Welfare Bomb, Butchery Car, Boost Bite, Okay, anything interesting or new for this spec as well? Coordinated Assault, Coordinated Kill... That's a lot of points, 3 points? There's a lot of 3 point talents! What the fuck? This is free? 3, 3, 3... 3... 3... Are you kidding? Holy shit, there's so many 3 point talents! What? That's insane! I don't think I've ever seen that many three-point talents. Jesus. How do you even... Hmm. It seems like you have to... Ah, oh, this seems really awkward. First of all, there's three points that you have to spend for utility to get a basic mobility spell, which already seems incredibly bad. I'm not a fan of this at all. This should be one point. This should be Harpoon, and it should be 25 seconds cooldown, not 30. And it shouldn't. Ha this talent shouldn't exist. Actually, it should be twenty seconds cooldown, not twenty-five. So this talent existing is bad. And then, in terms of engagement, I don't mind this being an optional thing. This is fine. I think this could be nice for a plus or something, possibly maybe. But it should be like off to the side. So basically, the way this should look is that I think harpoon should be somewhere in the middle, and off to the side should be a single note that is optional. That is terms of engagement. You and your pet charge your enemy, striking them for 500 physical damage. You then become one with your pet for 12 seconds. While active, your pet damage is increased by 25%. After strike and mongoose by deal an additional 45% of real and kill command is like that. And a lot of these three point talents should be two point talents. <laughs> like, uh, that just seems like. I guess the problem is that they're just missing a lot of talents. Like, they don't have a lot of talents, right? Like, if you compare this to a mem hunter, let's count. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 
18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So they have 32 talents. See how many MM has. 32 I said, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. You see, MM has 36. I guess that's why they have so many like three point talents because they just couldn't come up with more talents. Maybe. Huh, that's interesting. Hmm. And then aspect of the eagle is also down here. It is an optional talent. Lunch is three points. <laughs> One yard per point. <laughs> oh my god, seriously? I mean, that's a bit messed up, yeah. Let's see what the hunters say about... about this. Wait, they didn't even talk about... Maybe it's in the other video then. Did they maybe not change They survival? asked for my UI. Did survival just stay the way it is? Guys, I think her... Oh, okay. That's a good point. Welcome Thanks for the friends the of uh, Stevie. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. Hey, bud. Coordinated assault is uh, weird. Hey, bud. All right. Evade your favorite class. Okay, yeah. it's Serial yeah, Hunter. Cool. Let's so go. So basically, like, what we've done, we've done, like, big-time Spectre overall Hunter looking at things. So, like, noticing that, like, they don't, like, have any significant ray buffs or ways to bring, like, buffs like they did back in Y. They didn't have that back. They also really took away a bit of their defensiveness. So, like, we've talked about that a lot. So, like, basically what we're going to do is just as a group with my screen share, just kind of, like, fill out a Hunter tree for survival. And then, obviously, talk about the choices you have. Talk about Wait, things that kind of make sense. Wait, are they doing this Druid Hunter tree for survival? Like, what, the last. Oh, yeah, we don't care about that. I would I'm just gonna move to the spectrum. Like getting barrage. So Fair shot. They were not knowing. Uh, uh, but, uh, in, in. Also, okay. if they change how it. I just assumed it was. Yeah. Like, uh. AOE. Like most. Okay, let's see love how doing far shit. we have to move Tangent. on here. It's so bad. Yeah. The, uh -huh. the fact out what another monk. Definitely something to. <laughs> We're trying to so muddy up the of of tree with that shit. Like, yeah. having baseline mobility be here is definitely very strange. All right, mm. we're taking Raptor Strike. We're going Ferocity. Where are we going? Predator. Did you see single target? Or this is just pure single, single, This is right? pure, yeah, pure yeah. single, yeah. If you want to cleave, obviously, Wildfire Bomb's pretty good. And mm -hmm. it's only one point. But yeah. yeah. But then you take, I think, Bloodseeker and Tip of the Spear, yep, right? take them both. Okay. Then you go to Mongoose, Mongoose bite. bite. Then down the right-hand side, focus. increases Mongoose Bite damage. That's more kill command damage. Okay. And then you take flanking strike. Yep. And then again, below this, it's sweeping spear is just another mongoose bite damage. It's a huge like, buff, it, too. But, but it's like we have two talents that are the exact same thing. One just mm. adds carve and one doesn't. It, okay, so like, that's that really one and the weird. two to the right. Like, oh, those yeah. are the same talent. Oh, that's kill command, sorry. The one, the one above, above it. it. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's just the same talent. It, it feels <laughs> like this is the oh, yeah. early iteration. It is the yeah, same that's, talent. Yeah, that seemed like they needed a point. There huh. and, and then to the right yeah. of that talent too is also just a generic <laughs> damage buff. Like, yeah, which also we're gonna take. Yeah. Okay. This so I'm assuming flanking strike is going to do no damage as well. So it, like it doesn't it's do any basically damage, no. a wall. Yeah. So uh, apparently they said that they're gonna rework this tree, right? So we definitely are looking at a version that's gonna be changed. But I still just wanna look at the feedback because I wanna see what I have picked up on the tree versus what like the actual hunter people think, just to see if. Like, does someone agree with what I'm, like, saying? Well, the harpoon buff, thing as but, well. Yeah. The you kind of have to go stuff. out of your way to get it. Yep. And, and do you, you go down uh, to Spearhead? Yeah. yeah, this is where it gets really weird. New. So Spearhead is, like, they split out what our old damage CD did into this new damage CD. So Coordinated Assault, if you go up to the left, you take that as well. Probably. We don't know how this works yet. Um, th this just looks so weird. This used to be a 20% damage amp and it would increase your chance to reset kill command by 25%. So just a flat out, you know, 
damage cooldown. Oh wait, yeah. they already reworked. Oh no, they didn't. Or? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, like, this doesn't do it. Yeah, they already reworked some of it, right? Because Coordinated Assault, uh, to me, just says you and your pet attack as one, increasing all damage you both deal by 20%. So this is just a straight-up 20% damage increase for 20 seconds, which is incredibly boring as a cooldown, but pretty powerful. 20% damage gain, right? But here, it has like a different effect. Mm. This does unless that bleed does target. a ton of damage. But you so can't even press doing. kill shot or unless you're like twenty. Pressing the button. Okay, so we can skip this. Because whenever they like you this. reset, this is just like no. It's this so seems bad. so bad. Yeah, the, the fact that you have to take the, the the fact that you have to take four points just to get what this should be alone with one point is ridiculous. And it's not even like a good single target damage. I mean, kill command I think is going to do a lot of damage for survival. Um, There's a lot of, of like alpha pet predator damage, stuff. damage okay. in, and then you take birds of prey. Which is, uh, you know, talent on live right now. A lot of weird is, stuff for sure for fun. survival, like, it seems you know, like. Get... It's a bit interesting with survival because I do think... I definitely think that survival has been a spec that has been neglected for a long time by Blizzard ever since they reworked it. Because it turned out that, surprise, surprise, uh, people don't like playing a melee hunter. So no one really liked playing it at the start. Um, and then it was just kind of a spec that was like a meme. Like, no one really played it. It was like this meme spec that no one, that just like, you know, existed. Except for PvP. I, I think PvP was like the only portion of the game where people really played survival a lot. And outside of that, um, in PvE, it was very rare to see a survival hunter like anywhere. And then obviously, they made survival hunter really OP in the last patch. And then it became this really cool thing. But, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Survival Hunter is still, like, even though it's really good, I think the whole rotation and everything isn't very interesting. Like, it, it, it's not, like, the, the most interesting rotation ever, and people, like, love it. People only play it because it's OP, right? Um, so I think... Even though survival is really good right now, live servers, it still, I don't think, hasn't gotten much love in a sense that, like, all of their issues and their problems are not, haven't been addressed. They just got made OP through damage points, right? They just said, hell, hey, all of your spells are OP. That they didn't actually fix, like, a lot of the issues that they have. And I think, or at least it looked like, until now, that their Dragonflight talent trees didn't really, uh, you know, like, I, I, they were, like, very hastily kind of made, it seems like. They were just like, oh, I don't know. It's probably, you know, when you sit in, like, the office and there's, like, a, something you have to do, like, a, like, some work that has to be done and no one wants to do it, and then the boss is like, hey, you do this, and then he's like, okay, sure, I'll do this, and then he takes it, and then he gives it to his some like his colleague or whatever. I was like, "Hey, you do this." And then his colleague gives it to someone else, like, "Ah, oh, you do this." And then it ends up at an intern, and some intern ends up doing the work that needs to be done. And that's kind of how Survival Hunter felt like, at least before the rework, right? It just feels like just no love given to it, like super neglected, and no one cares about Survival Hunters. Oh, poor Survival Hunters. <laughs> They just like being left there and just like, no one cares about them. Thanks for eight months efficiency. What's up? <laughs> thank you, thank you. <sighs> Delegation the corporate way, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it's good to hear that they're getting attention now. So I guess enough people complained about them. Uh, so Blizzard was like, okay, fine. Guess we're gonna put some effort into this anyway. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's good, I guess. You know, I think for a while you could just have permanently, you know, you could have it up permanently, your coordinated assault. The only problem with Birds of Prey is that you just don't get to press other spells. Like, you're so playing into the focus spending build that you just kill command. And but then, then if you go over to Spearhead, it's like, this is, Spearhead is to the right. That's what coordinated assault used to be. 
It was just a flat oh, damage okay. amp, and then your kill command had an additional chance to reset. Like, uh, it, it just seems like they didn't know what to put on the street. I guess the question is with how much time these streets are taking up, it seems unlikely they will have enough time to rework classes that need rework. Um, I disagree. I think they, they have enough time to, to address most of the issues that people come up with um, because there's no other... Like, there's literally nothing that affects class balance other than the, the talent trees. Like, that is the class balance. There's no other borrowed power, there's no other baseline spells, there's literally nothing that affects the way you play and how good you are other than these trees. So I think that since they don't have to worry about, okay, because obviously there's devs that work at different things, right, in, in WoW. You have a team one and a team two, and this team does this and the other team does that, right? Like you have different kind of things that you work on. And the people who are responsible for class design, for balancing and for all that stuff, uh, they have this job, right? Like they don't really have to do much else. There isn't much else. So if the trees, um, like it makes sense for them to release the trees as fast as possible, even if they're not like perfectly happy with it, right? At least in my opinion. I think they, even if they like super quickly drop a tree and they're like, okay, this talent here, this talent here, blah, 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 right? It's better to like quickly draw it up, in my opinion, and release it to get like the opinions of the players because then you can really see, because if you work like weeks upon weeks upon weeks on a talent tree and then you release it and then the majority of player base is like, fuck this, this is bad. Well, then that sucks, right? So if you like, if they quickly came up with a talent tree, well, quickly, but if they come with that, come up with a tree like somewhat fast and then just release it, even if they're not perfectly happy, at least you can get all the feedback and then you can adjust it and change it the way um, people want. And additionally, they can also praise you for listening to the players, right? That's another positive thing. They can just release a tree and they know it's not good. And then people say like, you should do this. And they're like, that's exactly what we're gonna do. And they're like, yes, let's are just listening to feedback, you know, so. <laughs> so I think just, just release the trees as fast as you can. Just, just go out with them, like, come out, you know, t show me the trees. And then afterwards, they have time, you know, they have, they have a couple of months still to change the trees. In fact, they, they can still change the trees after Dragonflight is already released, right? Like, because it's a balancing tool now. Um, it's a bit different with basic re reworks. But I also think that it's easier for them now to rework a class than it has ever been before. Well, not ever, but at least not with the past couple of years. Because if you think about the way classes used to work, we have a lot of baseline spells. It's like your mastery works like this, and your starfire works like this, and your wrath works like this, and you have this eclipse system, and you have starfall, and you have star surge, right? And it was all like a base kind of spell that was part of your basic class. And then they gave us stuff on top of that. Like they gave us talents, they gave us uh, borrowed power, uh, renown, convoke, all of that kind of stuff, right? And then whenever something was broken, like whenever it was something like super overwhelming or underwhelming or broken, then they had a hard time fixing those problems because the only way to really address some of the issues was to change the baseline kit. And the problem used to be that if you have a lot of borrowed power, like think about Shadowlands right now. Imagine you would change the way Starfall works for Moonkins now. Or imagine you would change the way um, Mindseer works for Shadow Priest right now. Like that would have so many implications on all of the borrowed power. They would completely throw your balancing and everything out of the window. And that's a problem, right? Because then it's not just one thing you need to change. Then you change one thing and then it has implication on this other thing. So you have to change that and then it changes the other thing. It's like a domino effect, right? Now, the thing is, though, with these talent trees in Dragonflight, that is not the case anymore, because our baseline kit is not baseline anymore. It's a talent, 
right? So they can easily change a talent to work differently as long as it's not like a completely fundamental thing, right? I mean, of course, if you change Raptor Strike for Survival Hunter, then that's going to change everything, obviously, right? Um, like if you completely rework it. But if you just change certain talents around and like make them different or whatever, then it doesn't necessarily have huge implications on everything else. And therefore, it is easier for them to balance classes and to rework fundamental things as well. Because that is something we never got throughout an expansion lately. Like, even if a class was really unhappy with the way their class played, you knew that it's just going to stay this way for the whole expansion. They're never going to touch it anymore because of the thing I said earlier with the domino effect, right? Uh, and yeah, I think it's different now. I think if there's a fundamental issue that a class has, they can even change it like two months into the expansion or like a half a year into the expansion uh, with only like adjusting a talent and it should be fine. Like it's not gonna have a million implications that change everything, right? Then they can just change that talent and maybe adjust like a talent here or there as well and then they're gonna be fine. And that's gonna be so, so, so good for class balancing and also for class enjoyment as well because they can positively affect um, things that people are unhappy with regarding their rotations as well. Not just like number things. So it's not all just gonna be like, oh, you do 5% more damage, you do 5% less damage, you do 2% more damage, you do 3% less damage. You know, it's like, that's the only balancing we really got uh, in previous expansions. And I think they can really, really like, change things properly now without just number changes. Exactly, Kyoden, I agree, yeah. So that's why I also think they have enough time for this, because uh, this will not run away. Like, if they make the talents, even if the talent system is not perfect from the get-go, they c like, it's not gonna be the end of the world, you know? If they release a class or a spec, that has a scuffed talent tree, they still have time to fix it even during the expansion, and it's not going to be the end of the world if, uh, if that happens. In comparison to how it was before in like Shadowlands or BFA, when your class got released, broken, then you were just fucked. Like, you kind of knew, okay, they're never going to change Starfall again, you know, like, this is just kind of it. You're stuck with this thing for the rest of the expansion. <laughs> All right. So they're like, okay, we'll split out coordinated assault into two abilities, and that's, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. Like, that's the time. it's it's really weird, and okay. this is your single target tree, and then you. <laughs> but does you your actually... single target, does your single target here feel like evolved or a better form than no. it is currently? I, you only you only have two buttons, like oh, literally, right? Shit. Like kill you, command and bite. You have you what? have kill command and mongoose bite. That seems so and bad. And then you have whatever is in the generic tree, like you know, kill shot, and death chakrams, but. There's nothing to this spec besides pressing mongoose bite and kill command. And well, I think I think if you found a way to go into deadly duo and then get the yeah. birds of prey coordinated assault thing, that would be pretty strong. So this is like what you saw with the other specs, where there's an ability that has a chance to reset kill shots cooldown and use it on any HP. <laughs> like, this is <laughs> oh, stuffed in the AOE side of the tree. Man, I still don't see my PC bomb. perfectly. I hate it. it. Just, it's so it's like... so 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 out of place. It's like okay, the, the, the yeah, lights. I think like it has so, to do with so the this lights. this is like what a single... Is it, sure first of all, is this like what you think a single target tree looks like? It's all 30 points right here? If do you think it helps to wear them? Actually, like, does something... Because I never... Yeah. Okay. Like, you might end up... Sorry, I'm going to pause for a second. Like, <laughs> I never felt like it has any, like, effect. Like, I'm wearing them and they don't feel, like, better or worse. But, I mean, maybe it has, like, a very small effect and I just don't notice it, like, very much. Maybe I should be wearing the glasses, so my eyes are not messed up. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I should. But yeah, my like my eyes are still not perfect. Like on the PC, everywhere else it seems perfect, but like, I guess I have a hard time with lights. I think because obviously when I look at the screen, everything is like very high contrast lights, and it just makes. Like everything have a, like almost like a shadow around it, which makes it really hard to see. I mean, I can read it. It's just like, it's just um, hard to read. And at the same time, it's like uh, exhausting. Same with Twitch chat. 
I have a hard time reading Twitch chat. Because it's like black on white as well. Well, it's not black, but it's like gray, right? So it's like white and gray. And then the white does this like thing where it's like, it's not blurry. It's It has like, it's almost like a shade around it. Like a glare, yeah, something like a glare, yeah. No, it's definitely my eyes. It's definitely my eyes, it's not my screen. <laughs> I am using dark mode. And, and you guys are saying it's like it's anyway, we're back one like second and then uh, version than what this class. While I'm AFK, I'm gonna listen to the rest of this um, survival hunter talk, and then I'm raiding. So give me a sec. This is even on live before tier, like it's just yeah. Like current current is actually better than this from what they're giving you. So it seems like they're taking it away. What are you removing to grab an AOE kit for? Not necessarily full on mythic plus, but what are you doing right now? to just, you know, have something to AOE adds when they spawn. You would just reduce your Raptor strike damage by like a ton. I think that's mainly so you are you, I would do. So are you out sweeping spear? Or birds of prey. It could even be spearhead, right? Like that's purely well, single that's, target. It's, it's just so weird because that's a it's great It's still like flat ability. damage during your AOE stuff, right? I think it could be those five coordinated assault points. Yeah. Definitely birds of prey coordinated kill. And then coordinated assault gives you additional carve CDR. So that's probably still good button to press. Is also, it this? carve, butchery being the two options feels weird. Is there ever a world where you take carve over butchery? Well, carve is just better than butchery. Is it? No. I think it's the butchery. Think there's a world where well, you if, if you mouse over. is just carve, but better. Except... I don't think it reduces the CDR of your bombs, no, though. No, that's the thing below it. So right in the middle of the tree? Yeah, that's assuming that butchery literally just isn't counted for that question mark yeah. trait. So, so is this if... what, what you. I, I just like yolo I grabbed wildfire bomb, but then I guess I didn't put anything. Here, oh, we don't right. even have carve right now, so this would just like you can do a little bit of cleave with this build, but it's so awkward. Assuming butchery works on the point below it, which I don't know if it does or doesn't, I just there's never a world where you would take carve over butchery, yeah, yeah, because it's just would you like to have something that has three charges or not have three charges? <laughs> it costs five more focus and has a two second longer cooldown, but does more damage and has a charge system. Yeah, I don't think that's. I don't think it's gonna work with the frenzy strikes though. I think butchery is like meant to be like kind of how you used it on Gul'dan, where it's just insane, like instant you burst. Here and just spam them. Yeah. Yeah, like butchery is a cool ability, but if it, if it works the same way as carve and they both reduce bomb cooldown, they're pointless to have on a choice node. What does this build look like in a mythic plus environment? Is it is it go a little bit more? I have a into picture. A? The right uh, side of the tree is just gone, except for that one. You take everything off the right and run it down left. Uh, this is what Evade linked. Have... Except uh, the question mark trait, I should have checked, but obviously I did. Okay, I'll do that on here. Let's see. So you just you actually just fucking removed it all. Oh, and then look yeah. at look at that lunge talent, and like it just it makes me upset that rogues have the same thing, but it's one point. Uh, it's to the left of the question mark talent. R like increases the range points. of your melee attacks and abilities increased by one, two, and three. This is actually. Oh, holy shit. Yeah, you're so right. Yeah. One second. Pulling something up real quick. Rogues on their tree get this for every single spec in the middle of their tree going down to and branching into basically anything yep. they want. They get that on all three things for one point. And then multiple of the other specs actually get it uh, as well in their other tree and are able to grab another like six still yards. Still one point. Yeah, yeah still one so point. So how, how far can they attack? Uh, six, outlaw six, rogues six can yards. attack from I think it's like six or eight yards away or something like that. It's kind of insane. Yeah, it's up to the right. Yeah, uh -huh. is it? Uh, yeah, here it is. Long arm of the outlaw flurry. increases the range of wow. melee attacks by three yards while blade flurry is active, and then here it's another three yards. So, but then look at this. I think that is actually egregious. Like what? Are you, like uh, uh, yeah, this, this, this honestly even feels worse than the MM tree. Like the, just... the thing is, like, I would say that lunge is cool, but the problem with the whole trees system is that you have to compare damage with utility instead of utility with utility. So, like, even though lunge is super cool to have extra range, you would almost never take it ever because why would you sacrifice damage? Why would they even release this? 
Like I don't like I actually don't even understand that. Like like the they could have actually just like released the BM tree and it would have been a like a turbo banger every hunter's hyped and then the other two just seem completely unfinished. Yeah, Very like, strange. well I think oh, MM also. MM's got hope to me. Like this tree, oh, this no. rival tree is like uh, by far the most incomplete and I don't even know how they would fix it. I don't think they added really anything exciting. I like the explosives expert talent on the left hand side there a little bit it's too actually down, uh, an like, apocalypse kill shot reduces the cooldown on a bomb i think that's cool i think um, fe fear of the eagle being back is pretty I'm, cool i'm stoked okay i think we heard enough about hunters so tldr mm needs some work still and survival hunter definitely also needs a, a lot of work still the hunter tree itself seems somewhat fine the actual class tree seems um good enough I guess. So yeah, let's let's quickly rank the the, the class trees on like on like how good they feel. Obviously, I'm not. I don't want to like look at. Um, Balancing, because obviously that's irrelevant. Is there a dark mode in this? <laughs> this is so bright. Okay, so I think one of the the best trees by far are the shaman trees, right? What do you say, elemental? Let's just put. I think Enhancement and Elemental are both, like, here, right? Like, they're both really good. Would you guys disagree? Like, they feel really good. The Resto one as well? You, would you put Resto and S as well? Okay. So all the Shaman Trees seem really, really good. Then, I think Outlaw... Probably also up here, right? But I don't want to put something at S if there's things that need to change still. So what do you think? Is there any of these talent or spec trees that would still need like small changes? Or do you think they're literally perfect? Because to me, like I obviously don't play these classes, so to me, they seem perfect. So I don't know if there's like small changes that would have to be done. So you're saying Resta needs some small changes? And Enhance, do you think as well? Okay. All of them. Elemental, you would put them B, really. Maybe, be, uh, I guess be, because of the position of uh, not storm elemental what's it what's it called okay okay so let's put them all at a i guess because they're not like perfect perfect or would you actually put elemental and b would you say they're worse than they need more changes what do you guys think about elemental A. Yeah, I don't want to put it at S just because I don't want to put something at S that still needs changes, you know? Because S means it's perfect, right? And if something still needs, like, small changes, then it's not perfect. So I wouldn't put it at S unless you really think everything about it is perfect the way it is and it should not be changed at all. So Outlaw... I heard Outlaw is, like, really good. The way it is. Any opinions? Mm -hmm. Again, keep in mind, we're not talking about... Like, we're not talking about the actual like number of damage they do. We're talking about the trees positioning, the feeling of the class, the choices you can make, 
that kind of stuff. Yeah, there we go. Oh no, that only changes the the inside background color. So let's keep Adloid S for now. It's true, there's a bunch of not implemented talent, I guess, yeah. Okay, then let's take a look at um, Hunter, because we just talked about it. So it seems like survival, the way it is right now, even though they already have, an, have something announced, I think survival is like E. Like survival seems very bad. Right? I think that's, uh, that's just really bad. Then, um, I think BM looked a bit better, right? I think BM might be like, but still not perfect, right? N maybe B? Or would you put C? Like, what do you say? You say A or B even, okay? A or B, okay. Let's put it to B because I think the shaman trees are better than the, than the BM trees, right? Like, they need a little bit more changes than maybe the shaman trees. Okay, so let's put this on B. Then MM Hunter... I would say is D. They still need, like, a lot of stuff, I think. But a strong D, yeah. Yes, I would say a strong D, yeah. The... the the main issue they have, like, their talents themselves seem fine. It's just the issue that they have is, like, the the amount of points they need at the top versus the amount of points they can spend at the bottom. So that's a bit awkward. So, yeah, I would say, like, C or D, I guess, for MM. Like, MM is not complete garbage. It's definitely just, like, a little bit of the positioning plus the amount of points they have to spend. Yeah, maybe we put MM at C, and um, yeah, maybe MM is like not absolutely horrendous. Then let's see. Um, then we have. I honestly haven't looked much at the disc tree. I forgot about the disc tree. <laughs> uh, where would you place the disc tree at? It's decent. Would you say it's like B? Okay. So a lot of people say B. Okay, that's that's good. So like same as BM Hunter, they need some maybe some changes still here or there. Okay. Then holy seemed holy definitely seemed worse to me. Holy seemed like a C. With some weird stuff going on there. Maybe not C. Actually, maybe it's B. What do you think? Like B? Or C? I don't know. Maybe B. Yeah, there was just some talents I disliked, personally. Like, I think the position of the talents wasn't necessarily that bad. It was more... It was more of a fact that it felt like they didn't really get anything. Like, some of the talents seemed kind of meh. But other than that, it didn't seem that bad. So maybe B is fine. Thanks for 23 months, brain break. What's up? Then Shadow, uh, Shadow seemed pretty bad. Where's the Shadow icon? Oh, there. Shadow, maybe not as bad as Survival, but definitely not great. I would put it at D, I think. Maybe slightly better than MM. But just slightly better than MM. And slightly worse than MM. I think. Yeah, Shadow is really bad, but like Survival Hunter needs its tier by its own. I don't think there, I don't think Shadow is as bad as Survival, honestly. Yeah. This is Outlaw. Okay, then we still have the Rogue Specs, right? We have.
Okay, we have uh, Asa Rogue. Where did we put that? I looked at the Asa Talents and they seem good, but not like, not like mind blowing. So like A or B, I guess. You would say, okay, let's put it at A. Or do you think that, do you think Outlaw is like perfect and Asta needs some small changes? Or do you think Asta is also like, it can release the way it is and it would be really good? Because to me, it seems like it's more of an A thing. You don't think Outlaw would be S? So you think Outlaw needs changes as well? What do you think Outlaw needs changes for? Or what what do you not like about the Outlaw tree? I'm just going to explain this one more time. Because we might be confused here, yeah? We are ranking the specs according to their class trees, not according to how much damage they do. We're, we're, we're ranking them, like S basically means that your, your spec tree is perfect. Like it can be released this way and it would be really nice. A means that your spec tree is really good, but there might be some smaller things that need to be adjusted still. Like maybe some position things or like a talent to have two points instead of three or whatever, you know? And then E obviously means that the talent tree is completely unfinished and it's horrible. Wait a sec. They asked for my. Let's I'm going to fix the tree. This says. Is if you guys all disagree and no one is this clear on anything, then let's see what JPC says about Outlaw. The uh, class and the Outlaw tree with me. And okay, just tell so, me about some of the choices you make. So. The first thing I would say is that the build is going to vary a ton based on if you're going for raid or if you're going for M+, because there's a lot of things which could be really, really good in M+, like silencing mobs with Garot that might not be worth to take for raid if the damage numbers aren't there. But you still have to put a certain amount per let's, Here's what we'll tier, do. Kind of. Let, let's, let's focus on a purely a raid build for Outlaw in the class tree, and then before <laughs> we move on to the spec tree, just note how you would swap it around in a Mythic Plus environment. Okay, okay. So first things first is y'all you you're gonna wanna take faint. That'll let you that's the right there, yeah. It'll let you progress down through. Yeah, if you want okay. sap, you want uh, I'm gonna let him choose damage, things. but that's probably what you would go with. And then maybe like there's a conclusion down to... at the end. Is there a conclusion somewhere? Final thoughts. Looks really long. I mean obviously you don't wanna waste any oh, Lord. Right. I guess my only wish is that uh some of the stuff in the class specific trees for like assassination and uh sub and outlaw. I really hope it's like worth going for because like for me in especially in the outlaw tree i don't really know if there's anything there where it's like better than just taking a stats tick which is like always kind of sort of lame right like yeah. you want more buttons so i think yeah. overall the rogue trees are like a massive dub though like i mean i oh, imagine sure. i imagine sure. you were just like screeching reading this oh shit right? yeah i was so happy yeah you know? this is like I mean, this is definitely everything that rogues wanted. And, and okay, I was wrong before because I mentioned that assassination rogue, atri whatever, should be in, like, every rogue tree. But the thing is, is, like, every rogue has, like, realistic raid utility. Like, Aurora is, like, genuinely good. The CDR stuff is, in the right scenario, uh, potentially really broken. Well, that's current tuning, at least. But obviously, that can always change if it's too good. Because, like, Wind Fury was never... Like, Wind Fury gave, you know, one class in the game, like, a 7% increase, a few others, 4 to 5%. But there weren't, like, a ton of them in your raid comp, so it didn't matter. The thing is, is CDR affects your entire... And the idea of... Like, CDR... Bust Lahuvum on pole, and then combust the ad again. ...way. Obviously, one of them just being, like, a unique way you have roar. It's, like, like the three roars in this game are, like, one, which is, like, a 60%. You have... Acquired is... 
Yeah, I don't know. They're, I think uh... they're a bit better than subs because sub is kind of niche, but like in the right scenario, like a Holander, subs is really, really good. So it just almost feels like, okay, Assassination gets a free pass to get invited all the time, but sub rogue is only going to be, it's like more of a... Okay, you know what? I think, uh, I think we're just not going to put anything on S at the moment. Maybe that makes the most sense. So we're just not going to put anything on S because... A lot of the trees, they just kind of came out and people just started looking at it. So it's very possible there's like things here or there, like small changes that you can make. Because um, obviously when you say it's S, you mean this is literally perfect and no one has to take a look at it anymore and we just like leave it the way it is, right? So even though all of the shaman specs and all of the rogue uh, ones seem really good, it's still possible there's like a thing or two that you might want to adjust or you think about or whatever. So let's just put them, they're like basically S. Like, the, all of the ones that are A, they're really, really good. But we just don't want to commit to S. Alright? Just yet. So let's just do it like that. Okay, then, we only have the Druid tree left, I think? Okay, so we have Rest of Druid, which I honestly didn't really look... I actually didn't look at the Rest Arrested Druid too, too much. I also didn't look at the Guardian or Feral Tree. I only really looked at Munkin, so... So what, uh, what do you guys think about the Arrested Tree? As far as I heard, it, it's like decent. Like, like not like mind-blowing, like not like Shaman or Rogue. But like decent. So maybe B? Yeah, I think that might make sense. Then, what do you think about Guardian? Guardian is something I heard very little about, honestly. Yeah. But there's not many people who really, like, love Guardian. Like, most tanks just don't like Guardian, I see it seems like. So, most of the feedback I've gotten is just not, like, is there a Guardian icon? Dude, there's no Guardian icon. I guess it's only... Healers and wait, or am I just really blind? <laughs> There's no guardian icon. Oh, only healers and DPS. Okay, let's just pretend. Uh, let's just pretend this is a guardian druid. Okay, so guardian druid would be B or A even. Really, that that good? Okay, I think, let's put it at B. If Dorky said that Maul for Guardian just ruins it and all the power is still in Incarn, then that that definitely seems like that they would kind of need like a somewhat like reworky thing. Yeah, maybe that makes sense. Then I heard Feral. Feral um, has some issues still, I heard. Like some basic issues. What do you think? Do we do we put it to C, or would you say it's more like Shadow Priest level? What do you guys think? There's like barely anyone that plays Feral, so it's hard to tell. You say it's really bad, as bad as Survival, because Survival is really bad. Let's maybe put it to Shadow Priest. Okay, so survival really bad. Then we have Moonkin still. I don't think Moonkin is, is survival hunter bad. But it's definitely Shadow Priest bad. Yeah, I definitely think this is... Yeah, I think E makes sense for Moonkin. D for definitely benched. <laughs> yeah, I think this, this tier list makes sense. What do you think? So Shaman and Rogue, all specs seem really, really nice. Oh, I forgot DK's true. 
true, true, true. Oh, true, because Blood Decay is also not here. So we have Frost Decays, Unholy, and Blood Decay. Um, for Decays, the one thing that I noticed the most was that they're... Uh, let me let me remember. I think for DKs, the thing that I noticed the most was their class tree wasn't great. Their class tree seemed very, uh, very like offensive heavy. But we're not talking about class trees. We're talking about spec trees. So I guess we can just ignore class tree for now. What do you think about the frosty K spec tree? That one seemed a bit stronger for sure. You actually think S? Someone's saying B, someone's saying S. Frost is A. Okay. Well. But then you have to consider that we have shamans and rogues here that have great trees, right? So maybe we put it more like B in comparison. Unless you actually think it's like it needs only very minor changes. Let's put it B, I think that makes the most sense. Then we have Unholy, which... You guys say that Unholy is slightly worse than Frost? Strong D. Okay. So C or D for Unholy, what do you think? Uh, I got, you're saying that a lot of them are getting reworked. Okay, so maybe um, so may we can leave it at D right now because if they're reworking it, we're gonna reevaluate this anyway. So it's interesting because okay, wait before I talk about the rest, uh, let's just put Blood Decay as well. So for Blood Decay, we're just gonna take uh, Fire Mage. So what do you think about Blood Decay? Only Spectre, no uh, Class Tree. Please do warrior. There are no warrior talents released. Weak A, strong B. Okay. Okay. So, so let's uh, keep this for now. Um, so I think the conclusion is that especially shaman and rogue seem really good. The way they are right now. Then specifically these specs seem really bad. I think MM Hunter as well. Uh, but they already they already announced that they're going to rework some of these. They announced they're going to rework Survival. So, yeah, it's E right now, but at least there's, like, hope, right? Because they, they said they will work on, on Survival. Then, they also said they're going to work on Unholy DK, right? So there's hope for Unholy as well. Uh, they also said they're going to work on Feral, if I remember correctly. So these three specs they're going to work on, as far as I know, they didn't say anything about Shadow Priest being worked on, and they also didn't say anything about Moonkin. So the most hopeless specs right now seem to be those two. Not, not that uh, there's no chance or anything, right? <laughs> that they're going to not work on them. But, uh, but yeah, like these, these bottom, like MM, Shadow Priest, Moonkin, Feral... And only in survival seem pretty bad right now in comparison when it comes to like their actual tr like class their spec tree their talent position some like maybe even some baseline abilities and stuff like because survival for example is literally lacking stuff to press like they literally have two spells like come on <laughs> and moonkin obviously has this like very specific problem with aoe same with shadow priest like they both have aoe issues and that the whole talent tree doesn't really make sense without proper AOE options. And then Feral, I don't know what the specific issue is. And Unholy, I don't, don't know either. But uh, all of them definitely need some love. For sure. So yeah, that's that's the conclusion. Thanks for three months, uh, Nariana. What's up, what's up? Survival is still a melee spec, yeah. The first person I've seen that is high on rogue. I'm pretty sure... I, I think almost everyone that is watching my stream right now is not understanding what this tier list is for. 
I'm not sure anyone else even made a tier list so far. I think I'm the first one to even make a tier list, yeah. <laughs> this was specifically regarding uh, talent, dragonfly talents. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that thinks that the rogue talents are really good. I think everyone kind of has that impression. Thanks for three months again, Ariana. Appreciate that. I hope you had a nice weekend. Paladins don't have their talents released yet. Any news on S4 balance changes? As far as I know, they might not even do that. It's possible that they don't change anything at all. Other than survival and... Um, Destro Warlock, because they already talked about that, right? Alright guys, uh, unfortunately I have to raid now. So I'm probably just gonna chill, because I still have to write some Season 4 guides. And I'm probably gonna do that while I'm raiding. And I'm probably just gonna be like, bench some bosses, and then not bench some others, and it's just gonna be boring. So watch, who wants to watch the Palka raid anyway? So we're just gonna turn off stream. Uh, while I'm raiding, and I'm gonna finish my Season 4 dungeon guides. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we are gonna go over some Season 4 dungeons, actually. Because Season 4 is very, very soon. So, we're just gonna go over that stuff. Uh, to refresh everyone's memory on how the dungeons work and stuff. And maybe we go through them on PTR again, but I heard that some of the dungeons actually have been removed. Or that they have been removed generally? Like completely? Or that PTR is just not up anymore? Maybe they completely shut it down. Who knows? But yeah. Oh my god, that's a lot of druids. <laughs> they removed the game, yeah. It's gone. But yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice rest of your day. Uh, let me host somebody real quick. Who do you want to watch? <laughs> Holy shit. There actually is an apocalypse. <laughs> the world is ending. Let's watch Jonas. More height likes. True. And make sure you all say hi to Jonas. Spam some hearts in the chat. Oh, he's probably, he's probably in a bad mood because Jonas hates playing ranked on stream because he always has to play with a delay because otherwise he gets sniped, which really sucks. So he cannot react to chat immediately because he loves interacting with chat and stuff. And when he has to play in a delay, it like, feels really bad. And if he doesn't play in a delay, then it's horrible and his chat is bad and it's like, ugh. So he's probably in a bad mood. Make sure you cheer him up, guys. Make sure you make sure you're nice to Jonas. Hmm. Alright guys, have fun watching Jonas and I'll see you guys tomorrow, okay? Goodbye. Thanks for watching guys.